is the destiny of man of mind, controlled by some transcendental entity or law. Is it like the hand of God hovering above? At least it is true. A man has no control, even over his own will.
Hello, 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 and welcome to the 156th episode of the UCW Show. Check the title. How one thought ruined Tim Cast IRL. I didn't know how to put the Krigler show in it, so I just added Adam Krigler's channel. He's not going to show on this show. Although, if he does, it'd be hilarious. And we're going to talk about what went down. Now, I know a lot of you guys simply don't give an F. This is why Chronic gives an F. Uh, Chronic used to watch a lot of Pim Tool uh, to be educated on, you know, where the riots were going on, who was getting yoinked on, you know, kind of political stuff. Then Tim started this, uh, this podcast, this TimCast IRL. And he started it with his co-host, Adam, right? The guy that we'll be seeing uh, shortly. And Adam went through a red pill journey. He went from basically kind of like, oh, I'm Democrat because I don't know anything. To MAGA boy 2020, you know, Trump, you know, make America great again. Kind of more red pill, I guess I'd say. And that, yeah, he can call himself red pill because we're not, we're not, we're not red pillars here. But we left the red pill behind in like 2017. We don't even claim that label anymore. But these guys are red pilled on stuff like the wall. Uh, These guys are red pilled on stuff like journalists. These guys are red pilled on stuff like groomies. They're not red pilled on the most important topic. The whole reason the red pill took off. Now chat. Let me ask you a question. With the explosion of red pill YouTubers in the early 2010s, 
what were these red pillars talking about? What were they telling you, the audience, mostly men? What was the subject they were talking about? They're saying you are being lied to about this. You are being told lies to be made useful about this. What is the this? It's women. It's women. So the red pill started off about, here's your red pill about women. This is what women are attracted to but not attracted to. And the language got so popular because the message was the final, you know, finally these young men are getting the truth. It was like, hey, maybe being a nice guy won't get me puniti. He started using it everywhere. And then all the normies, you know, they, they kind of on the periphery of the main conversation, they start saying red pill everything, right? It's like, oh, I'm going to red pill you on Donald Trump. I'm going to red pill you on immigration. I'm going to red pill you. But they, they're never red pill. They're never red pill on women. Never. Never. It's hilarious. And so these dudes running around, and this includes Adam. This is basically all these people all running around. I red pilled, I red pilled, I red pilled, and all it takes is one sanctimonious thought to completely nuke their friendship. Should we put a picture of her up? Let's do it. So before we put a picture up, they had this show, Tim Cast. It was Tim Pool and Adam Krigler. Uh, coming together, talking about the election. They're getting banger numbers. You know, it's a fun time. It was fun to watch as two friends roasting each other. But then Adam just disappeared one day and he was silent about it. He's like, I'm not going to talk about what happened. I'm not going to talk about, you know, it's between me and Tim. We're still friends kind of things. And then yesterday night, day after Thanksgiving, Adam Krigler told it all. And guess what? What was the reason he got fired from the show? Guess the reason him and Tim Pool aren't friends anymore. Why? Why is it a woman? <laughs> oh, let's bring her up. Let's find it. Let's find a. Let's find a good one. What was it? Let me just Google it. Sour Patch Lids. Let's see what. Uh, let's let's get the most un. I mean, she's the thumbnail, right? But let's just get a more unflattering photo. Because we're trying to be... <laughs> I was going to say, we're trying to be mean on this channel, but I, I can't say that. We're trying to be honest on this channel. We're trying to tell you guys what's what. Uh, let's find a good one. That's not her. That chick's actually attractive. Hmm. This'll do. That'll do, donkey. That'll do. <laughs> oh, speaking of donkeys, let's get this donkey up on the screen. Now, you guys are going to have to suffer. You are going to have to suffer and look at this picture while I wax and wane on. This is my assessment of the situation. And don't worry, we have two videos to play. We have another YouTube content creator who kind of clipped the important parts together uh, of what happened from Adam's own mouth. And I'll respond to it because there's a lot of red pill moments. It's not just, not just, oh, this chick ruined it. It's a woman did something to Adam in his past that really hurt him. Tim Pool's complaining about X, Y, and Z. Tim Pool cries on camera. It's a so many juicy morsels we can laugh at <laughs> and don't worry boys uh chronic's not feeding you raw meat tonight we're gonna grill it speaking of grill i don't think there's enough propane i could pull out of the uae to fully cook the porker i got on screen now oh chronic you being so mean this chick is lydia i uh, don't know her last name sour patch lids whatever she was the producer for timcast do you know how she got her job at a show that makes like, I think it's three million a month? Yeah, she DM'd Tim Pool. That's all you have to do to impress Tim Pool to get a job. You just send him a DM on Instagram. Hi, 
I'm your conservative queen. Please let me be your producer. I <laughs> just at every stage of this drama, at every single stage of this drama, the amount of simpage is legendary. It's just like big YouTube channel, making a show, making tons of money, buying a house, setting up a studio, doing business deals, doing music deals, led by Tim Pool at Simpcast. It's simping. And you hire a chick, and I guess she was prettier when she got hired, or I guess she was, uh, well, she was younger. I guess she weighed less. I don't know what the deal is. But regardless, the simp inside a Tim Pool, the simp nature, made him offer her a job and adam says she had no idea how to produce a show he said it got so bad that tim actually gave him a control like a controller to switch the cameras bob says she looks like undead chronic's dream no absolutely not don't let me go into detail here first of all the tattoos, they're low quality. Look at those things, they're so faded. You're really gonna get tattoos on your deltoids? That's what we're gonna do? We're gonna get tattoos on our deltoids. Some of the most sun exposed areas on your body. So those tattoos are gonna fade fast. I guess it's all right if you stay clothed or stay inside, but you're obviously not. So they fade, you're not getting them touched up. She probably got those tattoos when she was 20. Oh my goodness. First strike. Second strike, she's like 36. <laughs> third strike guess what guess what guess what she's been married twice oh she's been married twice now look at the image she's been married twice and what's her shtick what does lydia present herself as online i'm just a traditional girl i'm a christian I'm a conservative. Listen to me, please. Ah! Oh! They're all trad thought. Look, if she's a woman and she's on the right online, she's in the, she's a content creator on the right wing, it's a 99.999999, sound in German here, 99999% she's a trad thought. How are you going to tell me you're traditional when you've been married twice? How are you going to tell me traditional when you were hooking up with Tim Pool? <laughs> do, you think, do you think Tim Pool takes the beanie off during sex? <laughs> I'm just wondering. I'm, I'm just wondering. Honestly. So, she's the traditional. She's the traditional queen. Got divorced. Married another dude, same time, having sex with Tim Pool, the skater boy. And she's the one that will look in the camera and say, I'm the kind of woman you want to aspire to work for. Ugh. And I was saying, no eggs. That's right, no eggs. She's 36. No eggs. No eggs. She was a nurse. What does that tell you? She was a nurse and she didn't get a kid? Oh, she won't talk about the kid she wants to have. What happened to your first husband? What happened to your 20s? What were you doing when you were 18 and 19? Huh? You know, the, the best child rearing years of a woman's life? What, what were you doing? What were you doing? Uh, so, her being anti-feminist pisses me off. Well, saying she's anti-feminist because it's not true. Her saying she's a Christian pisses me off. That really pisses me off. It's like, it's like, Chronic, why don't you go to church no more? Because none of these pastors are preaching the word of God, okay? All they do is preach forgiveness. Forgive the hoe who cheated on you. Forgive the single mother for giving her a womb to a bad boy. I'm not about that. We need some more Old Testament. Speaking of which, speaking of a witch, regarding Sour Patch Lid's first family, which she destroyed with a divorce, and the Tim Cast IRL family, which she destroyed by being a thought, this is what the Lord has to say 
He said in Proverbs 14, a wise woman builds her home. But a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. That's featured on the top 10 red pill Bible verses about women video. How do women tear down their families these days? Divorce. So the Lord says you're foolish, Lydia. The Lord says you're foolish. Yet you are online, and she's not on the Tim Cash show anymore, but she was online to millions of views, hundreds of thousands of people every week telling them that she knew what to do. She was teaching. I'm a conservative Christian woman. Listen to me. You are a fool who tore your own house down with your own hands. Telling people to listen to you. Disgusting. This trad thought, I mean, look, I got a catalog of roasts on trad thoughts. It's like uh, at least 80 videos. Roasting all kinds of them. Every major trad thought on YouTube has probably been roasted by Undead Chronic. His I see, look, y'all might not think it. Y'all might disagree. But there comes a time every Sunday Chronic is a godly man. And I see through the delusions and illusions of these Jezebel thoughts. Sinning with their legs wide open. With lies and venom spewing out of their fort tongues. Okay? They can't fool me. I'm not fooled by them. I can't stand it. You know. Lord also said, it is better that those who deceive the young ones have a weight tied around their neck and thrown into the water. How many young men watch Tim Cast IRL? Huh? How many young women watched Tim Cast IRL? And they are being deceived. By a false prophet. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Nixon says, he's, Nixon's saying a quote from Adam, and don't worry, we'll listen to the video together. Quote, that high and mighty self righteous slut. Unquote. Yeah. <laughs> Adam went in. He's saying stuff like, I don't think I could talk about a person and call them a, at least I have to say salute. At least I have to say salute. I don't think I, you know. I swear, Chronic's got PTSD from all these YouTube strikes and channels that got deleted. Big Papa Monk says, Tim Pool fanboys entering this chat. They're not here. I, I, I don't see any Tim Pool fans here. Like, look. I'm out front and I'll say I like his work, but I'm not a Tim Pool fan. There's no way the Beanie Boys are in this chat. I have cultivated a war band of absolute shitlords, of masculine men, of dudes that love nothing than to roast. That's the complete opposite of Tim Pool's fan base. Duskin says, Someone like you who calls out people when they have their own issues is wrong. Wait, what do you mean? I can't call out people? Oh, I have my own issues. Yeah, well, here's the thing, Dooskin. I don't have an issue of initiating a divorce. Huh? I don't have the issue of destroying my own family, right? That's, a, that's what your Queen Lids did. Oh, here's another thing. I don't have an issue of sacrificing a friendship for some thought. That's what Tim did. <laughs> Dude's gets like, Chronic, you have issues. You shouldn't say anything. I, damn it, I do have issues. Okay? I only get six reps with three plates on the flat bench. I feel like a pussy. Got some issues, bro. 
I got some issues. I got to deal with feminists every day of my life. That's a big issue. But the issues I have and the issues your e-celeb gods have are completely different. You see, the overarching message is a beta males, a blue pill betas, beach boys, will sacrifice their friendships for thought. And that's exactly what happened. Tim Pool sacrificed his friendship with Adam Krigler over some... Uh, just look at the picture. <laughs> oh, uh, some floozy. Some flubby floozy. So, uh, yeah, do skin. Uh, come at me with some issues that compare to those issues. At least I'm not a simp. At least I'm not a sleut. At least I'm not a 36-year-old woman <coughs> with no kids. Eggless. Eggless. Lydia is about as fertile as the fields of Carthage after Rome sowed salt into the dirt. I don't have those issues. But I know about those issues and me roasting Lydia for her, for her horrible, not just a couple decisions, her entire life path, her horrible life decisions. That's like every day for years. Her problem, she's infertile. The issue, she's a feminist. The issue, she likes to divorce men. The issue, she wants a career. The issue, she didn't want to have a kid when she could have had a kid. And me making fun of a woman for that teaches the young ladies listening. And there's always a couple. I got like three or four who sent me emails about, I don't know, once a year. And they, you know what they say to me? They go, chronic thank you for, you know, making me laugh and understanding the, the huge decisions I have. A woman's biggest decisions are from 18 to 25. Are you going to have kids? What kind of man are you going to marry? Because Tim Pool and Lydia and Adam Krigler even, they don't talk about that. They're still blue-pilled. They say they're red-pilled, but they're red-pilled on everything except the reason the red pill exists. And the reason the red pill exists is women and feminism. You get it? If you're not red-pilled on women, you're not red-pilled. Period. So, I don't know what your station is in life, do skin. I hope you're not a 35-year-old woman, because if you are and you want kids, you're going to have to go through something called a geriatric pregnancy. Oh, oh, he's just insulting me. He's just mad he gets no puniti. No, look it up. When you're 35 and you want to get pregnant, you have to go see a specialist. <laughs> oh, no, I really wish. I really wish I went back into time and went to med school and what is it? Did OBGYN and then specialized in geriatric pregnancies just so I could wear a mask every day to hide the smile on my face. <laughs> uh, technically, you're a geriatric pregnancy. What? I'm only 36. Are you calling me old? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny. It's so funny. Anyhow, let's keep going through the chat before we play the videos, huh? Sorry, you made me. You, that was a good, that was a good hater. You know, they tried something there. They tried something there. What else we get here? Big Endorse says, cut cast IRL is finished. Well, I mean, it's still doing banging numbers, but it's just Tim bringing on guests and like, Talking about how smart he is. It's not a guest-driven show. It was more entertaining when you had pushback on Tim Pool. But Tim Pool, as strong as he likes to appear, is weak of mind. He does not like pushback. He doesn't do pushback well. He wants to be the smartest person in the room. And multiple people have said that. Real Rain says, Tim Pool introduced the world to Jack Murphy. Damn it, that's another thing. <coughs> Tim Pool made Jack Murphy hundreds of thousands of dollars LARPing as an alpha. Now, thank the Lord. Thank you, God. 
that you had a man like Undead Chronic backed by the war band around to expose Cuck Murphy. Thank God. Because if not, all the Tim Pool simps, which aren't my fans really, but all the Tim Pool simps listening right now, <laughs> you would have been buying his cars. <laughs> I'm a 27-year-old centrist male. I work as a co in the corporate world, and I am red-pilled on politics. I listen to Tim Pool on my way to work and back five times a week, but I have no luck with women. I don't know why. I just, I just, oh, oh, Jack Murphy, he looks like a big, strong, bad boy. I'm going to buy his course. I'm going to join the Luminal Order. <laughs> uh, how many hundreds of Tim Pool fans? How many, probably, maybe even thousands. How many thousands of Tim Pool fans do you think joined the Slippy Slide crew, boys? <laughs> and as soon as we outed him as a cuckold, the ship sinks, the rats flee, and Cuck Murphy takes his uh, zinc bath down to the bottom of the ocean. Chris Trumptastic says, Tim just wants the money. I think what Tim wants more than money is not fame, but adoration. He wants people to respect him and think he's smart. What else we have here in the chat? Shout out to chat. We got 934 people watching. I just gave this stream like an hour to show. I was like, is this going to get people's attention? I don't know. I put the poll up. Everybody wanted me to talk about this because it's not you're not going to get a red pill, uh, MGTOW, not either of those. But you're not going to get a masculine perspective on this incident unless I talked about it, really. And by masculine, I'm not saying the people that talk about it aren't masculine. I'm saying more like masculine focused, right? Like here are the dangers presented to men. Although I don't know if anybody would fall for the danger of a... 30 year old trad thought DMing you on Instagram. I, I don't think you guys would fall for that, but Hey, maybe some Tim pool fans are listening and they're like, good Lord. I, I could see myself ruining my friendship, losing tons of money. Cause some, you know, girl with the right kind of angles on her Instagram DMs me. Well, you're welcome. Welcome to the show. Take out a notebook, take some notes. Cause chronic is here to tell you about the dangers of Western women. But my mom's a Western woman. She married to your dad? Yeah. Oh, she's still married to your dad. She's actually in the minority of Western women who stay married that long. So, lots of things going on here. Let's keep on going through the chats. I'm Skylar says, thirst cast IRL. Absolutely. <coughs> Tim Harton says, Chronic's roasting the viewers with the picture. Yeah, that's right. I'm trying to burn your retinas out, Brutus. <laughs> so like, take the picture down. Please, Chronic. We followed you into a thousand battles. What did we do to deserve this? <laughs> okay, I'll change the picture. I guess I'll change it. Actually, no, I don't see enough suffering in the chat. I'll change it when I see enough suffering. Let's continue with the chats. Oh, my eyes. <laughs> I'm sorry. What else do we have here? <sighs> men learned nothing from Fuzzy Bumblebee. Voice for men. Women should have the last lesson we needed. I don't even know who that is. Nigel says, Tim Pool is the alpha in the cast castle. Well, that's not, say that's not saying much. That's not saying much. That's like, <laughs> that's like saying I have the best vision when I visit the school for the blind. Like, I can see the farthest in this entire building, bro. <laughs> so what? Oh, man. What else we have in the chat? Kink Castle IRL? I don't think they did anything kinky. It's probably just vanilla missionary style. I mean, look, let's be honest. Tim Pool hasn't had a lot of experience with women. I'm not saying he's an incel. He's probably, I don't know, like three or four girlfriends, maybe five sexual partners at most. 
And if you only have five sexual partners, most of them being girlfriends, you're not really getting exposed to the freaky chicks, you know, the ones that are like, choke me till I pass out kind of deal. So it was probably just vanilla. Do you think Adam's room, because they all lived in the same house. Do you think Adam and his wife, when they were in their room, they could like hear the activities going on with Tim and Lydia? <laughs> that sounds like a horror movie. I'd get up, I'd just, I'd change my sleep schedule. I'd sleep during the day and then be up at night just lifting. <laughs> Dooskin says, so Adam didn't attack the girl due to him killing his own child. Uh, I think he got triggered because Lydia was talking about uh, how abortion is murder, period. And Adam, it, it, just a preview, Adam had a girlfriend at a time who went to get an abortion. She asked his opinion and he said, I don't, you know, you choose what you want to do and I'll back it up. But, you know, like a 36-year-old divorcee who married another man is having sex outside the marriage. I don't think she really gets to talk about morality. But that's the thing, like women in politics, women talking about morality. Us in the war band don't like, we don't listen. We don't listen to those those people <laughs> it's just like, like yeah all they need to do is put on a little makeup say i'm a queen I'm, I'm a conservative girl and then when the cameras are off go have sex with their boss come on now what else we have in the chat you get chad says classic trad thoughts Brittany venti I don't think she puts herself off as trad. I think she admits she's damaged, right? But I mean, she's definitely a thought. I'm not sure I'd say trad. I don't actually, to be honest, I don't really listen to Britney Venti's stuff. And if I did, I would just mute it and then uh, put construction paper on the top half of my computer screen so I could see the real product being showcased on her show. The inner tatas. Chrissy Meyer. Only heard her a couple times. On um, the Geeks and Gamers crew. Not funny. Just a bunch of like. I, again. I don't want to call. The Geeks and Gamers guys. Virgins. Because they're obviously not. But I'll just say. Less sexually experienced males. They think it's funny when a woman talks about sex in public. It, that's like. It's. It's you know. The humor is funny because it's kind of shocking if, you know, you haven't done nasty things to a bunch of nasty females. But I don't think she's funny. Lauren Southern, yeah, she's queen trad thought to me. Michaela Peterson, single mother with herpes. Ashley XOXO, um, she just seems kind of off her rocker, to be honest. And just pearly things. Yeah, well, I haven't seen any evidence she's a, she's a trad thought, like a thought. But that being said... She has to prove that she's not. So until you prove that you're not a trad thought, I don't know how you do that. You're a trad thought. So yeah, pretty much all trad thoughts there. Gatekeeper says, imagine Tim Pool replying to Undead Chronic later on a political channel. <laughs> oh, he won't touch this. He won't touch this. What is he going to do? He's going to like watch the first five minutes of the video where I'm making fun of him for being a simp. We're making fun of Lydia for her life decisions. And he's going to get upset and turn off the camera. Like, you know what? Maybe I'll take a week off. What else do we have in the chat? Griffith the Red says, Chronic is a 1920s Democrat fighting to preserve the traditional family values. Uh, no, I don't really like, look, I don't, 1920s? Yeah, 19th was passed then. That's not, that's not, no. I'm like a 1520s warlord. I don't care about votes. Why don't I care about votes? Come on now. And weren't the Democrats in the 20s like rolling with them, the white pointy hats? Sounds lame. Got better things to do. In the 20s, I'd probably be on the frontier. Retro says, on the show, Lydia said she had a medical condition. Now I see it was age. Well, you know, she has a medical condition and she's old. But you know, the medical condition that she had typically shows up in your 30s. So if, and if you have children, it reduces the chance of it showing up. Hmm. 
Hmm. Is being a barren, lying Lilith, is that, is that what led to her suffering from a medical condition? Nah, I hope she gets better. But I mean, and she had a couple kids. Stop the drinking and smoking. Not sure she does either, but once you have kids and settle down, you typically don't do that. Maybe she wouldn't have developed that condition. Who cares? I am Skylar says the liminal order graduates have entered the chat. Hold the line, men. Hold the line against thoughts, foreign and domestic. And <coughs> oh, sorry. Just getting over a little bit of a cold. If you want to support the channel, if you want to support the work we do here, consider leaving a like on this video. Consider commenting or subscribing to the channel. Maybe you're a hater. Just subscribe to my channel and make fun of me on every video. Help me with the algorithms, haters. That's the least you can do. And if you really want to support Chronic's war against thoughts and simps on the internet, consider donating. To cash app slash cash sign undead chronic. Let's continue with the chats. I'm loving these chats, guys. Once we get to the bottom of the chat, so the chats get old, I'll uh, switch it over to the video. Okay. Man, the chat actually jumped so much, I, I missed all of it. Looks like you guys are suffering in the chat. <laughs> Vitalis says, Chronic, please. At least a picture with the legs closed, please. <laughs> oh, man. Father knows says, Chronic, you're about to hit a thousand eyeballs. Yeah, we got a thousand fifty people watching. I didn't think a lot of people would be interested in this kind of stuff. Like whenever I bring up Tim Pool, I'll do a short roasting Tim Pool, or Tim Pool has some boomer on. And he's like, young millennial men need to work harder and pay more taxes. And I'll roast them. I'll get like twenty thousand, thirty thousand views. But uh yeah, no, I this well the reason why this is going so popular, because it's like people want to, there's not a lot of streams talking about this, first of all. And second of all, it's, a th it's what we talk about on this channel. It's a feminist trad thought. What's a trad thought? And I got to explain these words for the Tim Pool fans here. A trad thought is a traditionalist thought. They say they're a traditionalist. They say they respect the sanctity of marriage. They say women should be at home and have kids. Yet, they don't do any of that. They're online. They're Lauren Southern. They're this chick. They're Roma Army. They're lying. And why they lie? Because they make money off of weak men. Weak men go, oh, my queen. Oh, she's blonde. Oh, it's a white girl talking about marriage. Oh, let me go to her Patreon. It's pathetic. I really don't like weakness in men. Nobody does. But these triad thoughts do if they can exploit it. Let's continue in the chat. Draken says, to be honest, after watching Adam's video, it kind of all fell into place. Tim definitely has temper problems, and she was really bad with working the cameras. Well, I mean, why is Tim so mad? He literally hired a random chick who sent him a DM off of Instagram. Imagine that. A DM off of Instagram. Dom <laughs> Grind says, I want my slippy slide. <laughs> it's like the coming together of so many different roasts. It's the trad thoughts. It's Tim Pool. He platformed Jack Murphy. Like, it, this is just, they make it it too easy for Chronic to make content now. But like, Chronic, do you need help making content? Undead Chronic. Do you need help making content? Let's just, let's just tie together all the tomfoolery that people are talking about. Let's see, what else we have here? You know what's really funny too? Um, what's funny to me is, let me check it. Take away the live. What's funny to me is uh, Carolyn Borisenko was like in the Tim Pool house and saw a bunch of this stuff. 
and she streamed yesterday and she streamed today. And guess what? Guess what? We're getting more viewers than she did. <laughs> All right, she got like 700 live viewers, which is great for her channel. Good for you, Carolyn, with the over 100,000 subs. We're sitting here at 1,000. <laughs> a person who was on the ground who heard the of Tim Pool and Sour Patch Lids getting it on. She got fewer listeners than I'm getting. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I think it's great. Let's continue with the chats. Chronic, how do you send shekels from Europe? I don't have Cash App. Um, can you, what you could do is you can go to the Teespring store in mods. Um, you could just slap the links in the chat every now and then, and you could just buy a digital product. I got like, you can buy like some of the art for five bucks and it'll send you the full JPEG. And it's really just a donation, right? It's like, you want to send me five bucks? Well, that's the easiest way to do it. So just go on there, buy the art for five bucks. It's like a $50 one, a hundred dollar one, whatever. Or you, I think they send shirts to the to Europe or the UK. You get yourself a shirt or stickers, right? You get like a sticker of Ruby the Party Frog. People will have no idea what where it's from, and you won't get attacked in public, probably. Let's see what else we have in the chat. Hammerhand, everybody, shout out for Hammerhand. He says one thousand in the box. Shout out Hammerhand, the MGTOW monk. And if you guys want. More masculine content. Probably won't talk about this kind of situation. Go check out uh, Pop Culture Rocks. Pop Culture Rocks. Is Hammerhand a masculine man talking about the tomfoolery in pop culture? What else we have in the chat here? What about Lauren Chen? Yeah, she's probably just a chat thought too. Like, look. Whatever name you'll send me about some woman on the right making content for money... I'm just going to call her a trad thought because none of them have kids. None of them submit it, stay at home. They preach it. And if they don't, and let's be, okay, let's, let's maybe make it easier for the Tim Fool fans in the chat. If you think women should be allowed to vote, right? You are a feminist. That's not an insult. First wave feminism guaranteed the right to vote for women. So you are at the very least a first wave feminist. Chronix is just labeling you correctly, okay? I I'm just telling you what you are. Don't get mad about it. So all these trad thoughts, all of them, they're feminists. Let's continue. Hmm. I don't see any haters in the chat. <laughs> Tyler McFlyer says, I want a 50s housewife. A 1350s housewife. That's true. That's what I'm saying, right? <laughs> want her lean and tone from working in the fields? Want her to submit completely? Now the dental health and the dental plan we could talk about, we can compromise there. 1950s housewife. Oh, this is so entitled. Oh my goodness, this chat's going nuts. Thank you guys for the chat engagement. I really do enjoy this. Diamond DM13 says, Chronic, is it not disgusting to think a wife would have been with other men? It's not just that it's statistically worse option. It's disgusting to not marry a virgin. Yeah, well, there's a science, right? There's pair bonding. There's a divorce statistics. There's the religious aspect. And then there's like the personal pride thing. It's just like, were you telling me other men had you when you were hotter? Huh. Interesting. Lily says, no Lydia, no chlamydia. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> Lydia, chlamydia. That's a good one. That goes good. Brad R says, would Tim Pool ever debate under chronic? No, he doesn't really do debates. Not go on a show and talk to him about, you know, the... the what the manosphere wants to talk about i won't put, look the closest temple got to the manosphere was having fresh and lubed aka fred and fraud aka fresh and fit on his show 
And what did they do? They spent the whole time talking about how much pussy they get. What a, what a, what a service to men they did. What, what a, they really care about you guys. I get all this pussy in Miami. Shut up! Your daddy was a fed. You don't have a chin, Myron Gaines. And on top of that, you have to pay for your pussy. Well, sinking arrangements, simp. Disgusting. I don't think you'd let me talk, though. What else we have here in the chat? Only f oh, we got 500 likes. We're doing good. We're doing good. What's in this? Oh, Raymond Reddington says, you have 53,000 subs. Why don't you have a YouTube donation button? Funny you should ask, bro. <laughs> Let me tell you something else about my channel. You see, it's Undead Chronic XIV. That stands for 14 in Roman numerals because this is my 14th channel. YouTube doesn't like MGTOW men. YouTube doesn't like red pill men. I'm neither of those. They really don't like anti-feminists. But partially, they don't like comedians, right? If you make fun of someone who's not a white man, you probably get a strike. So I'm not monetized on any of my content, man. I'm going to apply for like the eighth time in December. I probably won't get it, but I'll try. I'll try to apply. And let's hope Chronic gets a gets monetization, and then you guys will hear so much shilling. You're gonna you're gonna take a hammer to your computer. You'll be like, "Damn, this guy's just here to shill." That's right, motherfucker. My wallet is light. <laughs> just messing with you. <laughs> oh my goodness. What else you have in the chat? This is a fun show, guys. I love seeing you, Brutus, in the chat. I didn't think we'd get this many people coming in on a Saturday evening. But hey, it's all good. Logan says the Teespring link is dead. Uh, let me uh, let me find out about that man. I don't think it's dead. Log in. Let's see here. My penis is extremely large. I don't wear a beanie. Oh crap, I'm giving away my passwords right now. That's bad. I wonder if they deleted my Teesprings account. It'd be funny if they did. I found out on a stream. Not a valid login. Come on, this has to be a valid login. You got Teesprings, don't do me dirty like that. Here we go. Bro, this link ain't dead. I just got to the store. Let me make sure it's not dead in here. Okay, cool. Let's hope that's not dead. Back to the chat. Here's some haters in the chat. Um, <laughs> VHS says, Haters in the chat, point them out. <laughs> I mean, like what? Oh, let's put a poll up. Let me put a poll up. Let's find out where you guys want the show to be. There you go. What are we gonna do for the show? Should I actually start playing the videos? Adam Krig, I got maybe it's, you got 10 minutes of Adam Krigler's video and then uh, 15 minutes of Tim Pool crying about it. <laughs> but we apparently got haters in the chat. I, I don't know. Apparently got haters in the chat. Let's keep on going through these uh, questions though. How about that? I'm gonna go through these questions. Chronic, please take this goblin off the screen. I could smell the city tap water. <laughs> I think you guys could 
look, we're doing an eye workout today. You need to strain your eyes and learn how to deal with pain. I, you know, this is painful, okay? And suffering pain builds character. You guys are going to have a whole lot of character at the end of this stream. Now, Sandman in the chat. What's good, Sandman? He says, how sour is Lydia's Sour Patch? Oh, oh. Sandman, you are disgusting. But hilarious. <laughs> oh, this is one of the biggest, I think he's the biggest revenue live stream show on YouTube. It got tanked by a thought who looks like this. Look at it. Look at it. Look at her axial fat folds. Wait. Oh, I don't have a, I can't show you my mouse. Look at those tattoos. Ugh. Ugh, look at like, I can't even tell if she has tatas. It looks like a big triangle. Ooh. Please. This is, this is, Lydia is why burkas were invented. You realize that, right? <laughs> oh, God. This, I don't know who this guy is talking about. Tim Pool and Lydia. He's mean. I, yeah. I, I'm, look, guys, I'm kind of mean. I'm sorry. What else do we have in the chat? We're almost down to the bottom, so we'll switch it over to the videos here soon. Let's see. This live stream's going to be bananas. Oh, it's already bananas, guys. Walter says, I'm a divorced Christian, single mother, looking for a serious relationship. Oh. <laughs> The Dre Day Show says, would you collab with MTR, Cheek, Slang, Headquarters, or Steph is Cold? I don't think I've seen any of their videos, but I'm probably down to collab with anybody. So uh, you can just tell them, carry on the message, right? I think I've seen the Dre Day Show before. Does he have his own YouTube channel? I think he would. You, you think someone with that name would, just because, well, I mean... It's a name people would channels. Yeah, he's got a couple. He's got a hundred subs. Yeah, he he does a YouTube channel. Okay, yeah, just tell them I'd be down. What else is here? And is chat is going crazy. Okay. You'll say video, then talk to the Sims. Okay, I'd be down. <laughs> E46 says, yeah, please get rid of the fossil on screen. Guys, I'm trying to teach you paleontology. We have to look at the fossil and determine how old it is. <laughs> Blue Bill Cuck says, my eyes. Oh, <laughs> eye maxing. Sandman says, I don't know how Tim fell for this. You don't? I mean, bro. Just look at Tim Pool. Look at this guy. It, the dude has no... Look. When I say he has no experience with women, he's had like two or three girlfriends. He's still in the vulnerable simp B stage mindset. All it takes is a white chick to give him attention. And it's over. So I'm not surprised Tim fell for this. And he's a simp. Let's be honest. He's a simp. Same man then says, Tim has low standards. They are thin, but that's about it. I don't, I don't think that was thin. Or you mean his standards are thin? I hope you're talking about his standards because I don't think uh, Sour Patch Lids is thin. I mean, ugh, I tell you, maybe she's thin compared to the average American woman. But like, the Cape Horn Buffalo is thin compared to the average American woman. Okay, almost done with the chats, guys, and then we'll start playing the videos. We're having, the fun, we're having our fun right now because when we play the video of Adam, he gets emotional. It's kind of sad. It's kind of sad.
let's see what we got here. ESP says, shout out to the chat. Shout out to the chat, guys. I see my mods coming in. I see Hammerhand. I see Sandman. I see Rishi. Why isn't Sandman a mod? We'll make him a mod. There you go, Sandman. Now your name will be Blue. And people will be like, oh, wow, Sandman's a mod of Undead Chronics channel. I'm like, damn right. Hell yeah. I think the last time he and Sandman talked, he brought, he showed me an article from like the 1920s and it was calling bachelor simps. <laughs> it was like the rise of the bachelor simp. I was like, oh gosh, oh gosh, that's funny. Okay. Let's, uh, let's continue here. Nixon says, Chank's spurring out on Tim with some comedy gold. Well, Tim's not going to get a lot of allies. Like, he's just constantly losing allies. You need to accumulate allies. At least the allies I lose are, like, usually allies I made myself. Like, I made them get into prominence. And then they, and then we, whatever reason, we, we broke up. Very sad. They ghosted me on the text line. I'm texting them five times a day. And she's like, you ugly. I'm like, huh. <laughs> Except in uh, YouTube ships, at least. Okay, we're almost done here. Okay, we are live. Okay, yeah, no, we're done with the chats. Let me check the super chats and then we'll start playing the videos, guys. I bet I'm going to have four super chats. That's what we're going to go for. We're going to get four today. Oh, no, nope, we have 12. You guys are generous today. Damn. Oh, no. People are talking about slippy slides in the super chats. Matt K with a donation. Thank you, Matt K, for your generous donation. This runs from uh, Wakako. Wakako says, at least that heavily tad thought. No, no. He says, Lydia is the least heavily tatted thought on Tinder. Uh, I've seen some girls without tattoos on Tinder. Matt K with another donation. Thank you, Matt your generous donation this one is from uh clever fish he says tattoos on a woman are a deal breaker i look i like tattoos on a chick i think it makes him sexy i like that aesthetic but if she has tattoos it's a guarantee she's not a virgin so hmm yeah let's see ceo of tomfoolery says chronic does low t cause tim pool's body <laughs> i don't know he's an athlete because he's a skateboarder See, uh, RT says JM convinced Tim, or Jack Murphy convinced Tim to get Lydia's husband slippy slide. <laughs> oh, okay. I can't even say that word without laughing anymore. Let's see. This one is from Reen. Reen says real trad wives don't have time for the internet. That's the damn truth. They don't have time to go for simps on the internet. Uh, this guy says, please don't say this on the stream. I have a problem. My penis is simply too enormous to function. I've been wearing the same pair of jeans because I can't take them off. Well, I think you should go to the hospital, bro. This one is from Touch. Touch says, God of War Ragnarok is a feminist's wet dream. It, just like a jacked guy beating the shit out of people. I mean, yeah. Buff says, Las Vegas Slippy Slide Crew. Oh, <laughs> Vegas Slippy Slide Crew. This, uh, this one says, I saw, um, this one's from Mead. Mead says, saw Jamestown skeleton that looks better than that. Well, yeah. Um, I'm sorry for hurting all of your eyes, guys. But thank you for making me laugh by super chatting me and talking about slippy slides. That shit is always hilarious. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's start the video. I'm gonna grab myself a drink and I'll be back shortly to comment on it. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we'll start with Adam's video. Let's make sure the volumes are set. Here we go. Because Lydia clearly loved him. She was 
infatuated with him. It's it's a sad story. It's not something that I'm happy about. I considered Tim a friend. Yes, past tense. I, I don't anymore. We don't talk. We barely talked before we started the show. It wasn't like we were uh, buddies. Um, I also, I want to let this go. I want to put this in the past. I want to finally move forward. And, and I feel it like... really started so fantastically. Like I, I've really loved Tim Cast IRL. I really did. You know, I, I, I had such a blast on that show. And Lydia didn't have a camera. I don't even think she had a mic. I think she was just, she was just sitting on the other side of the room. And it was me and Tim in the very beginning. And I thought that was kind of weird because people, because Tim would like yell to like, like, Fuck you! and everyone's like, who's he talking to? Like, what's, what's going on? And I actually advocated for her to get a mic and a camera. I was like, it's kind of weird. Like, she should have a camera. She should have a mic. Like, she should be like a part of this. Yeah, well, even a broken <laughs> clock is right. And, uh, you know, there was a time where things just felt awesome. You know, things were smooth. And that was March. February. It was like the first month and a half. Uh, maybe the first two months. But then the lockdown hit. And COVID happened. Okay, chat. You seen that picture of that chick? Imagine you were locked in a house. With that chick. And look, she's not even going after you. She's going after your best friend. But she is just acting 10,000% bitchy. Oh, gosh. And uh, this is from Martin Speaks. And uh, sorry for all the random memes and sound clips, guys. Uh, yeah, let's continue. And we we kind of got locked into a house together. And it wasn't a very big house. It was a four-bedroom house. And at the time, there were six people living in the house. Like I said, you know, there was a time where it was awesome. Like, it worked. Um but it feels like it very quickly devolved. And I, I, I blame the lockdowns mostly, you know, because had we all been able to get away from each other and. Bro, I would be it would be like prison escape the video game VR if I was locked in a house with a trad thought in Tim Pool with Jack Murphy visiting like once a week, I would be out of that bitch so fast i'd be digging a tunnel i'd be trying to make a plane i'd just make a giant catapult maybe a giant um slingshot just get me away from that low testosterone hell please maybe get our own place get get our own space there was something that really started irking me and that was the 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 way that Honestly, both Tim and Lydia ha had this uh, mentality of being high and mighty and, and know best. And they're the, the smartest people that have the, all the answers. And I never want to claim I have the answers because no one has all the answers, right? I, I'll have advice. I'll have opinions. They're Wait, shout out Kamaz Kamaziki. He says... Jack Murphy was trying to get everyone to toss a salad. Yeah, so you got to deal with Lydia acting like an entitled thought. You have to deal with Tim Pool and his narcissism, although he's friends with you. So let's say Tim, Tim's cool, right? But then you got to deal with like once a week, <laughs> trying to sleep with your wife. Adam, you want to you wanna go down my slippy slide? No, I don't, Jack! Hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. 
there was yeah i don't know there there was something about that that really bugged me and there was this vibe of both of them teaming up on me and this wasn't just on the show you know this was persistent at all times to be honest lydia is is a yes man to tim that's all she did she had no opinions of her own and this was not just live and it was so irksome you know i would catch her lying live about books that she read and i'd ask her a second later oh, okay what about what was in that book that's relevant like what what made you think of that book oh i actually didn't read the book i was like you just said you you read the book um so tim and i skated a lot yeah well look people lie but women lie now when you say women lie people freak out you say people lie we all accept it you say men lie people go yeah yeah but when you say women lie the simps they go crazy right lydia lies for people to think that she's a valuable trad thought or trad con i'll say trad con marriage pro-life christian nice yeah she's gonna lie about being smart she's gonna lie about reading books she's a lebron james of white woman no surprise in this t time period right tim built a mini ramp in his backyard it was awesome it was freaking that was that was probably the the best thing about being locked up in that place is that we could go out and skate and tim and i did often we would go out and skate we had and tim was sitting he's like man he's the best skater in the world and i was like i don't agree and he <laughs> i bet you can guess what he said to me we weren't live we weren't we weren't streaming at the time <laughs> that's right you guessed it he wrong that is absolutely wrong proved over and over again wrong. He actually told me i was wrong and lydia chimed in yeah he is the best skater in the world Lydia, what the fuck do you know about skateboarding? I'm sorry. You know, you don't, you don't know anything about skateboarding. What? The three of us, I was the only one who happened to be a pro skater at one point in his life. I wasn't at the time. I'm no longer. Uh, but I was a pro skater. I rode for Arbor Skateboards and Bustin' Boards in New York before I got onto the Arbor team. And uh, skating's an art form. You can't tell me one, one person's the best skater in the world. And then when I disagree, you instantly just say I'm wrong. That shit's that's that's laughable and i laughed i i did i thought it was hilarious um i probably should have called lydia out i didn't i just laughed in my head because i thought that was absolutely ridiculous but those skate sessions that tim and i started having i started to notice something lydia would always be around she would hover around tim everywhere everywhere all the time i'm sorry let me say that again there was never a point where lydia was not in the room with tim because she would follow him around all the time like nonstop. it was so annoying because that that like mimicry that she did was ever present you know that i still fa i lived with her and i still fail to see her personality because all she did was mimic tim a lot of women are like that, especially thoughts. Thoughts don't have any personality. They're like an empty vessel, and they will fill themselves up with the energy of the man they're attracted to. And, you know, here's another thing. It's just like, I've dated chicks. They're not into comics. We date. They get into comics. They actually enjoy it. They're not just getting into comics because I like comics. Because I like the weird comics. Um, you know, take that as you will. I've dated chicks where, you know, I, I get them into fitness. Now, I have a reason to. I need some good glutes. She needs to squat at least two times a week. But they'd still go to the gym if we weren't dating. As Nixon says, if they're into you, they'll do what you do. That's right. And man, was it annoying. Tim always had his door open. 
You know, he'd be sitting on the bed, beanie-less. That's right. He didn't always wear his beanie, all right, guys? Tim's learned the golden rule of being on the internet. You don't care what other people say. You just do the work. I learned that from him. Others could learn from him, too. Um, you know, he's got an insane worth work ethic. But that weird, like, hovering Lydia suddenly made sense when I saw her in the bed with him. Oh, shit. They banging. Well, more like whimpering. Uh, don't think there was, a, I don't think there was any kind of aggressive sex going on in that household, unless it was, unless Matt from Tinder followed Jack Murphy in once. But besides that, there's no like loud wall shaking, banging going on in that house. I guarantee it. When I saw her in the bed with him. And it was, I was like, what the fuck? Okay, this is weird. And I, it all made sense. And then I learned that Lydia was married. I've been cheated on before. I think it's uh, horrible. And I have zero respect. Uh, for people that do that. And I lost a lot of respect for Lydia. I didn't lose all my respect for her, but I lost a lot of my respect for her. I guess I really didn't have too much to begin with, but, you know, that's still, that's still something that changed a lot for me. I had to sit across from her every single day and listen to her, uh, lie and uh mimic tim and it was kind of nauseating um yeah so that what is that like april may you know it was starting to get a little nicer outside and uh tim told me about his girlfriend allison who's very lovely by the way now this is important because in Tim Pool's emotional response video where he cries, he gets upset because Adam was smack-talking his girlfriend, Allison. Literally, the entire time he talks about this chick, very nice girl, wonderful person. She's great. But Tim Pool, he's just projecting his feelings for Lydia onto, or onto Allison, right? He's like, oh, he attacked Lydia. He's attacking my girls. He's attacking my females. Get the hell out of here, Pool. Look. You strung a triad thought along. You were playing the part of an adulterer with a married woman. And you probably cheated on your girlfriend, Tim Pool. Now, I don't care. None of these women who dated or chased after Tim were virgins. None of these women Tim was associated with were attractive. None of these women Tim associated with were under the age of 25. These are all used goods, in my opinion. It's like, you know, uh, uh, a raw turkey breast. That's been thawed for three days now, sitting at the bottom of a Walmart bin versus the moldy cheese. I, I don't care. They have no use for me, but it's for the normies. Wow, Tim Pool's a cheater. Wow, Tim Pool's an adulterer. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, look, he's, he's, he's a liberal. He's a liberal. He refuses to see things straight in his face, or he'll just lie, say he doesn't see it because he wants to stay on YouTube. Well, like Tim Pool says the problem with racism isn't that there's people being racist against white people. He still holds that belief. I understand it, Tim Pool. You're not white. You'll never stand up for white people. But makes a lot of your video, uh, makes a lot of your viewers kind of uh, raise an eyebrow. We'll say. But Tim Pool's emotional. We know it. Let's continue. And that she was coming to live in the house. In like three weeks. And I was like. Wait a minute. Hold up. You, your girlfriend is going to move in here now. With, with Lydia and, and you and like, so wait. And I actually pulled him aside. And I said, Tim, what the hell? 
you know, this isn't going to work. Like, this is unfair on Allison. This is unfair on Lydia. She, I mean, she would literally do anything that he asked her to do. And, you know, I didn't think it was fair. I was like, this, you know, this is going to hurt somebody. Right. And, you know, Tim was like, you know, this is, uh, no, it's fine. It's not, no, it's, it's fine. Which shocked me because that's, that's a freaking disaster waiting to happen. I, I, I didn't know what to expect. I hadn't met Allison yet, so I didn't know who she was. Tim told me nice things about her uh, for a, a couple months, you know, kind of talking about her or that she was coming. And uh, I don't know. I just, uh, that really kind of uh, just, it, it threw me off, you know, it threw me off. What is up, guys? Welcome back. To okay, and that's all for the video, for the first one. Uh, yeah, we got the, we got Tim Pool's response, but basically the shtick is Tim Pool cheating on his chick, Lydia cheating on her husband. She's obnoxious. Uh, they didn't get to the part where they talked about uh, the abortion. Does anybody have a good link for that? Basically, the the bomb that went down was Adam said he had a previous girlfriend who was pregnant. And she's like, what do you want to do? And Adam said, well, whatever choice you make, I'll support you. And so she got an abortion. And Adam says he's been hurt for that for a long time. He thinks about it all the day, all day, all night, that kind of deal. And during the end of a show, Lydia said, anybody who gets an abortion is a murderer. Adam was not a very, Adam was not a very happy camper when confronted with that. And so they had a little bit of a tiff, right? And Tim told Adam, you cannot talk to Lydia like that. So this girl who is so moral, so upright, who defends babies, called basically called Adam a murderer while she's cheating on her husband. I think it's her second husband. Who knows? It's such a good Christian woman getting a divorce. Such a good Christian woman being 36 and no kids, huh? You know, in a certain kind of viewpoint, think of all the kids Lydia decided to murder by not letting them exist. Think of all the eggs from 18 to 30 that Lydia sat on the toilet and dripped out with a tampon every single month. But she would never see herself as a murderer. No way. Adam is definitely a murderer. So there you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, now people saying you're all simpy. Look, I haven't seen enough of Adam's own content. He just kind of seems like a dude that wants to talk about Trump. Whatever. But what's up, chat? What are you guys, what are you guys up to? I got the second video. Should I play the second video? Do you guys want to take some, uh, some Tim Pool? Sim Do we have any haters? Where are all the good haters? Huh? Where are they? Where are the haters? And look, I'm not going to just roast you if you call into the show. We'll have a discussion. I'll tell you why your heroes are weak. And I'll tell you why you should subscribe to this channel. Truth Lies says, Adam anti-Trump or pro-Trump? I think Adam's very pro-Trump. Blada says, we can't hold women accountable for having periods and not using them. Can you imagine if the logic was used on dudes? Wait a second, Bl Bladis. I think, I think your statement makes a lot more sense if it's shortened because that's really what you're saying. You say, LOL, nah, man. We can't hold women accountable, period. Women sacrifice their family. They sacrifice their family when they go through their 20s and not have children. 
I know it's kind of hard to grasp. It's kind of a hard concept to grasp, but you're choosing your career or your family. The healthiest, most viable eggs are when a woman's 18 to 25. Okay? This is scientifically proven. Every year they get older, the quality of the eggs decreases. So for a woman to say, you, you aborted your kid, you're a murderer. At the same time, just let all of her potential kids get flushed down the drain. Hold her accountable, right? I'm not saying every chick should have kids. People could do whatever the hell they want. But I'm not going to listen to moral grandstanding from a trad thought who gave up her chance to have family and got a divorce and cheated on her husband. You don't, you don't give them any ground. You never give feminists any ground because they'll eat another Big Mac and expand onto it. Okay? Hope that makes sense, man. Lex says, I agree with the chat. Okay. Um, what else we have here? Nixon says, time stamped. Apparently, Nixon gave me the link. Let's see if it works. Oh, the reason I can't get that, man. Let me try it this way. Uh, of course, I'm getting ads. I'll just mute them. Hopefully, we can get to the... Uh, I think I got the abortion segment here. When I get through these comments, I will listen to Adam's own words. Lone Wolf says, I only hate that you tortured us with that picture for so long. I'll put it back up. I'll put it back up, bro. You better watch out. Mess around. Get tortured by chronic some more. What do we get? Deacon Destroy says, Why haven't you responded to the beta? In your Lauren Southern video comments, which one? There's like hundreds of them. Scott Siler says, too bad HB starts a show at the same time as a UCW show. HB? Who the heck is HB? Uh, yeah, I don't know who that is, man. I'm sorry. What else do we have in the chat? Hmm. Roast SBF. Who is that? I don't know these people. Sorry. I don't know these people. <laughs> Storm Rage says, bring the picture back, Chronic. The simps need to go through some more pain. They need to suffer to learn. <laughs> oh, you'd be a good torture at the warband fort, wouldn't you? Restore data. Chronic, what's your thoughts on Melanie Mack? I don't know who that is. I don't know any of these people. Okay. Chronic, what do you think of the Balenciaga scandal where they have an ad of kids holding teddy bears in bondage? Well, I mean, groomers. Look, they're all groomers. Hollywood, groomer. HB says, hard to brother. I don't know who, yeah, I don't know who that is anyhow. Okay. Let's listen to Adam talk about his abortion. My goodness. So that 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 added to my like ugh, with Lydia, right? So my red pilling was in full uh, effect at this point. I'm doing my research. I'm reading about cultural issues, political issues. I I didn't want to sit on a desk with Tim and be told I'm wrong without being able to back up what I was saying, my opinions. So I started doing that very well. And in doing that, I, I became a formidable co-host to Tim, as many of you may remember. I know a lot of people don't even know that I was on that show, and that's fine. I, 
I'm that's not what defines me. You know, a lot of people do remember that because it was a really great show, really good dynamic between the two of us. But in doing that, I I started changing some of my views on things. And one of those things is abortion. Now, this is something that took me a long time to uh, get over. I'm going to, no, to forgive myself for, because I had gone through an abortion and it was very difficult for me. I was asked what I wanted to do. And I said, I'll support whatever choice you want to make. And she chose to have an abortion. And um, there's not a part of me that doesn't think back. And I, I don't want to say regret, but, you know, maybe I could have said yes. And maybe I'm in direct, um, I, I have the direct responsibility for maybe murdering one of my children. Now I'm happily married. I love my wife very much. And I am very much looking forward to being a father. And going through this red pilling process basically like really understanding life is a lot is a lot more challenging and um, intricate than being a child more than you would ever understand as a as a ignorant youth well it i i mean it's still it's still and it will always affect me it'll always be something that i'll i'll remember I have to live with that for the rest of my life. And uh, I've forgiven myself. I've forgiven myself for that. And, and being able to forgive myself is the only way I would have ever been able to tell this story. Because this is kind of an important part of the story. Because Lydia, being the high and, and mighty righteous slut that she is boom <laughs> lydia the high and i don't mean by smoking weed she probably thinks weed is a bad thing the high and mighty self-righteous slut that she is ah, i could have said it better myself well i could have but i'd get a strike was very is very vocal online about how righteous she is and you know, we followed each other on Twitter and I would see her her high and mighty posts about how virtuous she is and how how, you know, pro-life she is and all this stuff. And it triggered the fucking shit out of me because I knew the kind of person she was. The sinful, disrespectful person that didn't give a shit about anyone but herself and Tim. Clearly, she cared about Tim. So that last episode that I was on, well, I mean, it was, it was multiple. It was like a week, basically. Abortion was a hot topic issue, right? We were talking about it a lot. It was in, in the political conversation, as it always is. And, um, you know, she, of course, was acting her, her like I, I mentioned, and I was getting, I was getting annoyed by it, you know, and I, I talked to Nish about it and I was like, I have to say something like, I have to like, you know, I want to be like, Hey, you don't understand like what it's like for people who may have been in that situation. You know, maybe I was trying to convince myself that because I was, I, I still had this, it was like locked in a box, right? And I feel like that red pill journey that I was on kind of was unlocking this box and I was having to face some things that I had locked in there. And this was, this was definitely one of them. It was very, uh, 
very much something that I will I'll never forget. I'll I have to live with. So on that that last episode, Tim said that he was pro-choice. And the way that I sat, I was here and Tim was here and Lydia was there. So Lydia was facing me 100% of the time. So I would always see her face. Oh, imagine doing a three hour stream every night with Lydia, you know, sausage patch lids looking at you in the face. Uh, uh, it's so gross. I'd probably, I'd be like halfway through every show, just projectile vomit, make it a running gag. There's a bucket right there. Sorry. Lydia's diet hasn't really been working recently. You know. And I would always see her like nodding yes to every single thing that Tim ever said. And this is the first time. The first time I ever remembered her disapproving of what he said. And she looked right at me with this like disapproving scowl when he said I'm pro-life. Or that he he's pro life, right? And she just she shook her head at me with like the most disapproving glare. And I'm like, fuck you. Don't fucking look at me with that. Oh. Like I was so pissed. And at the end of that show, I fucking said, I said something. I was like, what the fuck? Like you, you know, you gotta. You don't understand, like, blah, blah, blah. I don't remember exactly what I said because I was really mad. And I said, like, I had I had an abortion. Like, you're, you're fucking calling me a murderer. You know, and Tim, of course, like, put on his, uh, his best white knight outfit. And I was like, you know, you, you can't talk to her like that. And I'm like, I, I have to talk about this. Like, I have to get this off my chest. I have to talk about the things that are bothering me. I have to be live with this woman every day. Like I can't not talk about this shit. And uh, that was that was like basically the end, right, of of that interaction. And I left the room. And uh, Nisha and I, I think we went out for dinner or something. And I didn't see Tim. I didn't see Lydia. And uh, I woke up the next day. And I had a message from Tim. And he said, Yo, you, you can't snap at Lydia like that. Which I found that really fucking rich. Because he would yell at Lydia so loudly for fucking up the thumbnails, fucking up the timing, fucking up the algorithm of his baby. I mean, he, everyone in the house could hear this shit. And this was going on for months. Like he would fucking scream at her. It was it was scary. Like he would get so angry and yell and scream at her for fucking up. And it's like that shit's abusive on both sides. Like I feel like they were being abusive to each other and it, it was fucked up. But then he came to me and said, you can't yell at her like that. You can't yell at about her about her fucking up her job. And I was like, I've never yelled at her for fucking up her job. He's like, yeah, you and you don't do it tactfully. I'm like, every single time she's ever fucked up, this is true. I, I would call her out the very second the, the show ended. I said, hey, you, you really need to make sure when I'm talking, you move the button to me or when t you hit the button to change the camera to me because she's the one who was doing that. Or when Tim starts talking, you really need to make sure it's not on my face just like sitting there. I was very aware of that to the point where I had I had Tim get me my own stream deck so I could force the camera to change. That's how often she fucked up that shit. And it's like Tim yelled at her 10 times. I can't even count how many times he screamed at her. Like it was not even yelling. It was screaming like it didn't matter where you are in the house. You heard him fucking blow up on Lydia. I don't know why she stayed probably because she was in love with him. But I, so that morning when he sent, sent that to me, I was like, Tim, I need to be able to work this shit out. I need to be able to vent and ex like get to like a resolution if I'm going to work with somebody. Like, I, I can't do this. 
you know? And he's, you know, it, it was like a conversation that he was coming from a place of Adam wants to get rid of Lydia. And I was coming from a place of, I don't give a shit if Lydia's Lydia does suck as a producer. And I didn't choose her to be my producer for this show. And you did meet her on Instagram for in DMS when she slid into your DMS, which is true, by the way, you know, like, it would have been nice if you actually hired a professional producer, you know, because we had a really good quality show that would have been nice to have an actual producer, not a nurse from Bumblefuck America somewhere. I don't know. I don't even know. How dare you make fun of Bumblefuck? It is a great place with great people. Now, I have to go run an errand for like 35 minutes, a.k.a. my friend's tire blew out two miles away and he's a dumbass and he drives drunk and he's too drunk to change his fucking tires. So I put a poll up. Please let me know. I have like 35 at most 40 minutes. Um, do I a play Adam stream the entire time I'm gone? That, that's actually kind of fucking hilarious. Just straight up rip his content for 40 minutes. I mean, it has like another hour and a half talking about this shit Two end the stream for 12% or three find a co-host. Um, I wish I had a co-host. A Hammerhand's not here. He's busy. Um, Ribby's MIA. And Manix MIA. But let me shout out the donations, guys. While you guys choose what I should do, let's shout out the two... De Freaks is too drunk to change his tire. Yeah, he's a retard. <laughs> he's, he's just sipping on that good good as he's driving. He's like, bro, I popped the tire. I'm probably going to go to this dude's car. And there's going to be like a kid's tricycle and a bunch of blood stuck in the tire well. I'm like, bro, what the fuck did you hit? Huh? So, people saying I want to listen to this. I'm drunk, but I'm a warband peon. Oh, let me, check, let me get the super chats, guys. Let me get super chats real quick. Um, Let's see here. I got a couple. This one's from Jean. He says, would you go on Joe Rogan? For sure I'd go on Joe Rogan. This one is from, I don't want to say his real name. Let's see who it was. Niru. I think it's Niru. Yeah. Sent me a, a girthy super chat. Thank you, Niru. Um, next time, you know, you could send a message with your super chats, right? You can do that. You'll say and play the video. What else do we have? What, what's going on? <laughs> Ty Fitterwolf says we want car wreck footage live. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm going to play the video. I feel dirty just ripping off the content, but like I watched this whole thing, right? I watched this whole thing. I bet you guys could watch it. Let's see. Just random guy says chronic is going to slip on puke. This dude is weak. I mean, yeah. Prophet of Men said, if Chronic ever checked his Discord, he might have a co-host. I don't have any Discord messages, bro. Sorry. JL says, you can't go on Joe Rogan. You'd be canceled in five minutes when they figure out who you are. Well, I'd have a good time doing it. Come on, says, we want a Chronic point of view tire changing stream. I cuss so much when I have to change tires. Motherfuck, lug nuts. Motherfucking cross wrenches. Motherfucking jacks. Where the hell did I put the jack? I don't see the markings on the frame of the car. It says on the user manual. Motherfucking country roads can't find a goddamn flat surface. Motherfucking spare tire looking like a donut. Don't even tell me which way you're supposed to put it on. Bro, I'm sorry. I took the sticker off because it looked corny. That sticker was supposed to tell me which way the tire was supposed to put on. Is your spare tire flat, bro? You tell, you tell me you got a... You tell me you got a spare tire in your car, lower your gas mileage, and it's flat. Man, you's a hell of a bum. What was this to do with this? Oh my, I just know it's going to be stressful. I just know it's going to be stressful, guys. <sighs> Sorry. Samantha P says, Chronic always asks questions and then does whatever he feels like. I know better now. 
Well, like if people were saying just end the stream, I just ended the stream. But the majority is saying fifty one percent for Adam. Or I'd play a stream. Leave the stream up with the picture. I guess I could. Yeah, I guess I could. AC says, laugh my ass off. This sounds personal. That's happened before. Okay? I'm telling you, been some bullshit. Okay, I think this is what I'll do. I think I have an idea what I'll do. I'm going to play Adam's audio. And I'm going to keep the image of, of... I'll put the image of Lydia up, actually. No, uh, I'll put a better picture of Lydia up. How about that? Won't be the same one. Let's see if I can find one that's not offensive to the eyeballs. This one's not bad. Okay, boys. Yeah, I know. Sandman's gone and Hammerhand can't host, guys. So I'm just going to play their shit. So let's see. Let's see how long this goes on for. <laughs> Say no. Please have mercy. Please. Sandman says he wants to call in. Say, man, you want in? Wait, wait. I feel like I don't want to waste Sandman's time by having him fill the fill the air. Right? I feel like I'd want to talk to Sandman about this myself. You know what I mean? Oh, well, you guys like Sandman. So we'll see if Sandman wants to get in this bitch. But it's like, I don't look, I don't want to just steal Sandman for 40 minutes. He probably wants to talk for like 20 or 30. Hmm. It's a shame. I didn't expect to have so much. Uh, I didn't expect to have so much traffic, guys. I'm sorry. So. Look, I don't want to steal. Look, Sandman's probably only got like 20, 30 minutes to talk about this shit. He just want to talk. He just want to fill air for 40. I don't think he wants to rant for 40 minutes. I don't even know if you need. I don't even know if you can make a stream captain. I can give StreamYard privileges. I've tried that before. That shit doesn't work. <sighs> okay, well let, well, let me, while I decide what I'm going to do, let me talk to a hater or two. Or just put the StreamYard link in to see if I can get a Sandman or Hammerhand or somebody. Yeah, I'll let Sandman decide. If he just wants to chat about this for five minutes, I'll stay until I need to go and talk to Sandman. Let's see, haters. Any haters, you can call in now. Two. So, uh, haters, call in two. I mean, look, I could go off for 40 minutes. I just can't go off for 40 minutes while I'm changing a retard's tire. You know what I mean? I can't do that. <laughs> August Lyon says, let Lydia on to produce. Ah, bro. Why are you going to do that to me? I can't do that. I don't think if I, I'll, I think if I end the stream and then start it up again, we're not going to get as many numbers guys. I mean, it's already been two hours. I was only playing the stream for an hour. So, uh, yeah, how we're going to do it. Let's see. Let me call. Let me call my friend real quick. Let me call him real quick. Do to do.
Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Peace. Okay. Uh, Dylan says, just play the damn video. Fuck chat. <laughs> I know. I was going to see if I could get a, uh, let me see if I can get a hater in here, guys. Any haters? I, I saw haters all the time. Where are the fucking haters at? Oh, here we go. Uh, it's Yosh Ken. What's up, Yosh Ken? Hey, how's it going? How you doing? Just fine. I, I have a bone to pick with you, mister. Uh-oh. You know who sent me? Who? The person that despises you the most. Uh, man, that doesn't narrow the list down at all. <laughs> Dang it. I was hoping it did. You should know he's in your circle. It's Manic the Manic Mechanic. He oh, sent me. Yeah, what, did he, what did he want you to tell me? Stop sending him on missions. It gets, it gets disturbing. Nah. Um, I happen to be one of Manic's friends. Thanks to you. So I actually came to say thank you. Yeah, no problem. I saw you on the Gamer Gear podcast. You guys had some funny points. Dang it. I was hoping you didn't know me. No, I saw the I saw the Yoshi. Yeah, no. Whenever I join that or he's playing a video game, I always join the chat and roast him for like ten minutes. Ah, uh, thank yeah. it. I was hoping you didn't know me. It would have been even more hilarious. Oh yeah, no. Manic's not a hater. He just wants better jobs, but he has to move the hogs. He signed a five year contract. Look, those hogs are disgusting. You know how, like in the early days, American or at least the European Americans, they'd have to sign an indentured servitude to to pay for the ship travel to the states. Yeah, yeah. So that's like manic during the war ban, except he has to fuck fat chicks for five years. Jesus Christ! (laughs) (laughs) Jesus Christ! That's disgusting. And not even really fuck, just like more like be a distraction. Quite frankly, he has to get in their way. I've seen people take down whole hogs, and for women to be bigger than that is honestly disturbing. Hey, look, it's all about the camera perspective. I've, you know, I've gotten chicks to chase manic that if you put them next to them, it look like a skyscraper. Jesus. But hey, uh, Yosh, uh, when's the next Gamer Gear podcast? I have no idea. I just get invited to them randomly. Damn, manic's not organized at all. Classic manic. He's probably has neurological damage from fat chicks landing on his spine. They usually come once a week, and he'll invite me while I'm usually driving on my truck. Yeah. Okay, man. Let me let me move on next caller, dude. All right. You guys have a nice one, and Lady is a bitch. Yep. Peace. Bye. Okay. Let's get. Uh, we'll try Alpha Vegan. What's up, Alpha Vegan? Are you there? Your mic is uh not very Alpha. Maybe it's too vegan. Are you feeding your your microphone beans? Your microphone getting enough protein? Probably not. Okay. Okay. I'm going to play the damn video and I'll be back here in like 20, 25 minutes. It should be more than 30 minutes to be honest, guys. Okay. 35 minutes. Okay. I'll be back, guys. I know where she's from. And I said, like, if you're going to push this issue, I'm happy to walk away. Now, my issue was being able to resolve my problems with Lydia. Now, Tim saw that and said, that's an ultimatum. Get rid of Lydia or get rid of me. Which is not what I said. It's not where my head was at. Granted, I would have happily had him get rid of Lydia in a fucking heartbeat absolutely well he responded with well then we're done the show's done show's over i was like seriously like that's it and there's a long conversation um and and i won't get into the details of it uh because that's between tim and i um but that was it that was that was you know what i saw and i was like okay so nisha and i we went out we went for a drive and we went to a diner we were talking about it and like i was like man you know maybe i did blow up maybe maybe i am like uh getting triggered because of myself and not lydia and and 
I'm the one making the big deal out of it. And to this day, maybe that's true. You know, maybe I could have, I was dealing with inner issues, um, but I had nowhere to go. We were all stuck in this house for fucking months, you know, and all I was, I was seeing, there was a freaking, his assistant would spy on everyone. Like there was a literal spy in the house. You'd be like talking privately with someone and she would walk around the corner and sit down and, and be like, oh yeah, that thing you said like two minutes ago, like I have something to say about that. I know about that. And it was like, what the fuck? So there was this constant feeling of like being spied on in this house. Every single person in the household, other than me, because I didn't give a shit, walked around Tim on eggshells because they were so deathly afraid of being fired. You know, yes, man, Tim. Yes, Tim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, Tim. And all Everybody acted like he was like this fucking, I, I don't know, cult leader or some shit. I'm not calling him a cult leader, but that's the vibe I got, right? It was weird. So I heard that while I was at the diner, Tim called Joe Rogan and said, Joe, what should I do? What do I do, Joe Rogan? You are my my idol, the person I want to be. <laughs> I don't know what he said exactly in, in that instance, but he asked him about me and what he should do. And he told Joe that I gave him an ultimatum, fire Lydia, or I'm walking, which is not the case. And Joe said, wow, you got to fire him. You can't have someone that's going to jeopardize your business, which I found very rich. Now, I didn't find out about this until later. Uh, I think he told Nisha to tell me because I think he wanted me to know like, oh, it was Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan told me to do it. So I did it. Now you you could have you could have changed you could have well whatever I'll let you take with that what you will. So that night, um, I don't know if you remember the community post on Timcast, but there was a fairly lengthy post. I don't have a screenshot of it. I didn't really feel like trying to find it you know although i i know the date but basically what it said was adam will no longer be on the timcast irl show um someone i don't remember how they worded it but it was basically saying like he he didn't air he needed to air out his dirty laundry or like he'd never aired out his dirty laundry some something along those lines some snarky ass shit which i know lydia probably fucking put and immediately on twitter she put out this tweet that everyone was like oh shit she's talking about adam she absolutely was talking about me like make sure you do your dirty laundry kids like she's some sort of moral mom that anyone should want to listen to jesus Anyway, at that moment, I fucking never saw her again. She could be in the room with me and I wouldn't see her. I like X'd her out of my life. Like, I do not give a fuck about Lydia. I have zero respect for her as a human being. And, uh, you know, it sucks because I liked her at first. Like, I, you know, she seemed nice. You know, she seemed... But a lot of people seem nice. You know, a lot of people want you to see the nicer side of them and convince you that they're actually nice and that you can trust them. You know, there's many people like that out in the world. And it's always a shame, you know, when you see the real person inside. You know, anyone has the capacity for evil, right? Anyone. So, yeah, that that sucked. That, that was... Um, that 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 really that really sucked. Um, I feel like I'm missing some stuff. Hold on. Now I feel like I feel like that was the preamble, right? That was the chunk. Now a lot of people probably will ask, and I even asked myself, 
Why the hell did I stay? Why the hell did I stay? I did not want to stay. I wanted to fucking leave. I was, I was bounced. I was ready to bounce. I was ready to pack up and fucking leave. But the thing is, I uprooted my wife one, two, two times already in seven or in a year. And I uprooted her for Tim twice. And she was, she's a music producer. She went to school for music. And she was producing Tim's music. One of Tim's songs, you might know it, Will of the People. Um, I actually, I like a lot of Tim's songs, actually. Uh, words in the book is fantastic. I love, I love that song. I kind of, I have the words somewhere. I should remember that. Um, but anyway, Will of the People, right? And it wasn't done yet. She had been working for months producing the song for Tim, and it wasn't done. She had hired her friends in Sweden who who did all the artwork for that music video. I, many, many of you might have seen it. And uh, I, I, I wanted to let her finish. And Tim, it was so it was so odd because Tim he he acted as if nothing bad happened it was very it was very odd and i'm i mean looking back i'm very grateful for for that because he let me use his cameras i didn't have anything he let me use a computer like i literally had nothing right he let me set up my studio in the basement like it was confusing i mean i i it's taken me a long time to actually like look back at it and process it all. So it's like if on one side, it felt like Tim still cared about me, like still cared about our friendship. Shit. I, I forgot a, a very important conversation. Um, I got, I got to go, go back to the day I was fired because that, that adds to my confusion, right? So after I went to the diner and Tim called Joe Rogan, right? I I went up to them. I say them because of course Lydia was in the room. And I apologized to Lydia. I said, you know, to I said to Tim like I I didn't realize how much my abortion that I had affects me and how much I was getting triggered by her saying this shit. And Tim said, I don't believe you. And that was like a, that was basically him pulling his pants down and shitting on me, on my friendship with him. Because like, I mean, I, I don't give a shit if the bridge is burned. You know, like, whatever. That, that right there was the biggest thing to me. Because I value friendship. I value people who are loyal and honest with me. You know, if you got my back, I will ride to the end of the earth for you. That's just how I am, right? If you're cool to me, I'll be cool back to you. But at this, when you, when you like go above and beyond and just, shit on something that like is i mean i'll never get over that that was really a uh a shitty feeling he said i think you're just using this to get rid of lydia and mind you like i said like i would have happily had him fire her for for me to stay that would have been great but i also would have been fine with her staying and me continuing to do the show. I was like, and then I weighed my friendship. I said, you know, man, like we've been friends for seven years. And like, I really feel, and he cut me off. He's like, eh, we haven't been friends that long. And it was like, damn. Okay. So you don't believe me. We haven't been friends that long. Like, eh, what, what the hell is your friendship anyway? And I was just like, at that point in that conversation, I didn't care anymore. I was like, I fine. 
actually if that's if that's if you're acknowledging that to me like you, you're basically telling me that you don't give a shit about my feelings or our friendship at all then like all right and i looked at him and the last thing i said to him was you know the show is bigger than this right it's bigger than you and me we're we're showing the world that friends can disagree and argue and still laugh and still have a little whiskey and jam on a friday night and and you know he's he's proving that wrong like the world is so divided especially in 2020 i'm mean, even now I, I don't feel like that divide has changed at all i don't think it's necessarily gotten worse i feel like it's just it's just there it exists and the tim cast show really showed that you know we could be friends and shit on each other and we did i mean i i shit on tim all the time it was a lot of fun tim's fun to make fun of and i'm not saying that out of spite i was friends with him and i made fun of him it was fun like he's very easy to make fun of but he takes it in stride he doesn't care you know so all those twitter people that get mad when i poke fun at him it's like what why are you guys thinking that i'm doing it out of spite i literally did it every single day for years and then it was publicized and people laughed at it, thought it was funny because they thought we were friends. But now that they don't know the story of what happened, suddenly I'm I'm like spiteful and petty and all this shit. It's like, no, I poke fun at people that deserve it, especially the people that I'm closer to. Now, my relationship with Tim is fucking weird now because like we don't talk. Yeah, but I'm not angry at Tim. I'm saddened by this whole thing. I didn't want to end the show. I didn't want that. I didn't want it to be awkward because it was. So when he when he came to me like two days later, right? I hadn't we hadn't spoken. He took the day off, I guess. And then I think Friday he did the show with just Lydia. And everyone shout out to every single person who said no Adam, no peace. You guys are the best. Fucking shout out to all of you. Thank you very much for that. That meant a lot. Because people were telling me, they would hit me up like, where are you? No Adam, no peace. I saw it online for months. I still see it, which is so cool. Like people still remember that and still compliment me on how much they loved the show that was Tim Cast RL with me because it's, it's a different show. And it's, I find it interesting too, because in that conversation, I read this conversation with, with Tim, you know, and he, he tells me, that the show wasn't what he wanted it to be. He wanted it to be guests. Now it's now it's him and I. And it's like he wants to be Joe. Oh, you want to be Joe Rogan? You want to be like this, like you know, interviewer guy with guests? Well, hey Tim, Joe Rogan listens to his guests, and he also lets them speak. It's pretty important. Just a little bit of advice if you're going to listen to joe rogan for advice which you obviously do maybe you should take that advice so i stayed and before i even was fired tim was in the process of buying another house in maryland the cast castle as i dubbed it that's right i came up with that name no i did Nisha's trying to say it was her. It was me. But anyway. <laughs> no. Get out of here. It's my show. <laughs> I named it. <laughs> anyway. So after I named it Cast Castle. Um, we weren't sure we were going to move, though. You know, because she was finalizing it. It was like a. They were going to move. I mean, see, this is so weird. It's so confusing because, like, Tim was, it's like he wanted to be my friend, but he didn't want to resolve anything. And I, I couldn't do that. It was very difficult for me because I'm the type of person that if I have an issue with you, I'm going to say something. Um, and if I don't, I it gets to the point where I'm like, uh, I'm just not going to talk to you anymore. Like, 
if we can't resolve it, like it, it just makes me uncomfortable. Like I want to talk about it. I have friends in New York who called me honest asshole because I would be blunt as shit about everything and call people out. And you saw it live. I mean, that's what I did to Tim. I would call him out constantly. And he fucking hated it. I know he did. I can't tell you how many times he blew up at me telling me to shut the fuck up that I don't know what I'm talking about. About issues that are stupid. Like, why are you? I, I, he said that to me once. This is before I got fired. And I was like, dude, you can't fucking talk to me like that. What the hell? I don't even remember what it was about. I think he said, I think it, no, I remember now. Donald Trump pardoned Roger Stone. And Tim said, that's it. Tim's, Tim's done. Or not, Trump's done. Trump's, uh, Trump just threw his career in the trash. And I was like, what? No. Like, what, because of that? And, and he turned and said that to me. And I was like, I, I, it just, it shocked me. Now, the election is uh, another story. I hear that he believes it was fair and square. I don't watch the Tim Cast IRL show, guys. I'll be honest. I've never watched it. I was on it, and then I wasn't on it. I, I, I can't be bothered. It might be a little bit better now that you don't hear, mm, yeah, uh-huh, <laughs> mm, mm-hmm, mm, mm-hmm, <laughs> yes, Tim, yes, Tim, exactly, Tim, right? Fuck, God, I can't, I can't stand the sound of her voice. Maybe I'm being a little petty there. All right, I'll admit that. That's fine. But I don't care. I'll be petty with her. Because, ugh. She's gross. Anyway, I don't talk about her anymore. Tim, so Tim, he, he offered to let me use his stuff. He offered for me to live in the Jersey house after he moved out. Probably because he felt bad that I moved my life here and for her to continue doing music, which was actually very tempting. Like, all right. You know, so it was like it was a confusing time because I was like, I wanted to be Tim's friend. We were friends, but like this stuff wasn't resolved for me. And it's like he just wanted to go back to when it was good and have this like, you know, bro friendship skating and stuff happen. Before we moved to Maryland? Yeah, but I thought that was later. I thought that was that was in Maryland at that point. Uh, I don't even remember that. So, well, I guess she's got the better memory than me. Um, that's the only time you're ever going to hear me say that. Damn it. Shit, she's got it recorded. She's going to play that segment to me whenever we have an argument. Like, who came up with the word cast castle, which is me, by the way. Um, she's going to be like, who has the better memory? Damn, I gave, I gave her that. <laughs> well, I mean, I... But I honestly, I, I always had hoped that I'd be back on the show. I, I mean, I, I didn't believe that I was truly kicked off the show. Because it was so successful. You know, like, it worked so well. You know, it's like, we were locked in with COVID. You know, it's like, Tim blew his fucking top towards Lydia in more ways than one. I meant, I meant more times than, than more than one time. Sorry. Um, bad joke. On the nose, but bad joke. <laughs> So it's like, what? Because because I got upset one time? No, man. You were sick of paying me as much as you did because the show was doing better and better and better. He told me I have an ego issue with the day he fired me. He said I have an ego problem. Me? I had the ego problem, Tim? Seriously, dude? Fuck out of here. So I guess a part of me always wanted to be 
back on the show. I, I wanted that, that, that energy back because we, it worked and I was willing to do it because as I said, this is what I told Tim, you know, that it was bigger than us. It was a show that showed two friends that could freaking poke and prod each other and still be friends. And, and, and in, in the end of the day, the world needs to see that. We have to understand that you can disagree and it's okay. You don't have to just suddenly become mortal enemies because this person voted for Trump and this person voted for Biden or this person didn't vote at all. You know, it's like, okay, I'd rather there be informed voters than uninformed voters that vote blind. That's a different conversation. It really boiled down to a trip that me and Nisha took with Allison, Tim's girlfriend or former. I'll be honest. I, I don't know. At the time, his girlfriend. And uh, we went hiking and we went tubing. She needed to get out of the house. And she was like, I know you guys need to get out of the house too. Come with me. Because uh, we were friends. She was really cool. And we did. And we went down. We went to, the, we went to this. They got an Airbnb in a cabin somewhere. It was freaking rad. We stayed there for a weekend. And on the way back up to Jersey... We stopped at the new Maryland house because at that time they they finalized the the purchase for this place, which I guess got doxxed right away, which is really sad because like and shitty. Pardon me, because Tim, I know Tim went through a lot to try to get a house like off the beaten path that no one knew about. So it's kind of kind of sad that someone doxxed it right away. But, you know, we were there and Allison she was dealing with Lydia because Lydia was making her jealous. Dude, Lydia would walk in the room. Tim is sitting next to Allison and sit at Tim's feet and massage Tim's feet with, with Allison sitting next to Tim. That's fucking weird, man. And like Allison would like look at Tim and Tim would be like, life is good. You know, it's like, dude, like that's weird, man. She's your producer. Like what? What? This is your girlfriend. Like, what the fuck is happening right now? Man, and now now that I'm like, I'm like digging back through this. So the last couple weeks, I've been opening all of my memories and talking to Nishra. And she she's helped me like write down a lot of the stuff that um, you know, she she was living there too. You know, she saw all this as well as I. You know, these little comments, these the way that Lydia would flirt with Tim and with guests and I know it happened with Luke later on with his girlfriend like she would flirt with him I heard I'm not going to say names that she threw herself at someone and they denied her and that someone got fired like the next day that's I, that's what I heard but anyway, Allison was like, I can't stand this. Like, I'm going nuts. And like, I would like it if you guys came as well. Because she liked us. You know, we were all friends. Like, we all got along really well. Um, she wanted us to come. And Nisha was still working on that that song. It wasn't done yet. Because, you know, it was in the finalizing process when they were all moving. And there was an in-law suite. And Tim was like, yeah, take the in-law suite. That's great. I was like, that's pretty awesome. So like, I feel like in the back of my mind, I was like, Tim's clearly cool with me. He, It feels like he wants me to be a part of this still. And I think he, he did. I think he really did want that. Um, so we decided to move to Maryland as well. So we, we moved to Maryland and I officially moved like all my stuff was still in Arizona wait we hadn't moved officially to Jersey and uh I we went out to my spot in Arizona and we rented a freaking massive truck packed all of our stuff like everything right like we got all of our stuff like we full-on moved into this in-law suite and it was beautiful it was freaking awesome and actually that was a really nice time because I was doing my show, 
Nisha had her own freaking beautiful office because the house is really dope. The cast, I'm sure you might have seen it. You might have followed the cast castle. Uh, I don't know if they've how much of the house they've shown the internet, uh, but it's freaking cool. And like Tim decked it out all over the place. There's like a movie station. There's an indoor skate ramp. This place was freaking a bachelor's paradise, you know. But I got to live uh, in there with my wife. Which, by the way, is where we met Osiris, which is our cat who came with us. She adopted him officially, and uh, he came with us. And that was the best thing to come out of that place. Uh, and I don't see him right now. Normally he sits like right here. I've got a little, little cat bed. So we move in to Maryland, and there's a lot, there's a lot that, that started going on in the Maryland house. And the beauty for me was I was very far removed from it because I was in the in-law suite and we had our own entrance. We had our own garage door. So I never saw anybody. I never had to see Lydia who lived in the house. Um, I very rarely saw Tim, although we did skate sometimes. You know, and he started rollerblading and, and got me rollerblades, which was very cool of him. Clearly wanting to be my friend still, you know, and yeah, I'm not going to lie that, you know, there's a piece of me that like wanted that friendship, too, because he's very competitive. Very, very competitive. That's why I can't play magic with him anymore. But like playing sports like skateboarding, especially it's 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 an interesting sport because you're competing against yourself. But when you have someone that you're skating with that's also really competitive, you you kind of like you progress so much faster. So because of Tim, I became such a better skateboarder um, and, and a rollerblader. Actually, I, I, I liked rollerblading, uh, but I wasn't really a good a, like a trick rollerblader. So hold on, let, me, let me check my list to see if I'm missing something. Oh, yeah. Uh, I can't say any of this stuff, actually. I gotta... You know, there's certain things that, like, aren't aren't my story to tell. Um, crazy shit that happened, though. Dude, it was... that Like, if if that whole house was a Big Brother episode or season, <clears throat> like, if they truly were honest and like talked about the shit that was going on that that would be more viral than anything tim has ever done <laughs> i'm not joking it's crazy but then um tim hired a longtime friend of his and she was awesome uh she is awesome um i i don't i don't know if i I'm going to keep names out of it, but she was, uh, she was fantastic. I really got along with her. Nisha got along with her. She dated Ian for a while, um, which was cool. Like they were, they were like a super hippie couple, but Tim hired her for HR, HR in, in this house. And he made some promises to her about like, where she could stay. And she came in the house and it's basically like, you know, like rugs in a house. If you you got to shake them out every so often. Airing your dirty laundry, if you will, which I love to do. I love airing my dirty laundry. I like getting it all out of the air because then I can move forward and be clear of Part of the reason why I'm doing the show right now. Well, she wanted to clear the air. She saw a lot of pent up angst and she saw issues like Lydia not having an NDA and maybe, you know, exposing Tim. Or lying about Tim. That's what I think was really a threat. Like she could have said, 
you know, that Tim forced her, you know, into anything and like, boom, Tim would have been canceled. But like, no, she loved him, you know, and like they were it was consensual as far as I can tell anyway. Right. Again, I never saw them. Uh, the door was closed a lot of times. I'll just that's all I know. You know, I'm not I it's not like I saw them doing stuff. But uh, anyway, she wanted to clear the air. She wanted to clear the house. Okay, enough fucking backstory. Thank you, Adam Krigler, for giving my fans 30 minutes of content. I think it was 30 minutes. Oh my goodness. Whew. Tim Hurton says, if you are bored, go to Chaz the Fool. He has good videos. No, I'm done. No, I'm putting you time out. How dare you send my viewers away from me? How dare you? How dare you? Goodness sakes. Stuff. Yeah, okay. So you guys, you guys have everything, huh? I'm not actually mad at you, Tim Hurtons. I just, uh, did you. Chaz says, I was talking to Beta Boy in StreamYards. Beta Boy? Oh, gosh. What's going on? This guy says, I'm comfortable being a feminist ally. Oh! Let's bring him on. Okay. Alpha Vegan. Alpha Vegan, is your mic working? Your mic is kind of bad. Right. Whatever. Shut up. What's what's going on, man? Are you are you drunk? Is your mic bad? What's the problem? Come on, Alpha Vegan. You've been sitting in you've been sitting in the back. He says, "Let's go, Chronic." What do you mean, "Let's go"? You're in the stream yards, bro. He wants. If he hasn't to say, say it. Oh, he left like a pussy. Well, yeah, I was looking at the private chat. He says how uh, he's calling us all incels. He's saying Vosh is a great content creator. He says his best friends are women. <laughs> oh, his name's Alpha Vegan. Oh, is that pussy still in the chat? Let's tell him he's a pussy. Come on. Alpha. Oh, he's not here. Oh, well, that, that, that hater was just like, I'll talk to Chronic. And then as soon as he gets the choice, he just pieces out. <sighs> Lily says, I should report Lydia's second husband says on Twitter, people are harassing his wife. <laughs> oh, classic. It, look, Vosh, uh, Vosh fans, best friends are women. So, yeah. Chaz was doing a good time, uh, a good job trolling him in the chat. But yeah, so let me see here. What's next on the list? What's next on the list for this stream? Hermit says Beta Boy got afraid. They always get afraid. The mics suck. They want to suck Vosh's little miniature carrot schlong. They don't have anything to say. It's muffled. Maybe he was too busy having, you know. Hollywood, uh, obese Hollywood sexual schlong in his throat. Maybe that's why his mic was so bad. Let's see. What is next? It's weird, too, because you guys, big ups to the chat. We still got like 900 people in here. I guess 888 now. And I was gone for 30 minutes. So I'm not sure if it's the topic that has people interested. Maybe YouTube let my video notification go out to people. I really don't know why so many people showed up. It has to be the topic, guys. What were you guys saying in the chat? I used to respect Tim. This is really disgusting, says Nikki. Yeah, Nikki. Um, Tim Poole was cheating on his girlfriend with a married woman and then destroyed a friendship of seven years to protect said married woman. 
Ain't that pathetic. Also, do you guys know, do you guys know what I walked on, like what, what I walked into in my friend's car two miles down the road? This dude was laying down in the back seat drinking. You dumb, drunk motherfucker. This guy with a flat tire, call me drunk, was still drinking in the back. I'm like, you are a dumbass, bro. What are you doing? I'm like, what are you doing? I just wanted to drive, go for a drive and drink. Why don't you just pay an Uber to take you around the block, bro? So he gets out of the car. He pulls out like a, he had so much alcohol in the trunk. He actually gave me a six pack. Of uh, some some micro brews, some really good beer. <sighs> we change his tire. And I was like, "What the hell are you doing? What, what, why are you just going for a drive? Hmm? Why are you drunk? Why do you have so much booze?" And I got the feeling, got the feeling this guy wasn't in a good spot. So, took his keys, called his brother. Your man's out here having a moment, dude. You should come here and get your bro. I didn't take his booze, though. Well, I gotta take it. He's like, you can take my booze? I'm like, no. You're just not driving, bro. Yeah, dude had a rough breakup recently, so uh, he's definitely in the... He's definitely in the group of people that should be watched. But he's safe now. Okay. What else we got in the chat? Oh, vegans bite? Uh, vegans back? He can't even type. I think he's drunk. Okay. Let's try to get the hater on. Let's hope his uh, microphone works. Oh, let's Vegan. go. Come on. Vegan, what's up? What's up? Oh, your mic's working now, man. Oh, my, my mic's working now? Yeah, yeah. We can all hear you. You're live, by the way. Oh, okay. Oh, you can hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, why don't you shut up for a second and let a real man talk? How about that? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So the way you talk, the way you talk about women. Mm -hmm. Are you, are you going to let me talk? Um, go on, bro. You ever been on a show before? Let me let me talk. Let me talk so I can show you how much of your incel you are. Oh, okay. okay? okay. You think you, you you think you're an alpha? You, know, you think you can, you think bro your mic they, is he, your mic is horrible you're cutting out all the time right now no you're, you're scared you're, are you gonna let me talk are you uh, gonna let me talk your microphone's cutting you off bro are you gonna let me talk maybe is your mic gonna let you talk Mom, i'm talking you're just scared to talk to real alpha you're cutting you're scared to talk to real alpha no, Beta. you're scared to talk to real Beta. alpha. Your microphone sucks. Like you, the only meat no, you no, get no, you is suck. Voshkov, yeah, bro. Just, you... The only meat you get are other bread two beta boys coming over to watch the Vosh stream. So, I muted his mic. He can unmute it. We'll see if he can figure it out. He sounds like an old boomer. Hmm. I don't think he's going to figure it out, guys. He's always been drinking too much. So, yeah. Steve Medea says, this guy's joking, bro. I don't know. I, I, he could be a troll, but he could just be a drunk hater. I think he's a drunk hater. The thing is, like, I was letting him talk. I was trying to tell him his mic was cutting in and out. I'm like, bro, your mic is cutting in and out. He's like, you gonna let me talk? I'm like, is your mic going to let you talk? The freak says he probably collapsed. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Sean Green says, you can't even get the mic to work. What are you going to do, pal? <laughs> Dax the dog says, I've called him a chronic 
streams completely hammered to sound better than that. Boomer hater, beta spurg out. I don't know if he's a hater. I don't, maybe. Nikki says, he's not drunk, just triggered and offended on behalf of someone else. He had a stutter. He had a country accent. He listens to Vosh. There you go. Probably was attracted to his sister. Or his family's pig. Kind of like Vosh. I mean, we could try to get him on again. I just... If his mic sucks, it's not going to be a fun time. Is, is your mic working now? Yes, my mic is working. Yes, okay. my mic Go is ahead. working. Go ahead. Hello? Go go on your rant, bro. You got the floor. All right. You can hear me, right? Yep. Okay. So so here we go. So here we go. Hold on. Okay. 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 Shut up, Beta. Okay. Let real man talk. What? Let, let a meal round talk. Are, are you scared? Are you scared? Because I'm about to own, I'm about to own you. I'm about to show you how Vouch and Destiny mm -hmm. are always. Yeah, that's what I thought. You're you're just scared. You're scared of a real man. Okay, you think you you think you, you think just because you bench a hundred pounds or whatever <laughs> makes you cool? Are you scared? Are you scared to let me talk? I mean, come on. No, make you're making great points. Go on, man. Okay, so first you need to apologize to Lauren Southern. <laughs> apologize to Lauren Southern. Apologize to Lauren Southern. Oh, spat out my beer, bro. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Continue. So, are you are you nervous? I mean, that was funny. Not, that was hilarious. I just took a drink of beer, and you're like, "You need to apologize to Lauren Southern." Almost went all over my keyboard, bro. That was funny. Yeah, yeah. You you know she's right. You have no women friends, okay? I have a lot of. I have a lot. Of, uh, hold on, hold on. I'm about to fix my mic. I'm gonna fix my. I'm gonna fix my mic. Oh no! I think he's a. Tr I think he's trolling, guys. No, I definitely think he's trolling. I think he's a a, a fan who's calling the troll. Oh, Lily, that was really good though. Like you need to apologize to Lawrence Sutter. I couldn't handle it. Oh man. Okay, you're you're back on. All right. Me. Yeah, go on. All right. Ah, uh, bro, I love the troll job, but your mic is just too bad. I don't know what you're using. I'm on my, I'm on my phone. That's I'm on my phone. Want. Okay, continue. You keep making excuses. You keep making <laughs> excuses, man. Yes. Let's let's start this over. Can you... Yeah, yeah. You you think? You... I'm sorry, man. Your mic is just too bad. Maybe next time. Maybe next time, bro. That was amazing. I first thought he was serious. And then I realized, like, there's no... Once he said, you need to apologize to Lauren Southern. Oh, he got me pretty good. <laughs> that guy, he got me in the first half. No, he definitely had me. <laughs> I was I was really just, like, taking a drink of this beer. Like, first, you need to apologize to Lauren Southern. <laughs> Spit that all over my keyboard, bro. <laughs> ah, it's funny. Okay, let's take some callers. Let's take some callers before we get to Tim crying about this. I'm sorry, vegan. Uh, your mic is too shit. Stop trying to join. Whether you're a fan or troll or an actual hater, your mic is just too bad. We give you like five chances. So uh, call call somewhere else. Uh, call another time with a better mic. Sorry, bro. <clears throat> okay. Jonathan Ryan says, will you let me talk? I mean, click the link, bro. We're looking for Tim Sims right now, by the way. Uh, let's get vegan. I'm going to kick you one more time. If you join again, I'm just going to ban you from the studio. Your mic sucks. Okay. Stop the Chaz. What's up, Chaz? <laughs> Dude. I, I truly can't believe that he is anything but a troll. It's the He said the most perfect stuff. No, He's well, saying, right, look, like, if he was just a Vosh fan and a Destiny fan, saying he had woman friends and then were incels, that's legit. As soon as he said, first you need to apologize for Lauren Southern, that was a gut punch. Dude, 
either he is the greatest troll of all time or uh, he might be is, i think he's one of the best trolls he's got to like, be top top three trolls of all time like he got me he was saying the exact stuff if in he chat. just got a good mic oh it would have been so good if, like no he, he was saying some funny stuff and in the stream yard chat i was saying bro talk to me like chronic is gone for a bit we could talk for 30 minutes and he he wasn't having it so it's like i I really do think he was just trying to hop on your stream and troll for a bit. Because uh, yeah. while you were gone, I went live to show people this chat because I thought it was really funny. Because he was trying to say like, oh, you don't have any female friends. You like blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you're right. I don't have female friends because I don't live for, you know, Western thought validation. What's the point of female friends? Exactly. Everybody like, I... in the chat in the chat right now, tell me how many female friends you have. <laughs> Zero. But yeah, I, I'm I'm sorry I'm not a Tim Pool stan. I would love to tell you about how he's the greatest thing ever. But you know, it's like, I just can't. I but, mean, uh, there were a couple in the beginning. They shot up real quick, though. So. They always do. Re real haters never call in. But hey, Chronic, may I do a quick shill live to all the Brutas that stayed? If not, it's cool, you know. I don't want. Do you, I don't want to. What do you, you shit? Are they gonna make my viewers drop? No, it. Well, not for you. Like I, I did upload a video today, so it's like, uh, but they they aren't gonna hop off for my stupid stuff. But uh, check I mean, out you my channel. You have mod firms. Oh yeah, no, I, I the link. I was dropping the link okay. while you were gone, but you know what? I'll uh, I'll hop out. But dude, that was the greatest troll of all time. I we need a plan. We need a plan. A drinking with autist stream. Under Chronic with three autists, and every time they fail a social test, Chronic gives them they got a drink. Bro, I'll have my Shiner Bach and Everclear ready to go for that stream. Just That's hit right. me up. Bro. Hey, peace, Jazz. Peace, man. Okay, let's get uh, rebooted. What's up, rebooted? Hey, Chronic, can you hear me? Yeah, what's up, man? You remember me? I called a, well, a long time ago in the summer. Probably, uh, probably don't remember you, but what's up? I was the guy that called in. Uh, I was a, the fan from that's been watching your videos since 2019. Okay. And we, we talked about the absolute state of white women. Oh, why you put a bad taste in my mouth, bro? Okay, well, what about him? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, nothing. I mean, like the absolute state of white woman. That's going to be his own video. Just talking about the story of Lydia Sour Patch. The absolute oh, yeah. state of white women YouTubers. Yeah, the whole Tim cast thing that my jaw just dropped to the floor. It's like, it's literally everything we talk about in Tim Pool's house. Like just like simps, bots, <laughs> Jack Murphy shows up, there's like a cuck feature. It's like every single archetype we make fun of lives in, lived in Tim Pool's house. Exactly, man. It was crazy. I can't believe it. Uh well, I finally got the answer why adam krigler left because i you know what's funny i stopped watching tim cast like around the time he left like the whole vibe just changed not the same anymore it's so funny everybody was saying that they were fucking for like years tim, and, oh, uh, tim pool and the chick yeah. yeah now we got confirmation literally and she's like on his bed like rubbing his feet while he's cuddling with his girlfriend like what kind of like look Chronic's all about getting some concubines, and they don't have to be virgins. They don't have to be like tw like eighteen or twenty one, but a thirty six year old fat chick, bro, come on, disgusting. You know what's funny about thirty year old chicks? Everything. I was t I was talking. I was, okay. Here's a quick story. I was talking to my IRL friends like uh, a few months back, and we were talking about dating, and I told them. I would never date like a woman in her thirties, and they Ooh. they they like they got offended. Oh, these dudes I got offended. I couldn't believe it. They were like, "What do you mean? Are they like, in their 30s? you know those are, women are, are, they, are they dating chicks? No, they're in their early twenties. Oh God. Oh, what's oh why are you? They who barely, are these people? They, bar they barely have experience with women. Oh, so I haven't called into my in show. So I can, I haven't called into my show so I can make fun of them and get some laughs. <laughs> uh, maybe. Maybe one day. Just like, hey, man, click this meme. It's really cool. It's a StreamYard link. And they call him like, uh, hello? And they're like, it's Simp Boy. <laughs> <laughs> what a trap. But hey, thanks for calling to the yeah. show, man. 
of course, Chronic. Uh, before I go, I guess Puniti. Puniti. Okay, we'll take one more call, then we'll move on to Tim Pool crying about the situation. Let's take uh, Michael King. What's up, Michael? Hey, Chronic. I think this is my first time calling in. Well, welcome. Um, are you getting feedback here? A little bit, but it's not a big deal. Yeah. Well, like the caller previously, I always wondered why Adam left Timcast, and it makes a whole lot more sense now. I also ha got the suspicious feeling that um, Tim was probably smashing her behind the scenes, and that there was probably drama associated with that going on. Well, I think the main the main catalyst, because like he knew he, they were smashing for a while, he didn't say anything. I think it was when L Lydia looked him in the eyes and said, "If you have an abortion, you're a murderer," and she acts all high and mighty as she's cheating on her husband. Yeah, I mean that kind of hypocrisy would uh, completely infuriate me too if I was in that environment. Yeah, because it's not like you can fire back, or you know, what you could say, you know, I guess you could have been if you mastered the passive aggressiveness that you'd be like, yeah, like. I mean, abortion is bad, but like a lot of abortions occur because women cheat on their husbands and they don't want, you know, their husbands raising another man's kid and they just look her right in the eyes. But Adam's not really trained in this kind of method of stochastic warfare with women. So he doesn't, he didn't know what to do. No, and that's actually why uh, I find your channel incredibly useful. I actually got out of a relationship with a, a woman that was, Lydia's age around the time I started listening Ooh. to your content. Oh, do you get to some laughs out of me making fun of women in their thirties? Um, yeah, I actually do. That's good. That's good. And I was, it was a 10 year age difference too. I mean, I'm your age and she was like 36. What were you doing, bro? Like, did you, did like, like, did you get like rug burn on your dick? It's like sandpaper in there. Well, it was, <sighs> I had the intention of um, staying a virgin until I was married, but I kind of um, let her give me a BJ for the first time. And so and you I never, you never put the peen in the peen. Yeah, but I kind of think that counts, though. Uh, kind so of, but hey, at least the first pussy you had wasn't like ancient history. Like, look, if you if you end up losing your losing your V card to that chick, you would be on an episode of Ancient Aliens with Undead Chronic. As you can see here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ah, well, you know, it, it happens. But hopefully you got your standards up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I wasn't completely on board with the idea of no hymen, no diamond. But I totally am now. And I'm, I'm pretty content if I'll stay single for a while. I don't really need that kind of female validation in my life. Yeah. Well, hey, look. You acquire resources to build a family. No hymen, no diamond. But those kind of chicks with hymens that want resources for the purpose of a family, they're not the kind of chicks you can date for three years, four years, five years and marry. You date them for like a year or maybe even less. They want to get married and start having kids as fast as possible. So make sure you have the resources to support that. Oh, yeah. If I'm not... If I'm not convinced that I can be raising kids in the next year, then I'm not even going to date. Yeah. Well, it's just, you know, what's the reason for dating, right? I mean, dudes, dudes that just want to date for sex, they don't, they don't need to follow no hymen, no diamond. Who cares? Yeah. You know, that's why when I talk to the pickup, the pickup artist, are you a Christian? Is that why you want to save it for marriage? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so when you and see, these, so when you see these pickup artists who, when I talk to them, I basically, I glean out their main goal in life is to have sex with as many women as possible. How does that make you feel on a spiritual level? I, I wouldn't be able to look at myself in the mirror. No, but like, let's say one of your friends said, yeah, the only thing I want to do in life is have sex with different women as much as possible. And that's all the validation I need. You look at them like a demon. Like you look at them like, well, not like a scary demon, but like a, like a slave, mm -hmm. a slave to, to lust. Like that's pathetic. Yeah. Yeah, and that was, that was, uh, I mean, I before I became a Christian, that was actually like what I lived for, and I was, I wasn't getting pussy, so I was like incredibly resentful about it. Did you ever pay for a course? 
No, and thank okay, goodness that's, I that's did. Good. And I didn't even I didn't even know pickup artists existed around that time. I only became a Christian pretty recently. Yo, that's, well, that's good. You didn't pay for any courses. Pickup artists have been around since the seventies. I'm not even kidding. Seriously? Straight up, I yeah. Like the same that, the same kind came of up in like 2008. Okay, I'll say since the 80s, like they would have VHS tapes about how to pick up chicks on Vegas. I'm not even kidding. I showed my father, I showed my boomer father, John Anthony Lifestyles channel. And he was just like, <laughs> he said, quote, this is just like those, uh, what do they call themselves? It's just like those pickup artist faggots I knew in the 80s, unquote. Yep. Yeah. They've I been around since I the 80s. There's nothing new under the sun. Yes, there's nothing new. Absolutely true. Nothing, nothing new under the sun. But hey, let me move on, man. But thanks for calling into the yeah. show. Yeah, man. Appreciate you having me on. Peace, brother. Peace. Okay. Let's listen to Tim Cry. Huh? You guys want to listen to Tim Cry? Looks like it's 68% want me to listen to Tim Cry. Okay. Get into it. Or Tim Pool. This is from uh, Kipper 1993. You know, that's the that's the that's the main story, I guess. I don't understand how, after all this time, I end up at probably like the worst the worst moment possible. These people are posting an address they think is mine. I don't live there. A picture of a house that is not the same address. Yeesh. Trending. Getting people, I'm being hit up by so many people. I'm getting strangers calling my phone, insulting me and threatening me, things like that. Oh, that's it. You're rich. You are rich. I get the same shit and I'm in the beginning of my career. If the people who hate you and hate me found out who I was, my career would be ruined. See, the difference between us, Tim, Chronic, and Tim Pool is I'm not allowed to get rich off of YouTube. You're allowed to get rich off of YouTube. My career would be ended if they got me. But you're, you're like, I'm in the worst time of my life. I just wiping my tears off with $1,000 bills. You have so much money, you can just move to the middle of nowhere. And I'm not talking about, I'm only 30 minutes from a DC airport. No, no. I'm talking about middle of nowhere, Alaska. Where the simps would freeze to death before they even get to you. I don't have that option, bro. So Tim Pool, who's like making millions of dollars a month off of YouTube, is acting like a victim. Because he's getting called out for cheating with an adulterer. It's pathetic. And at this worst possible moment, this guy who, uh, I get it, man. We were good friends and things went bad. And we both have our view of things. Would start talking about my girlfriend, my brother, bring in other family members, say lies about my relationships. Be specific, Tim Pool. Don't talk in generalities. Say Adam lied about how Lydia was treating me. Say Adam lied about how Lydia was waiting in my bed. What did Adam say about your girlfriend, Tim? I brought this up earlier. He only complimented your girlfriend. And you are here lying lying about what he said you didn't even see his stream bro you even see his stream or maybe he's just wrong and for some reason decided it was appropriate to say things about my family that aren't true without knowing whether they're true or not they're not true tim if you want to address it like this you have to have a spine <sighs> did your brother steal adam's coat if he didn't, say that. But part of me thinks, since you're being so general about this, 
You know he stole your brother's coat. Or your brother stole his coat. You know your brother was a fool. You know Lydia was a beach. And now you're just talking in generalities. Maybe he's wrong. Maybe he just... No. You're not weaseling your way out of this one, Tim Pool. And I don't even want to talk about what those things are. But he, of course, did. And it's, it's like... This is, this, is, this, is, this is not the core, you know, it's funny because I tweeted when you get successful, you figure out who, you know, your true friends are and who's evil. And that had nothing to do with Adam. It has something to do with something else that's completely public and obvious. So many people probably, uh, well, it has to do with a lot of things, nothing specific. So Adam is evil because he got sick of how he was treated by a thought who cheated on her husband, who got a divorce. It, it, all of this cope from Tim Pool, all of it is in protection of a lying trad thought. Lydia is an adulterer. Lydia tore her family apart with her hands. She got a divorce. She's on her second marriage. Lydia pretended, lied to hundreds of millions of people. She lied to millions of people about who she was as a person. And you going through all of this, because right in here, right in here, is the simp brain. Look, guys. <clears throat> Let me be quite clear here. Simping is a disease. Simping is a disease. You will lose everything. By simping. What will you get? You'll lose your friends. You'll lose your credibility. You'll lose your masculine vigor. And lastly, you'll get roasted by Undead Chronic. Disgusting. Let's check the super chats before we continue this video, Brutus. Let's see here. I'm sure I got at least one. Oh, we got three. This one is from, uh, I don't want to... Same his name. This one is from Nero. He says, "Thanks, Lord Chronic. Have you guys been on Azar? Azar? Don't know what that is, man." He says again, oh, "Nothing. Thanks for the donation, man. And thank you, Wesley, for your generous donation." And if you want to support the show, that's Cash App slash Cash Sign Undead Chronic. All of this cope, this whole emotional spiel, is in protection of a lying wrench, right? This isn't, like, this isn't related to what you talk about, Chronic. Yes, it is. A huge YouTuber lost a good friend and is getting roasted. Why? For whose benefit? For his lying, I'll just say right now, his whore producer. If I ever talk to Lydia, the first thing I would ask is what's her body count? And then I'd ask if she thinks women should vote. And then I'd ask if she thinks she's traditional. In that order. What's your body count? Should women vote? Do you consider yourself traditional? Let's continue. To be, to be completely honest. Uh, because I don't want anyone to get the wrong impression about what they think it might be about. It's just a general statement about how people that I knew since I was a kid, you know, from back in Chicago, all of a sudden are just saying, like, there's a dude I've, I've known for so long. He lived with this guy, skated with this guy. Crazy how he just one day out of nowhere, without giving me a phone call, starts making up lies about me. And I was like, I don't understand. Like, why would you do that? Like, I never said anything bad about you. The last thing I ever said to you was like, later, homie. See you on the flip side. The last time we skated together. It's funny, there's that saying about how like uh, one day you'll pick up your child for the last time and you won't realize it. That's a sad saying, man. And I just don't understand. You know, there, there was one day where me and my buddy skated for the last time and we didn't know it. And that's so brutal. This is not Adam, by the way. But for this guy to then, you know, try and just destroy my life. 
this other guy. It's so hard, you know what I mean? To deal with this so many times over and over again. There was a guy. A tear from Tim Pool because all of his friends who he knew when he wasn't rich, who he knew when he was a nobody, are betraying him. We need to redefine friendship, guys. Masculine men typically don't have more than five friends. Tim Pool is talking about people he skated with and he was not involved in politics. I guarantee you that dude he went skating with, he didn't talk to him or see him for a decade. And because this dude, who he considers a friend, okay, imagine your best friend. You don't talk to him for 10 years. You can't. I have, let me list them. I have five friends. Good friends, best friends, whatever. I have five friends I can depend on. Who if I pick up this phone and I call them and I say I need to get bailed out of jail, they'll bail me out. I have maybe a couple dozen friends who wouldn't do that. And I talk to them once a month or two. But imagine getting upset because one of these people you don't talk to betrays you. Oh, my friend, my friend. Stop reminiscing on the past. Tim Pool, your friends are the people you invest in today. Do you have any friends? No, seriously, it is legendary how much this dude works. He brags about it. All he does is work. Are we surprised he has no friends? No, seriously, like, would you be surprised he has no friends? If all you do is work and you don't sacrifice any time to cultivate your friendships, you are going to end up with no friends. None. So don't be surprised. But Tim's crying about this. He's crying about this. Because he was told that they were friends and he believes what people say. See, Tim Poole believed when those guys said they were his friend, that they were his friend. But what were the actions like, Tim Poole? What were their actions? What were your actions? Their actions, they probably reached out to him. Hey, you want to hang out now? I'm too busy with work. If you make the sacrifice of your entire life... For your career. Don't come to me bitching about having no friends. It's not the fact you got successful. Tim pool is why you have no friends. It's the fact you never invested in your friends. That's why let's continue. It's so fucking hard to talk about this. This is, this is my, this is my Tim Pool cries on YouTube video. Every YouTuber has to do it. <laughs> there was a guy that I uh, worked with and lived with. Another guy. And then one day, started publishing my text messages with him. Lying. And I was just like, bro, why? What did I do to you? Any of you? Nothing. That's the problem, Tim. Other people were willing to invest in their relationships with him while you, as you said, did nothing. You did nothing. You reap what you sow, Tim Pool. If you don't sow any seeds, you're going to reap a bunch of nothing. Nada. It's gone. But some leftists, some leftoids... Some people that hate you were willing to invest on a personal level with those people. 
So cry about it. Cry about it. What was the last thing I ever said about Adam? We want to open a coffee house and sell his coffee, use his coffee brand. I wish him the best. And then he wants to come out and start spreading lies about my, my family and my relationships. Like, what did I do? You let a thought, you let your producer, Lydia, shit on your friend. You let her have free reign. What did you do to deserve Adam coming out with his story? You let a promiscuous woman destroy your friendship. This is all on you, Tim Pool. This is all on you. Is Adam lying? How about you bring up the specific points where Adam has lied? Hmm? That's all you got to do. But instead, you had to protect Lydia because you were foolish enough to shit where you work. You were having a relationship with her. Was it sexual? We'll never know. I mean, look. I guess we can know. There is a test we can do to see if Tim Pool had sexual relations with Lydia. We could prove it. I'll even set it up. I will set it up. It'll be expensive. It's going to be two days in the hospital for Lydia. But we can go into her reproductive tract and take biopsies from the cervix through the fallopian tubes. Or we can just draw blood for a year or two. And we can look for Y chromosome DNA. And once we find it, we can sequence it. And once we sequence it, Tim Pool, let's sequence your DNA. You're not going to do it. There's a million reasons not to. But if you wanted to prove you weren't smashing that flat broad, you could do it. Tim Pool is immensely successful on YouTube. Tim Pool is the figurehead of the dissident left, the centrist whatever. Your heroes are simps. Chronic, why don't you talk about politics? Because it is not applicable to as many people as talking about relationships, talking about the male-female dynamic. Even Tim Pool is a simp. Even Tim Pool makes these mistakes. And it can ruin your life, brothers. It can ruin your life. Life's tough, but this is the hard reality. I wanted to take stock of uh, my life. And it was a long time coming because it's not all about Adam. Adam plays a big role because he did a big live stream last night. I was hanging out with my friend and um, working over the, you know, there's a lot of work that happens. Making phone calls, trying to set up, you know, an amazing show that I hope happens. And I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, pedal in the drama stuff. But it got me thinking about the, the threats that I receive for the work that I do, the doxing of my house, the constant barrage that you get from betrayers and mutineers, and then at possibly one of like the hardest times for my family with the death threats we're getting, Adam decides to do that stream. And it was just like, I bust out laughing in the casino. I get a text message like, bro, on a six hour. I, at that time, it wasn't six hours, but they were like, bro's doing this like several hour stream talking about your personal life and your family and your relationships, making accusations about you. This dude that I haven't talked to who has, who has like never aired his personal business and kept it between us and tried to support him and help him and just make sure that everything was good. 
And when he, when he had to leave, paid his way to leave because I was always there for him and I wanted him to succeed. But he thinks it's appropriate to talk about your girlfriend and your family. He said your girlfriend is a very nice person. That's what he said. When it comes to your family, he said your brother sued you, which... Tim Pool, that's in the court records. Okay? You can't avoid that. There's new stories on it. And he said your brother stole his coat. You're acting like this guy is insulting your mother. Tim Pool is a perpetual victim. He's weak. This is pathetic. This is absolutely pathetic. And spread things that aren't true. Because it makes him feel better. And I thought to myself, for all the people who keep doing this, what did I ever do to you? Well, you fired Adam from your show. You let a thought, you let a harlot, you let a promiscuous woman roast him. You belittled your friendship in front of him. You chose a whore over a brother. And now you're acting surprised that he's giving out his truth. Let me come out, guys. Look, I believe Adam. I believe everything Adam said. Tim Pool cannot disprove it. Why? I'm above the petty drama is what he says. No, it's not. Because you're lying, Tim Pool. You are lying. It's, it's so pathetic. Now, some people have said, clearly, Tim, it's your fault. You know, if all these people around you keep doing it, then perhaps uh, uh, you should, you, if you smell, if you smell uh, crap everywhere, check your boot. I know. They're right. I should check my boot. I should absolutely check my boot. And I learned a very important lesson. My girlfriend, Allison, is amazing, um, if you're listening. And she, she runs the administrative side of the company, which, you know, wouldn't, it wouldn't be possible without her. And every day we learn a new, new lesson about why the corporate world exists the way it does. Because you don't know who your true friends are. And there is no, um, I mean, they say don't mix, you know, friendship and business, things like that. It's true. Because like even, even my friends from back home in Chicago, some of my best friends who thought it was appropriate after uh, decades of knowing each other to come out and make up lies about me because it gives them something. Tim Pool, knowing someone for decades is not the basis of a friendship. It's not. I know tons of people for a long time. Not that long. I'm so young. I'm not friends with them. I'm not loyal to my middle school friend. I don't talk to the motherfucker. Hope you're doing fine, Malik. Just because you know somebody for a long time doesn't mean you're friends. Tim Pool, you're talking like a woman. You realize that uh, some people are just evil and they never were your friends. And then I have friends who are like lefty right now even. <laughs> and the left says, that's not true. Tim's lying. It's like literally true. And there are some of my best friends who are as loyal as loyal can be. And that's why I talk about, like talking to my friend who's like a lefty and like we say these things because we listen to each other. And so what I started thinking when, you know, I saw that uh, I get a message from someone that Adam was doing the stream and making like personal accusations that weren't true, that had nothing to do with our business relationship, that were just damaging, defamatory. And whoa, whoa, whoa. You're telling me that the producer of your show having relations with you and 
being an all around bitch living in the house, being aggressive to your co-host has nothing to do with business operations. Tip pool, you're not running a factory. You're not running a factory. You're not providing healthcare. You're not optimizing microscopes. You're not doing any of that. Your product is entertainment and talking. Why is it entertaining? Off the banter and relationships of you and your guests. That is literally your relationships, Tim Pool, with everybody in that house is literally business operations. What? You think you're designing a new genetic system when you bitch about Democrats? When a weak man gets a lot of money and he simps, this is what happens. This is what happens. To my family and to my personal reputation, like not, not just like about my family. I'm like, like my brother never sued me. That didn't happen. I was just like, you know, take stock this holiday season of what you're thankful for. And I am very thankful for a lot of things. People like making up lies uh, is what they do. Nobody, uh, uh, I don't live here. I don't live at the castle. Um, briefly did when there was substantially less people here. Don't live here now. Um, I live in West Virginia in a private house. And then people say things like Tim moved all of his employees out to a commune or something. It's like, no, no, but only a few people actually live in the building. Like, I think th three, three people, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. It's a very, very big building. There's a residential component outside of the office stuff. The employees all have houses and they show up for work at nine and they leave at five. And uh, the vlog is a, is a joke. Like the vlog that we people are like the, on the weekends, literally no one's here. It's an office building. Yeah, I don't know. People make things up. So to come, come full circle to where we are, I didn't do this segment. People are saying damage control and people are saying it's uh, because of Adam. Adam added to it. I think uh, if you guys like his content, you should watch it. I think my advice to Adam is to stop talking about me. Uh, I've asked him to come on the show as a guest before. He doesn't stop talking about me. How would Tim Pool say that? Stop talking about me. Stop talking about why you were fired. You know what Tim could have said instead of this bullshit? He could have said why he fired Adam Krigler. That's all he had to do. Tell us your side of the story. Don't complain and bitch and moan about people betraying you. I don't think you have any friends, Tim Pool. Not with how you act. Not with how you spend your day. No friends. No friends. And before you were rich, and no girlfriend. Interesting. So if you wanted to clear the air, if you wanted people to believe you and not Adam, don't just call Adam a liar. Don't say, it's not true. It's not true. Tell your side of the story, Tim Pool. Is it too complicated to, to make it up? You can't make it up? You can't come up with a lie? That's all right. Here we go. Cheers. The friends who aren't money grubbing assholes. Cheers. To friends who don't simp for whores. Cheers. Cheers. To the war band. Let's crack it open now. Let's go. Woo! See Tim Pool. Tim fans. I don't get these problems. I don't. I don't let simps into my personal circle. How the hell would I do that? You see, life is easy when you're actually red pilled. It really is. I mean, the weights we lift are, are hard. It's not, it's not easy doing 800 pounds on the leg press. 
But these personal dramas? Getting betrayed? Feeling emotionally invested in randoms that you don't really care about? Nah, not, we, we, we don't run into that problem. That's not a problem on our side, guys. We don't care. Cheers to the war band, says Lily. Ray in Hell says, beer, beer, beer. ESP says, peace is good for the soul. Dr. Dree says he doesn't like Price 800. Um, let's count it up. Let's find out. Nine on each side. No, that's not nine. Eight on each side. 16 plates. That was 45 pounds of plate. That's 450 plus six plates. Six plates is 270. 270 with 450, 720. Plus the actual leg press plate, which is 90. So 810 pounds. You're right, bro. I apologize. 810 pound leg press. <laughs> and while I'm doing it, I try to wear some shorts that will cover my knees. These thighs get so big, bro. The shorts just ride up. Got veins on my thighs. And your bitch is looking at them and she's thinking, he's got that many veins on his thighs. How many veins is on his dick? <laughs> uh, I've seen Dr. Dree in the chat before, though. So I think he's cool. You know, we do a lot of friendly fire roasting. Pretty sure it was at least 810. Portis says Y equals MX plus B. <laughs> That's right, bro. That's right. Okay, let's get back to Tim Pool crying. This is fun. Doesn't want to do it. I think my advice to Adam is to focus on the news and the stories and the culture and make your show what it should be, something bigger. And make a lot of money for yourself with your company. And that was always the case. You know, that's my advice. The freak says, saying Tim Pool got with Lydia is like a homeless dude saying that Trump raped her. Well, what if the homeless dude lived in a house with Trump for over a year? What if Trump had the homeless guy hired? What if they spent three hours a night? Huh? Together. And it's all the same. Lily says, you guys, don't forget that Tim promised Adam he's going to fire Lydia, find a real producer, and have him come back for a show. Come the day, Tim didn't do it. Well, simps' promises are weak. Simps are guided by their emotion. Simps are guided by what the woman near them tells them to do. Can't fire his main squeeze thing. Ain't no way. Let's continue. But this is also about some other stuff, too. It's just that, uh, you know, over the past year, it's really, really piled on. And I think it's because, as I mentioned, this was the biggest month we've ever had on TimCast IRL. There are people who are claiming, like, TimCast used to be so much bigger, you know, back when Adam was on. And that's not true. It, 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 it literally isn't true. Certainly, we got a lot of concurrent viewers. That uh, may be largely due to COVID. A lot of it, I do believe, was due to the dynamic that we had, which was good. The biggest shows we ever had were after Adam left. Several of them. Uh, the show became something different, became something more. And the biggest month we ever had, by all means, go on Social Blade and check, was this past month. And that's just what we're going to keep doing. You know, uh, grow the company, expand. And congratulations, Tim Pool. Congratulations, Temple. You make a lot of money. Isn't that such a... Isn't that the whole point of life? Isn't that why we're here? To make money. To buy a Tesla. To buy a chicken. That's why we're here. 
Do you feel happy with your life, Tim Pool? You make a lot of money. Surely you must be the happiest person that you know. Or is it something else? Is there something else that determines happiness? Is it the strength of your relationships with your close friends and family? Is it having a wife and children that love you? Is it being satisfied in your hobbies? This guy's coping. He goes, we had the biggest month of our life. Yet you're here crying about all the friends that betrayed you. Something, something's telling me that the money's not making you happy, Tim Pool. But he's not going to listen to me. I'm a problematic YouTuber. I'm on my 14th channel. I'm a misogynist. He won't listen to me. But this stream, this roast, this conversation isn't about giving Tim Pool advice. It's not about Tim Pool's happiness. I believe, truth to God, Tim Pool's too far gone. He's too arrogant. He's never going to accept advice from somebody else because he thinks he's the smartest person in the world. What a sad, sad, lonely place to be in. Over what? Over a woman. King Solomon said in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26, I found a woman more bitter than death. She is a trap. Her heart is a snare. Her hands are shackles. Anyone who pleases God escapes her, but a sinner is trapped by her. Tim can't accept that. He's not religious. I believe in simulation theory. Yeah, well, what's being simulated right now is all of us laughing at you in your simpish ways. Put that on a monitor and laugh at it. Libya was a trap. How much pain did she cause? Who knows? We got, we got, we got six more minutes to this video. Let's continue. The advice I got from everybody, traditional corporate advice. Say nothing, Tim. Say nothing. Don't uh, debase yourself with drama. And I said, that is the correct thing to do. But I'm a stupid person. And I like transparency and authenticity. And I like, uh, I like, you know, when there's, when there is an issue talking about it. So that's why I decided to do it on this channel. Because this channel is, it's like a secondary channel for me. I know a lot of you watch it and I appreciate it. I mean, you're, if you're watching it, you probably subscribe. And, uh, you know, I don't want to put on the Tim Pool channel because this channel was always designed as kind of like runoff. And so here we are. And Tim Cast IRL, will, IRL will, never, will never do drama passively. Like when I say like, oh, the Young Turks were talking about me and I'll, and I'll mention it. But we won't dedicate segments to people talking about me. Because I think the show should be for you and about the things that, that, can, that concern you. And then this channel is kind of just like, oh, it's a channel I have. And, um, you know, I appreciate it. So it's tough out there, man. The, the reason I wanted to do a segment like this is because it's impossible to ignore everything all the time when this is the world we live in. It's impossible to ignore the people who, on a dime, decided to hate you. People you've known your whole life. And you don't know why. They just hate you. You think Adam hates you? Adam criticized you for your decisions. He said multiple times in his streams, he wishes the best for you. And you interpret that as hate. You know who, do, you know, you know who else who does that? 
feminists, racists. I don't think, you know, I don't think that we should support white genocide. Oh, so you hate black people. I don't think we need to continue affirmative action for women. They kind of make more money than men in the ages between 20 and 30. Oh, so you hate women. Tim Pool was always a leftist. He was always a lefty, a Democrat. And his party left him. Doesn't mean he moved right. He's still a Democrat. And it's being exposed with him saying this bullshit. And then you have to deal with it. And, you know, I can tell my family and my true friends, my real friends, a million one times, ignore the threats, ignore the drama, don't read the comments. It's only going to get worse. The company is growing. We're hiring more people. We're launching new shows. This is the way it's going to be. If you can't handle that, then I don't know what to say. There are very few people in this world, maybe one or two, where if they said it's either me or the show, then I would say, so be it. And I would shut everything down and I would leave. And I would go live in my van down by the river in my privacy. Some of the most common advice I've ever gotten in my life in doing business, standing atop the roof, uh, uh, standing atop a roof in Chicago at a party with a bunch of politicians years ago when I was a young skateboarder. And these men were all very wealthy. And they said, the biggest mistake you will ever make is making yourself public. Take the money and run. Power likes to be hidden. You won't regret it. In various forms. Fame is the worst thing you could ask for. It's cool when I go to a casino and some dude recognizes me and fans me over and, and I meet a friend and we gamble and I have a tremendous night where I get a straight flush and we're winning and like all the troubles wash away of all the threats while, while the whole world is saying they want to kill me. I'm laughing my ass off, high-fiving some dude, nailing the Jack Queen, King, Queen, Queen, King of Diamonds. And it was like 1400 bucks or whatever. I tossed a black chip to the dealer and to all the players at the table because I'm not there you know, to make money. I'm there to have a good time and to create a memory for everybody. The, co- the money you lose is just the cost of smiling and laughing with the, the people around you. You know, that's, that, that's, that's a great thing. And that's the, that's the advantage of notoriety. Is Imagine me being happy. Like, you know, all the channels I lost. At least when I talked to Ruby the Party Frog or Manic the Manic Mechanic or Hammerhand, I'd throw back a couple drinks. And I'm like, ah, fuck them, right? Okay. Is that um, there are people who, who care about you, who believe in you, who protect you, and who cheer you on the whole time. But for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And that is for every good person who smiles and waves, there is someone who brandishes a weapon or, you know, uh, makes a threat. And you have to move, you know, get away from these cities for a variety of reasons. Not really just the threats. I don't like the laws in New Jersey. COVID was bad. We tried securing a building. The building fell through. It was a lot of complicated stuff. But, you know, mo money, mo problems is true. You'd be, the, 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 the reality is this. It's not really mo. If it wasn't true, it wouldn't be a problem, Tim Pool. When I get haters talking about me, Chronic's five foot one. Chronic weighs 300 pounds. Chronic is a fed trap. It's not a problem. I don't care. It's not true. Chronic doesn't go to the gym. Funny enough, I actually compiled about 10 comments saying that Undead Chronic doesn't go to the gym. And I have it saved. And whenever I go to the gym and I check in with the app to get in, it changes my background on my phone to a bunch of comments saying Undead Chronic is small, Undead Chronic is fat, Undead Chronic doesn't go to the gym. It's funny. It's not a problem because it's not true. The reason why this is a problem for you, Tim Pool, is because it is true. No money, no problems. It is, in a sense like with taxes and stuff and like paperwork and accounting. But the reality is the more people know you have money, the more problems you'll face. 
Dave Chappelle talked about it when they announced that $50 million contract or whatever. He said he was like a marked pig on a train. You know, he couldn't go out. All of a sudden, they were telling everyone in the, in, in, on the TV that he was worth all this money that, you know, he didn't have it. So he just said, I'm out. I don't want to do this. Boo hoo. I will never feel bad for a rich man. I guess rich woman, but a rich woman really is most likely behind a rich man or in front of him, to be quite frank. I, I, don't, never, I don't feel bad for rich people. You make millions of dollars a month. I will never feel bad for you. I'll never feel bad for you. That money is power. If you feel weak, you don't know how to use power. If you feel vulnerable, you don't know how to use power. Whose fault is it, Tim Pool, that you don't know how to wield power? Your daddy's. It's your father's. Kiwi Proud says this stream is stupid. Bro, go to the Beanie Boy. Go watch him cry about how hard his life is. You know what you should do, Kiwi Proud? Go pay him some money so he can cry about how hard his life is. This stream is for young men. This stream is for men who are abused by the system. Not for dudes simping or half a bitches like Tim Pool. Let's finish it. He wasn't a culture warrior, though. He's just like a truth teller, comedian kind of guy. I love that line. He says the First Amendment, uh, Second Amendment's just there in case the first one doesn't work out. He's a good dude. And, uh, and he was right. But he, he could choose to walk away from that. I could. And don't think I haven't thought about it. It's hard. Please. Please walk away. Do it. Walk away from the microphone and get your ass in the gym. Listen to some Red Pill content. Listen to Hammerhand, the MGTOW monk. Your weakness is pathetic to watch on display. Use your company. Hire up and coming people to do the job you used to do, which is read news articles in front of a camera. That's what you made you big. Your opinions, eh. You just weren't extreme either way. You're very uh, reserved, and that's a skill in and of itself. The reason why Trader the Fraud got big is because he stayed reserved. He didn't let his emotions get in the way. So go find five college graduates who won't let get their emotions in the way and have them read the news. All you got to do, they'll be the next 10 pool. It's easy to recreate that. You can teach them the algorithm. You don't need to be here. You don't need to be here. So walk away, Tim. Walk away and think about why you lost all of the friends you lost. Let's get this uggo down. Oh. That's it. Those are the two videos I wanted to show you guys. So, what's up, Brutus? 987 viewers. I'm pretty sure 95% of you guys are chronic fans. Maybe 10%. Maybe it's 90% to 10%. 10% of you guys are Tim Pool fans. You're just coming in. What? A thought ruined Tim Cast IRL? No. Uh, for some reason, YouTube thought putting Tim Pool in the title is a good enough reason to tell my fans I'm actually streaming. This isn't a huge stream because I'm getting people who aren't subbed. This is a huge stream because YouTube let my subs see I was streaming. I'm not deceived by this. I'm not like, oh, wow, if I just talk about this stuff, I'll get new subs. No. If I talk about this stuff, YouTube will be like, hey, chronic subscribers, she's streaming. 
So, yeah, that's how it goes. I can't say I really feel bad for Tim Pool because, again, I don't feel bad for rich people. Rich people can solve all their problems. They just refuse to. Let's see here. Let's get a uh let's get a co host in the chat. Let's see if I get a co host here. See if he joins. And if you want to support the show, if you want to support the war band, you can do so by donating to Cash App slash Cash Sign Undead Chronic. That's Cash App slash Cash Sign Undead Chronic. Let's read some of those super chats, shall we? You guys have been very crazy tonight. Damn. Okay. Uh, this one's from DeFreak. He says, how does anyone know they hooked up? Yeah, no, yeah. so as I said, you'd have to do a genetic test. But otherwise, it's just what he said, she said, right? What he said, she said. If you want to join, if you want to talk about the situation, if you're a Tim Pool um, defender, you want to tell me I'm wrong, consider hitting that StreamYard link. Haters never call in. So I think it'll just be fans. Fans you can call in too. If you call in every show and you call in tonight, I'm probably not going to choose you because I want the people who never call in to talk because, you know, we got more people watching tonight. Let's see what we got here. Shinobi Wan says, women don't understand the world. That's true. Successful Endeavor says, haters never call in. Successful Endeavors, you should call in if you want. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Look who we got to call into this show. Is your mic on? Yeah, bro. I'm here. Hey, what's <laughs> up, Hammerhand? I Zero, to, sir. I tried to get you to call in earlier. You're like, I'm busy. Then what? Three hours later, four hours later, oh. you're like, I'll call into this shit. I well, I just stopped. Uh, I just put a video up on the uh, remaining episode for Andor over on PCR. Mm. But I've been editing all day and uh, sending in uh, the consignment work. Well, not really consignment, but the uh, concept art. Uh, is that video? Uh, is that video live? It's going to be here just shortly. Oh, okay, yeah. So uh, when we end the stream, just make sure you slam it in the chat. I don't know how to redirect, redirect people, but uh, if I could figure it out, I'll redirect them to that one. You know, Manic explained that one to me, and it kind of lost me a little bit. I, need to, I really need to go through this shit and figure out how to do that. Mm. <clears throat> so, yeah, man, sounds like it's been an interesting stream, and that all your brothers have come through for you and uh, blessed you with Kush Fund. I feel, you know, it's like, yeah, do you want to hear a secret hammerhand? Uh, well, if you tell me, it's not going to be a secret. I'm so I use, I use a, the cash app, right? Cause I'm allowed to accept donations. And, right. uh, I did the verification shit like two weeks ago. It should only take five days. So, but they said, <laughs> I talked to customer service and they said, if I don't get verified, and the account gets canceled, they will refund everybody who sent me money. And I got that in writing through an email. Mm -hmm. So that's what was my, my main concern. But uh, so I'm more excited about the view count, you know, like the viewers. Like we had like a, I think we had like. You had 1,200 in there at one point. Yeah. We were like, uh, wait, what was it? What was the peak? Uh, yeah, 1,200, something like that. Yeah, we had 1,200 at one point. So I'm like, hey, I guess this, I, you know, I made the stream, like I was, I did the poll. Yesterday, I was like, what should we talk about? And it was like, yeah, like 4,000 votes. Like, talk about this situation. And I was taking a shower. Like, you know what? 
Let me just schedule a stream for like an hour. Fuck it. We'll just see how it goes. And uh, what? Let me see here. Start at like 3.30. I think we started at 3 actually. Start at 3. At 4 o'clock, we're sitting at 300. I think we had 200 people before the show started. I was like, okay, something's happening here. And then like an hour into the show, we had 300. I'm like, I'm cool with 300. And then by 4.30, it was 1,000. I'm like, holy yep. shit. <laughs> it, it was fucking boom. I was watching it. I was watching it. It was, it was that was pretty intense, man. But uh, you were spot on when you said that it wasn't because of your regular deal or because you went live. It was because of what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, I didn't give any kind of. It's. I think what's more important is the title and the and what you're talking about. Because I'll do streams where it's just like feminism destroyed this country, or whatever you know, just a generic topic, and I'll schedule it three days in advance. Maybe like 400 viewers. I do a stream like. Jack Murphy destroyed. It's just like, hey, when he comes in, they're like, let's hear it. <laughs> you know? Oh, I almost need like bud. a director to join the war band to like, you know, just to be chronically online. Like, yo, chronic talking about this. I'm like, got it. Because I don't, I don't really prep for any of this shit. I really don't prep for any of these shows. Um, the last video I actually produced, like with some research, Yeah. I don't know. It must have been like three years ago. I don't even remember. I don't want to say like the Yogi Oabs, but it might have been the Yogi Oabs video. And that's a long haul. That was an amazing. That whole, was more than three years ago, wasn't it? That was like know, four, right? At least the four. The whole week I made that video, I was walking around the campus I work at with a smile on my face. I'm like, something's cooking. Something's on the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> That's good shit, man. Oh, I wrote the script. <laughs> oh, man. Basement Troll says, Chronic, do you think Lydia is available? Well, she's married now, but that didn't stop her before, so... That uh, didn't mean, that is, what does that mean? Not a fucking thing. They're always available, bro. They're always available. That Till death do us part shit, that's uh -oh. the death of the certificate that they sign off on. Uh -oh, that ain't till uh, your death. We have some inside info, Hammerhand. Uh oh, come on. Spoonie Jank says, Lydia interviewed the Red Hens at one point. I can't find it, though. Please find me that interview. Please. Oh, God. <laughs> I would have be so much me. fun. <laughs> Re okay, look. While I'm talking to you, I'm going to look for that. Uh, Kanye West says, Quartering loves Tim Pool. Watch with caution. Eh, they're kind of... Okay, so another thing with the Lydia thing, with how bad of a producer she was, the quartering drove... Or flew, I think it flew to Tim Pool's house to do a show with him. And he was doing his show with Adam. And everybody knew where he was. But since he wasn't in the pre-show area, like 15 minutes before the show, they canceled the show with him. And that caused a big rift between the quartering and Tim Pool. Wow. So he went, he went all the way out there and got fucking canceled? Yeah, because I guess they were pissed off he was doing a show beforehand with Adam. Wow. Yeah, wow. so uh, you listen to most of the situation. What's your assessment on this, Hammerhand? I've been talking about this for like three hours. What do you think about this? Well, I mean, it, you know, it's kind of easy to lay it at her feet, but she didn't do it all by herself. You know, uh, you, what, what have you got here in, in this deal? Uh, you got Adam talking about how he's, he's red-pilled and he's headed down the red pill road to go find the ultimate Oz. And Tim Pool, who has always been a liberal, He's always been a leftist. He's never been anything different. The only reason that he slides under the radar with people is because why? Come on, why? Somebody out there tell me why he slides under the radar. It's because he's not a radical. That's why. Well, I mean, it's because he's a feminist. It's because he's a he feminist, doesn't call right. for action. Right. He's not a radical, though. He's not calling for kids to die on fucking tables during birth or after birth, you know, he's not calling for things like that. And well, what's Pool Lydia doing? Is, Lydia is just what? She's just a follower. Well, well, she Tim, was probably in love yeah. with the guy. Well, Tim Pool, well, I think we know she was in love with him. I think it's pretty obvious. But I think Tim Pool is the most radical that the YouTube censors will allow on their platform. And think about that. Think about how weak Tim Pool is. And he's the farthest you can go. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's why you have people that are, are on the left now 
so far out there on the left with mainstream, their left mainstream policies, and they call Tim Pool a Republican, you know, mm-hmm. a, an undercover Republican. <laughs> they like do a, that. There's like they a meme that. of this guy like sleeping on a bench with a newspaper over his face, right? And uh, it's like the same image with the words next to him. It's like, when you call me a fascist, he sleeps. When you call me uh, a bigot, he sleeps. When you call me a uh, uh, misogynist he sleeps and the last one's like when you call me republican and it's him like running with a pissed off look on his face at the camera yep. <laughs> it's like how dare you call me a republican take that back right now yeah I, I don't know you know we weren't on the inside of it so we only have to go off of what has been said publicly you know the little tidbits that have been released there and i don't really like to try to wade around and put on hit boots in people's personal lives but if you're going to put it out there then it's fair game it's easy enough to get talked about all of them have played a role in this what was the who was the the gosh the kindle no not the kindle it's the kindle no it's the kindle who was the Kindle? What the fire spread from, right? Right. Who was a person that caused all this shit? I mean, if you got to put it at somebody's feet directly, you know, Tim Pool. You can remove one person from the situation. How do you have a good Tim Pool show with Adam on it? Right. It's Lydia. Right. Right. If you well, take okay. one person out of the equation, it's and this her. Is, and this is why under Chronic, finally, it's like, you know, it's just like, uh, do you play football in high school, Hammerhand? Uh, briefly. Okay, but you watched it, right? Yes. It's like there's like a little gap in the line, and you get a good defensive lineman to do like a crazy swim move or just a dive move. They don't really do dive moves anymore. You just get they just lay on top of you because the rules change. But there's like a little crack in the armor. There's some kind of way to get in, right? Lydia was the crack. A pretty loosey goosey one, but let's not talk about that. That chronic was able to slide into this whole shit and bring our perspective to it. She was a twice married woman, married at the time, accused of cheating. Let's say she didn't even cheat, but she was rubbing on Tim's feet. She was possessive of him while her husband was abroad studying, and they got divorced, and then she married another guy. So she probably was cheating. First guy probably found out. But the whole thing is she's a trap thought. She goes on the shows. I'm a Christian. I'm a conservative. Women stay at home. I don't like feminists. I read these books. In her personal life, she's public property. Yeah. You know, just like I know that these people, when you hear that they've broken up with somebody, it's been in the works for a year, six months. Mm-hmm. They're, they are finding, they're emotionally investing in somebody else before they're leaving their meal ticket or their comfort ticket or their muscle ticket, whatever it is. They're yep. already on to somebody else before they leave. So she makes her life that way. So a trad thought fool Tim, right? Not the worst trad thought in the world, but a pretty gross trad thought. Who fooled Tim that gave my channel, your channel, Ruby's channel, the whole Warbands channels, probably over a million views. Jack Murphy. Oh, yeah, yeah, Murphy. Tim Pools, Tim <sighs> Cast, literally gave Jack Murphy exposure, <laughs> and not the exposure he wanted, but also like useful lots, to lots. millions of people. Like lots, man. I lots, would say the ma- tons. I would say the majority of the seminal fluid order found Jack Murphy. Do the Tim Cast RL. Yeah, well, it's supposed to be, or it, it was anyways. I don't know where it's at now. Uh, I don't keep up with it. But well, uh, I mean, have you seen the dead possum on the on the freeway? Uh, uh, no. Oh well, it's probably where it's at right now inside a vulture stone. Oh no, no. I was I was gonna say before all of that came along, he was he was bucking motherfuckers out of seven hundred k, seven hundred large boy a year. And he just convinced people he was an Alpha Giga Chad Republican. Unfucking believable what people will swallow when they don't want to see the truth instead. Now, the normies take like, oh, take 100,000. We'll just talk about men, because let's be honest. I, I, when women push an ideology, when women say they're liberal, Republican, when women say they're red pill, I don't fucking trust it anymore. I don't care what they say. You can't. Right. You can't, it's just it's just bullshit. You know what it, all it is, all these bitches do is they grab a hold of something that sounds okay and they parrot it all throughout the culture. There's 
there's simply too much incentive from a woman talking about politics from what kind of high value man in the same political field she can get or the attention she can get from all of them. So, you know, I, I said this to my friends the other day at the bar. I was like, they were like talking about what kind of woman they like and whatever one was saying. Like, you know, I don't really like like a crazy woman about politics, like either one way or another. And I was, I started laughing. I, like, let me get my beer. I was like, ah, <laughs> he's like, what? I'm like, you, I like put my beard at the side of the thing. I'm like, you actually give a fuck what women have to say about politics. It doesn't right. matter. It's like, I was talking about what our favorite football team is. It don't matter. <laughs> Hey, uh, let me read uh, this comment here. Beneficent says, is she really a trad thought? Well, yeah. Yeah, she really is a trad thought. You know, I mean, think about what she, what's, what's a thought? That hoe over there, right? It's an acronym for that hoe over there. Well, how many fucking marriages and in-betweeners do you have to go through before you get classified? She classifies herself. <laughs> she, she, yeah. And then when you start talking about how you're pro-life and... You used to be a leftist or a liberal, but now you've seen the error of your fucking ways and you've gone all conservative and shit. Uh, yeah, give me a fucking break. She's I mean, still a leftist. She's still, she is Jack Murphy in a skirt. <laughs> uh, she's similar. She's not as bad, though. I mean, that's not, that, that, look, hey, look, that's like, I, I think that's more Roma Army, although for a trad thought to be Jack Murphy level, she has to be in, like, I have to see at least 10 different videos of game bangs hmm. on her. How about Jack Murphy light? Because you know the bitch has a drawer full of little battery-operated boys. That's like, you know, well, Jack Murphy light is like me saying, well, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, shoot yourself in the nuts with a small gun. It's like, uh, what's a small gun? Like a twenty-two. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, don't want to do you. that. <laughs> Man, I, I knew a guy back way back in the day when, when I was a kid. Uh -oh. One of my stepfather's friends, he did that. With a twenty-two? With a twenty-two. Oh, he was well. fucking around with it and shot himself right in the dick. <laughs> Wait, in the penis or the balls? He, sh he shot himself in the dick. Oh! So <laughs> oh! At least you got two nuts. Like, you got a backup. Like, you got, like, a high <laughs> winning. Oh, my God. The dick. Oh. I liked the guy, too, man. I liked him. He, he used to build custom choppers. He'd put a big rake on the front. He had these beautiful uh, pearl white tanks with uh, blue flame running through them. He, man was motherfucking talented, but he was stupid. His penis is probably at a 90-degree angle right now. Uh, I don't know. I, I hope that it worked out for him because I never heard anything else. Those things don't heal right. They don't. I guess not. It's just a big old fucking muscle. It's like, well, scar tissue will make it bend a different direction. It's going like, to take a right turn. It's going to be like your fucking Amazon. It's going to be like your Google Maps directions. Take a yeah. right turn now. See, these folks on your in your chat here, they're trying to like square this away like uh, Hudson Jackson says Lydia is not traditional because she's on Timcast that's not what a trad thought is doesn't matter where she's at it's the ideology that she's current currently spouting and it's it's 180 degrees to what her life was before she started talking about that I mean shit. I think he kind of agrees with us right because a trap when we talk about trad thoughts like the we call them trad thoughts because they're not actually traditional they're just thoughts right but they the trad is what they label themselves as it's yeah, why okay. I make it's I, why I, I make fun of um real fem sapien too. You're not traditional. You're a non virgin on your second husband having a kid with a fifty year old making YouTube videos about bullshit. You know, you're the complete opposite of what I want my son to get in a wife. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I couldn't say it any better. I, I don't. That's look, look, look. We always come back to this. That's why I don't fuck with them. So I don't mess with them. You can't. You can't find one that's going to be honest. That's going to be faithful. That's going to tell you the truth. That's not willing to jump in and start some uh, Ashley XOXO shit. That was you know, most, <laughs> that was the most random shit. That was ridiculous, man. I went. I'm not really a feminist, and you know, and then. A few minutes later, bitch is all feminist, man, <laughs> going after our guy. Talk about, oh, you got a little dick, bitch. Yeah, like, and they started, like, going after us on the periphery. She was, like, saying all kinds of stupid shit. I was like, uh. I mean, it, if you can't control yourself any better than that, then you, you have lost all of your credibility in that. I, I was like, why instance. does Hormax get those titties, but I can't? Like, that's, you know, my big, that's my big thing. You know, 
because uh, some people just have to wear a face for every person that they're in front of, and it doesn't match their personality. So for the last leg of our journey, let's bring in our third co-host. Let's bring on a friend we haven't talked to in a while. He's a green Uh-oh. skin. He's an alcoholic. He's a frog. It's Ribby oh, the party frog. Hey, what's going on, guys? <laughs> what's Ribbit. up, bro? Dude, that was, I, I'm sorry I missed out on it. I was going for like a two-hour lift and then gorge myself on turkey leftovers afterwards. But I was hearing Rishi go in. <laughs> I was like, I'm on 30. Dude, first off, she sounded like Squidward. She was like, <laughs> wait, 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 Ribby, Ribby. When we first taxi. started talking, we first started talking, I was yeah. going to guess her age. And I was like, well, you know, I was like a woman in her 40s or like early 50s. And then she said she was like 36. Like, oh. <laughs> she sounded no, no. like she was 48, bro. She sounded like the good, school cafeteria. Take a good lady. look at her face. Take a good look at her face. And then think about Sydney Watson. She Please looks like no. an older Sydney Watson, bro. Yeah, dude. She looked, She sounded like my high school librarian. Like, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. She was like, like, Ribby, stop already in the hallway. <laughs> like that kind of crap. Hey, t- check out my beautiful 36-year-old milkers. I'm like, please, no. Like, uh, oh, no, geez. I'm good. I go for someone oh, in this millennia. Man. But, dude, that was absolutely hilarious. And I was lifting. There were tw- two times I just burst out laughing like an insane person. The whole gym, like, because I got a loud voice. But <laughs> people are like, you just see some dude, like, doing squads, like, cackling, laughing his butt off. And be, then Chronic, careful, Chronic is like, man. oh, humor. And Chronic is like humorous, Maxer. And I literally almost dropped a 45. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> nice. Humorous. You got to be, Ruby, you got to be careful. Like, look, if you guys lift and listen to the show or listen to my content, you have to be careful. Like, it's don't dangerous. do PRs you, while listening to Under Chronic. You can't, you can't fucking, you can't lift heavy equipment. You can't be drinking shit. You can't be eating shit. I'm not responsible when you blow chunks on your computer screen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, before uh Hormaxer's like, oh, I- I'm gonna blow something else all over my computer screen. Fucking Ugh. pig. But, uh, <laughs> it's a fucking pig. If, if that's man. got too many chunks, you might want to see a doctor. But dude, yeah, she was <laughs> she was she was sending them around to the gang, including the boy Hormaxer. That's like, come on, dude. Like that's a I new guess. low. But doesn't that that really very, very it falls in line with what we say all the time. It validates everything that we say. They will give it away to scumbags and pieces of shit, but somebody that's really interested and just kind of perusing, no, no, sorry, homeboy, you got to wait. You got to act right. So, well, yeah, no. dude, it's like the kind of chick that, like, you know, a dude gets out of prison, lines up for those kind of guys, or oh, even, yeah. like, ha- like literally half the grade below you. You're like, ugh, like, I feel dirty just standing in the same room as you. Ruby, like, Ruby, you, wanna, get out Ruby, of here. you know, I know something that, that made me feel dirty? What? When I was using the, <laughs> when I was using the dating apps... I had a picture of a, it wasn't really a mug shot, but it was like an entrance shot to like the youth penitentiary. And I use it. Okay. As like, it was a basically mug shot uh, junior. Yeah. Yeah. Junior. Like it's shot. like AA junior in college. You're not quite all the way there yet, but yeah. you're like on the right track. Yeah. So uh, I use that as the first picture on a Tinder account in 2014. Oh, <laughs> oh here we go. <laughs> Dude, bro, you bro, drowned. I You're got, like, Ribby, throw me a lifeboat. I'm drowning. In I was on, right the, I was on yeah. like school break. It was like a summer break for three months. Out in, um, I mean, I guess it's been a long enough. Out in Charlotte. Oh, I love Charlotte, dude. It's a great dude, town. Dude, yeah. I got so much fucking pussy. It was unreal. And like half the girls would be like, I like a dangerous guy. And I'm like. Oh, they always say that. You yeah, even yeah, know yeah, why yeah, I'm yeah. in this picture. I could have been in this picture for just like playing the knockout game with blonde girls. <laughs> dude, you would, you would literally wake up hungover, trip, and just fall into a chick. She was just there with the legs open. Like, I'm ready. <laughs> You're like, who is this? So back oh to God. this, uh, back to the main topic of discussion. Ruby, did you hear any of the show about the Tim Pool fiasco? I heard a little bit. I heard like I was walking my dog when I got home. Dude, you've been doing a long stream. I'm like chronic. I'm like an hour north of my house. I, I was hoping to make it, but I hit traffic, and then I'm like, holy crap, he's still going. But oh. I heard him when he was whining and his little beanie. He's like, uh, oh, only like five people live in the building. We're closed on Sundays. I'm like, what is he moaning about, dude? Like, <laughs> Well, here's the thing. The reason why I go so long on this stream, at least, is like, dude, I got like 1,200 people earlier. I got 900 right now. Dude, those like are game buster number. I open it up. I'm like, holy shit. Like, dude, you know what's funny? You get Lauren Southern, even – like some of these quote unquote professional half a million million subs, yeah. they'll max out at like half that. Like I think it's great if you get five or six hundred, dude, dude, fifty k subs, 
15th channel, over a thousand watchers. That is impressive, man. Yeah, the best the best example is Hunter Avalon, sure whose job was YouTube with like 200k subs, and we had double his live viewers. And oh. then like, uh, and then like you know we're on we were talking on Discord, and I'm like, look, if you tell me to shut up one more time, I'm gonna leave. And, oh, I remember know, that one. Simps can't yeah, control yeah, themselves. Yeah. He told me to shut up. I'm like, okay, well, bye. I'm going to go back to my show. He's like, huh, what do you mean your show? And I left. I'm like, this guy doesn't realize we have twice as many people listening on my channel. Like, it's not his what show. Like, I'm the one hosting the show, really. Yeah, right. <laughs> sub, sub size isn't everything if your audience isn't fully engaged. Be like, hey, Hunter, why don't you go out and uh, hunt for some viewers? Maybe you'll find them, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> the Lauren Southern one was even, even not more embarrassing, but it was even more eye revealing because, like, Lauren Southern, Destiny, some, like, should in so red pill whatever had like 800 viewers and i was sitting over there with like 1600 or i think i was at 2000 at one point i don't remember i have to look at the numbers but i'm like <laughs> some random guy in the stream just okay how could you like a green skin how could you watch him green man bad he hurts my feelings okay so let me explain mm. this uh temple situation in short and i'm sorry for the people who are watching the video but i need to show this picture for ruby to understand what's happening so Tim Pool and a good friend started doing this Tim Pool or this Tim Cash show, right? Yep. And uh, this chick Lydia was the producer. Guess how she got the job? Sucking off uh, one of the boys. She DM'd Tim on Instagram. Yeah, just that a seems DM. About right. Never had any yep. experience, or whatever. So look at the stream stream picture. I put her Ugh, picture. Up. Dude, if that chick DM me, I'd get my Bible and start being like chanting. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, so no. send this demon back from when she came. Dude, open, this looks she literally looks like a one gentleman, grown up version of the chick from The Exorcist. Okay, for me, <laughs> dude, for me, I'm gonna very creepy. For me, the biggest thing I was like, Ugh, was look at those tattoos. She got them when she was like in her teenage years or early twenties, right? So like 17th century type zone. Yeah, she, yeah, she got those tattoos in the worst spot possible. Do you know why, Ribby? Why? Those are very sun exposed areas. Oh, yeah, so they're going to fade. Yep. Oh, yeah. Never got them touched up. Never got them covered up. Never got them removed. So she DMs Tim Pool. Cause look, you know who Tim Pool looks like. Do you think Tim Pool got a lot of pussy? Beanie. But, dude, Tim Pool's that guy where Ruby opens up his gym locker and he comes tumbling out. And I'm like, bro, what are you doing in my locker? He's like, oh, Ribby, my football players caught me again. He's that guy. Now, like, dude, I'm not- I've probably taken dumps bigger than Tim Pool. He's no, like I, a leprechaun. I'm not saying that Tim Pool was a virgin. He probably had a couple of girlfriends, but he's not like experienced with women. So when a white chick no. like this DMs him, he's like, ooh, hot chick wants to work for me. Simpy, simpy, sim magoo. It's like, yeah, he's simping, but he has no experience with bitches. So he hires her. He's with his friend Adam, and they're all locked down together. Now, this chick is married when she moves into Tim Pool's house, right? Oh. Okay, she's married. Her husband's <laughs> studying dude, in Europe. Bro. And she is presenting herself as, I'm conservative. I'm I'm a Christian. Abortion oh, no. is murder. Feminism is bad. The so whole you know she's time, a the whole time, she was like sleeping in Tim's bed. Oh. So the definition <laughs> of a what, trad What was your bot. husband studying? How to get cucked 101? First, go to <laughs> Europe. Second of all, you know, you're going to have <laughs> your chick move in with another guy. Yep. <laughs> okay. So- She's cheating on her husband. Tim had a girlfriend at the time. They're doing whatever. And like she's like lovey dovey. Like Adam said he she followed him everywhere. Like he never really saw him without this chick around. Weird. And then, you know, at, they were talking about abortion. And Adam, you know, he, he came out and said, you know, one of my ex girlfriends had an abortion and it really hurt me. And Lydia looked at Adam during the show and said, anybody who supports abortion or had an abortion is a murderer. It's just oh. not God's way. A chick who's cheating on her husband, who's sleeping Twice around. Divorced. <laughs> so that's that, divorced. Yeah. That's what triggered Adam and that's what caused him to leave. And it was a big scandal because every like half the chat loved Adam. And now this chick is on her second husband. And oh, no. she's still saying she's a conservative Christian. Yeah. So that's that's why this this whole thing went down. Dude, okay. So many pieces there. I don't know this Adam guy. But to attack someone, my body, my choice, right? Yep. Whether he wanted to do it, and it sounds like he didn't, is inconsequential. Because it's like, say it's we're playing, uh, it's always yeah, dude, the woman's choice, dude. Say we're playing, uh, we're playing catch, 
and it go I miss the ball and it goes over to old man Hammerhand's house and I Ruby goes, Hey Hammer, could I could I have the ball back? He's like, huh? Get my your my fucking ball, asshole. Yeah, Hammer's like <laughs> Hammer's like my yard, my choice. The ball's mine now, bitch. And he goes inside with the ball. <laughs> I'm like, well, damn, dude, I tried, but I couldn't do anything. It was it, I had no choice. Sounds like the that guy Adam. He literally just his choice didn't matter. So she attacks him. Meanwhile, she's cucking the Euro husband and on her second husband, and looks like something from the Bride of Frankenstein. So yeah, that is absolutely ridiculous, dude. Talk about yeah, the pot calling the kettle black. Her- folks are wanting to go after her uh, you know look man tim pool had the ultimate choice to make here he could have honored himself and his friend but he honored his dick instead oh yeah dude a simp will so, always do that uh, dude don't be friends with a simp they would push you in front of a bus to oh, sniff yeah. a fat chick's panties oh, guys yeah. like that dude they they have no loyalty because they will do anything for poon nah you gotta Go look up her old hubby now. He gotta, runs her fucking webcast, I guess. That's gotta be uh that's gotta be one of the Warbin commandments. It's like it's like uh it's like from the book of um Luther here. The book of Ribonicles. It's like the, the sayings of drunk Ribby. It's like these sayings were only said when Ribby's blood alcohol level was at least ten percent. And the first one is don't be friends with a simp. <laughs> yeah, seriously. That's what I'm saying. A simp will betray you. If he could somehow get a whiff of Puniti out of it, no loyalty. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, it's too bad. Too bad. Too bad, man. You still, it's fucking amazing. You still got 900 in your chat. Boy. I know. And this is like usually the time we'd be like, oh, we're losing so many viewers, blah, 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 blah. But people just want to hear me roast these people. 1,000 Fonzies, bro. 1,000. So, uh, Dude, that's almost as many thumbs as Jack Murphy's wife had up in her oh, uh, shit. past year. We're going there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's another thing I brought up with Hammerhand is uh, Ribby. Yeah, I would say eighty five percent of the men who got scammed by Jack Murphy found him through Timcast IRL. Ooh, supporting a cuck. Yeah, dude, he was promoting a cuck. He gave him a platform. And just he did more than that. He covered it up when it all came out. Oh, of course not. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, like Jack he Murphy was getting. That. He was getting like twenty concurrent viewers. On his live streams before he joined Tim Cast, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, Tim dude. Pool yeah. with him was getting fifty thousand live stream viewers. He oh, literally I know. made Jack Murphy's business. Tim Pool was a fertilizer. The cuck weed that Jack Murphy is needed to grow in. Mm-hmm. But you know, f- doesn't it make you wonder how a guy like Murphy can get past motherfuckers at Twenty One Studios at Tim Pool, but we're looking at him and like, no, what the fuck? Something kind of wrong here. It's because yeah. Hammerhand. Chronic is like the bloodhound of the manosphere. If I, uh, if I if I smell just a molecule of cockage, it's time to attack. Is no mercy. Could you please take this picture off? <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to look anymore. You know what's funny wanna... though? What someone said in the chat is when I keep this picture up or the other picture of her up, the views go up. Like we're at nine forty right now. I no. think I gotta give it up. No. Okay, I'm gonna just evade my eyes. I'm gonna. You know, you know what they monitor. say, Ribby. Pain creates character. So uh, you're gonna be uh, very. Well, the manic <laughs> must be a man of elite fucking character after the last couple of years. Jesus. <laughs> oh my god. I feel like I feel oh, like manic. 20 years from now, I'm not gonna get doxxed because some leftist. But manic is gonna sue me. He's like, he's like, his, I'm gonna see him in court, and he's gonna have bandages around his eyes. He's like, I'm permanently blind because what chronic made me view as a young man. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he just he just wanders the lands dropping red pills like at the end of Oedipus when he blinds himself. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, uh, truck fifty, truck fifty. He wakes yeah. up in the middle of the night, picks up a phone. Truck fifty, truck fifty. But uh, let me loop it all the way back to what I was telling you earlier, Hammerhand, when I said we don't really care what women think. Like we don't care what women think about politics because, like, look, this woman right here conservative christian anti-feminist that's what she thinks about politics but when you look at what she does you're none of that right yeah but really it's agreed. men so let's say a hundred thousand men let's just say a hundred men uh let's go let's just let's just say a million actually it may be easier how many in a million men would be receptive to our message with no uh prep hammer hand uh hundred i would say ten thousand maybe ten thousand like one percent two percent yeah Maybe half a percent, yeah. 
Half a percent. I would say all, almost, almost next to none, really. What do you think, Ribby? Yeah, couple percent top. Okay, less let's than just say five it's for let's sure. just say it's uh you said five? Less than five, oh, like okay. two or three, three tops. So, let's say yeah. it's two per, let's say it's two percent. Okay. A million of Tim Pool's audience, what percentage of them would be receptive to our message? Seven percent? Eight percent? I mean you know, when you're listening to Tim Pool and you're not listening to the mainstream, there that there's something to be said for that, right? But if you immerse yourself, if you bathe in Tim Pool shit all day long, you're just really left just light. Yeah. A lot of people, I think, do that. A lot of people do that. Bathe in a soy bath. With but it's, you know, on. but I would, we all, I think we'd agree. Do you think, Ruby, that there's a higher percentage of Tim Pool fans that would listen to us than like just normies? Like yeah. Everybody? I'd say so. Yeah. Probably yeah. some correlation. Yeah. And that's why I'm more likely to make videos and streams like this. We're, we're able to reach out to a larger population of uninitiated Brutus because mm-hmm. they agree the temple fans think there's something wrong with the government at least, right? They're somewhat don't like feminism. They don't know what feminism is really. They can't define it, but they know they don't like it. Right? <laughs> it's like the boogeyman. I've never seen him. I've never seen a Yeti, but you know what? I know I probably don't want to meet one. I've met enough hairy feminists around New York City streets that, you know, it's close enough. Not a pretty picture. Yeah, so it's just it's just when you go to different content creators, you got to know what the deal is. But Tim Pool is so big, right? I think he had like, did he hit a hundred thousand live viewers? I don't remember what it was. Let's just say it was a hundred thousand, and let's say it was seven percent. That's seven thousand potential men we can convince to go the right way. Mm-hmm. That's why it's important to kind of reach out to this audience to do these kind of clickbaity titles and whatever it is. Because well, was, didn't that that very subject came up when you had Ashley on, right? She was talking about how the first people that she came into here in this sphere when she was interested in it, when she started to self-reflect, you know, her words, not mine, was fucking Rolo Tomasi or playing with fire or John Tranthony lifestyle. That's why <laughs> we're here is to stop these motherfuckers from grabbing these people coming in. Give them a fair shake. That's, it's, and that's the thing. It's like these people who don't believe what they're saying, who say the most minor things. Like, it's not 2010 anymore, guys. Saying feminism isn't good, that's not enough. You have to define what isn't good about feminism. And it's not just a man hate. You can't, that's too general. Okay. Saying that, I don't think that we should be, you know, sending money. Uh, you know, I said, no, I, don't, I think taxes should go down. That's not enough. That's that's not enough, right? No, it's not. You got to get out there and fucking make it happen. Because those people who you say know. feminism bad, they are still fucking feminists, and it, that's the number one thing that pisses me off. When I okay, I'll talk to cuckoids, leftists, bread tubers. It's probably the number two thing that pisses me off is when they don't understand. They mischaracterize science and they don't understand the scientific method. That pisses me off. When mm-hmm. I talk to right wingers, my manosphere people, like, feminism is bad. Do you think women should vote? Of course. You're a fucking feminist. <laughs> no, I'm not. It's Dude, it's like that, it's like that law and order meme where he's like, I have relationships with women, sex with men. And he's like, I got news for you. That means you're gay. Groundhog's like, I got news for you. That means you're a feminist. Uh, I need to remake that meme and just be like, maybe pay some Ugandan guys. Cause that, like, I say Ugandan because they'll like make videos with scripts if you pay them enough. And, and one guy would be like, I don't like feminism, but think women should vote. And the other guy goes, my Buddha, that means you're a feminist. And then the song, <laughs> da, 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 da. I need that meme. I need it. Maybe I'll just pay a homeless guy to do that for me. That's pretty funny, man. <sighs> but, well, you know, let's talk about what make Tim Pool, what makes Tim Pool viable on YouTube. It's the it's the it's the it's the milk toast fence sitter. It's the not taking harsh sides, but like what mechanically makes people want to watch him? Which we versus me and you, Ribby. It's because he shows his face, right? I don't know. I think it's because he I, I really I really don't know about that. I, he, obviously, it's because he's promoted number one. Yeah. So he's pushed in the algorithm, and I think that that takes precedence over everything. 
showing your face is a bonus. It it's, absolutely is a bonus because you can kind of gauge people's genuineness when you're I, seeing their face. I, I think it's the face combined with the setting, right? Like Hammerhand, if we if we all dumped a ton of money to give you like a studio set up where you can invite guests in and you had a producer, so it was great like quality kind of camera work and such, you'd blow up if you weren't censored, which you're censored, right? It's just how it works. So imagine, like just with our banter right here, Imagine, first of all, imagine how much more efficient our banter would be. Ribby, you you could speak to this because the first 10 or 20 collab videos we did, we were talking over each other, probably because I was drunk for half of them. But we were talking to each other all the time. If you're in a room with a person and you can look at them, you know when they stop talking and expect you to answer. Right? I mean. Yes, agreed. So the banter we would have, like imagine us three in a studio with the cameras with the producer having this conversation. It'd blow up if it was a fair algorithm. It'd fucking blow up. Now, the reason I haven't done that is because it's not a fair algorithm and at any point, they just delete the channel. Yeah. I mean, I don't disagree with you. Look, right. if you want a perfect example of that, just mm -hmm. uh, look at what happened with uh, uh, Hannah Davis. Yeah. Uh, Ribby, you know? your mic's muted, by the way, man, if you don't know. Unmute your mic. Yeah, yeah. No, I stepped away to to grab a drink for a sec. Okay, now it's but, my turn uh, to step away to grab a drink, Ribby. So keep the okay. Show going. I'll chat with Hammer. You step away and grab a drink. But uh, <laughs> dude, Hammer, I've been loving your pop culture PCR content because I'll watch oh, you and I don't have to watch the trash myself. But I do like watching your stuff because then it's like you know how trash it is, and then you, I get to hear you laugh at it. <laughs> it's really not even oh. laugh at it. You like you systematically <laughs> rip it apart. Of, about just each bit of uh, garbage. So I haven't watched like a recent movie in a while, but uh, your stuff's good, man. I, I've been watching the content, enjoying it. Man, I appreciate that, bro. Um, yeah, I mean, the old psyche takes a hit, man. <laughs> it, it gets rough sometimes because this stuff is, it is not good. I mean, a lot of it is not good. The, the best things that I've run across since I started the channel mm -hmm. was uh, Cyberpunk, and yep. Andor, and I know a lot of people are going to say, "What the fuck, Andor?" It, it's slow. It's a slow-ish burn. But aside from trying to put the lesbians and the homo androgynous sexuals in it, oh, okay. um, lots of given these days. You know, got to have that. They're trying to insert that stuff with these two uh, females. They haven't gone full on, full on yet. Yeah, but you You're know, setting it's only it up. a matter of time. So they're yeah. setting it up. You're feeling the tension. You're feeling the build. It's like the rainbow's not fully there, but you're seeing a couple colors moving around. You're like, what's that? It, exactly. Oh, here we go. The, yeah. We will get to the episode where it's nothing but me lucky charms, rainbows, <laughs> you know, and fuck yeah. all of that. So, no, I, I don't do that. I can't stand that shit. But other than that, Andor is actually good, and nobody's watching it because Disney what's fucking it? burned them all. Oh, oh, they, yeah, that's a new one, right? Mm -hmm. I've seen that. Yeah but I haven't seen it. No, I, yeah, hammer yeah, hand. Yeah. I think Sir. I think there was at least two different instances before you reviewed Cyberpunk that I said you need to watch a shit. Uh I don't recall that. Somebody mm. said to me go ahead and take a peek. I think go it was at least 2 months ago. I know I know I was look at this site. Ribby and, can uh, Ribby can attest. I was harassing Ribby. Ribby. Watch Cyberpunk. I still haven't done it. Ribby, Is it with yeah. the clown chick, right? Is that it? I mean, I guess she's the lolly. Guess. The, the lolly, lolly. Yeah. yeah. And then the, <laughs> the, the base Japanese dude's like the lolly. Stays. Wait, wait, wait. Quote the, the anime stays, The lolly must stay. Dude, <laughs> dude, it's like you know what Gandalf when he's like, "You shall not pass," and he bangs oh. his staff down. That was like that moment oh. for that guy. That was when so I funny. read that. I, I when I read that uh, CD Projekt Red was trying to get. Uh, Rebecca removed from it. I was like, what the fuck? What? Guess who, guess who it was in charge of trying to get it removed? Oh, I can't imagine. That the chick. head fucking feminist bitch. Oh, yeah. woman. Yep. Yeah. No, no fucking surprise. Now, uh, That's, let's, you should not have women making these decisions because they stink at it. Let me make one point in a kind of vague statement so Ribby won't get spoiled, right? Uh-oh. Mm. I think one of the big reasons that Edge Runners was so successful because it wasn't. This is okay. Aside, aside, aside. Rant. Things yeah, that get successful don't get successful because women like it, right? Uh, makeup, yeah, yeah whatever. Right. Things that are cultural influences 
Yeah. It's usually men, young men that love it. It gets the buzz going and everybody else jumps on board, right? You know, uh, mm-hmm. one of the things that I have found throughout culture until this poison started to sink in really good was that if if men liked it, women liked it almost for the same reasons. Yep. Almost mm-hmm. for the same reasons. Do you, do you think that there's a gaggle, thousands and th- hundreds of thousands of women out there on every form of social media complaining about where are all the fucking men at because all the men walked away? You know, a, a portion of them have walked away. Yep. But there's a huge amount of men out there that they're not a traditional kind of man. They're not John Wayne. They're not on Joe Camel smoking camels. Yeah. They're uh, worried about their, their skinny jeans and how much tofu they're going to have for lunch. So men liking a new show, like especially young men, because they're the ones on the internet that will kind of more push it, right? I'm not saying it's only young men. It more skews young men or the ones that could binge it, right? Because it's like within the first three days, something comes out. That's when the buzz is really generated. And Hammerhead, like, you think of the dudes you knew at your work. They're not going to binge an anime in the first three days they watch. It's going to take them a couple weeks, right? Uh, it would depend on the guy. Some of the but guys most that of were, them. I worked before were most, young. Well, most of them uh, aren't going to watch it in the first two days, right? My, my job, I got to be honest with you, my job atmosphere was a little bit different. There were maybe two guys out of the six or seven there that would take their time. The other guys, they're young enough where they would binge it. Well, it's a young thing, right? The young guys. Well, okay. So yeah, I think for the big, one of the biggest reasons edge runners got so popular was those last three episodes, right? I mean, you have to stick the landing. Look at game of Thrones. Ruby, did you watch game of Thrones? Ruby, are Rib. you muted again? Is he getting his fucking drink? Oh, you drink. Probably getting a drink. Um, he's just, you know, that's the thing with Ribby is like he would hope that you get like maybe four people talking. So like if you know you say something like that, someone else just jumps in, whatever. But you saw Game of Thrones, right, Hammerhand? No, I didn't watch an episode. You heard it. You heard about what happened, though, right? Yes, I heard, I heard how they uh, started to fall off really bad they, in seven, and they they obliterated eight. They fucked the ending up so bad that it's it lost all cultural relevancy. For what, five, six years, it was the biggest piece of media ever? Everybody was just talking yeah. Game of Thrones, right? Yeah. Well, they what did they do? They passed around a petition that got a million fucking signatures to redo it. So you have to sit the ending. Now, for me, Cyberpunk's ending, right? 11 out of 10. Amazing way to end it, right? I think I thought that it was pretty fucking dope. Um, I, I can't for those of you that have not seen it, I won't spoil it for you, but it's it's really good. It's so really good. What it I think what it was is the main push for young men that liked that show was the relationship between the main character and the main love interest. That kind of pushed that like that's what made you care, right? Yeah, there were others, though, too, you know, like between Maine and David. That was sort of like a father-son deal. No, there's there's the minor things, but I would say, like, if that Maine love interest was shit, it would not have the relevancy it has today. I agree. It'd be a good show, but people are saying it's, like, the best show they've seen. Well, I I got... Depends on your tastes. I got varying uh, opinions on that when it came out what happens. I can't, and I'm not going to say it because I don't want to spoil it for nobody. But uh, there were a whole bunch of thumbs up, but there was more than an average fair uh, share of thumbs down simply because of the normal material that you and I talk about because it, mm. it related. It was relating to it. Yeah, but it's a fantasy world. So there's no alimony or child support in that world. So you got to I agree with that. that. That's and that's one reason why I liked it quite a bit. I could yeah. get picked up and ripped apart by a dragon, but you know, at least there's no child support or alimony. So you know <laughs> what? I'll take I'll take my chances. Yep. Getting ripped hey, by hey, an orc no, or like, something. No, straight up. It's like give me the choice. Uh dragons could kill you or no family court. Didn't you know what he in the background? Oh <gasps> yeah. <gasps> <gasps> For the kin, for the rin, for the kids of Skyrim. I'd be out there with a battle axe, bro. I don't care. No family court. Guys just fighting a dragon. The other dude from the courthouse just shaking his head. Just lucky bastard. Just single teardrop coming down. But, dude, I heard uh, my buddy's been playing God of War 2. Dude, I I came over, had some tequila. We were playing a couple levels. Dude, it looks beautiful. It seems like a really good game. It's good. But let me uh, me quickly finish my point, and you'll you'll understand this, Ruby, Mm -hmm. about uh, Edge Runners, which isn't a spoiler. 
the reason why it was so successful is young men will push whether something becomes viral or not typically and the relationship between the main character and the main love interest was done in a really good way because hammerhand you'll you with this for sure in the last couple episodes it showcased david the male protagonist's willingness to sacrifice for his love interest and it showcased lucy the female love interest kind of trying in her own way to protect david it doesn't work out but you get to see her emotions because for men what they want in a woman is for her to be emotionally invested in them to love them in the emotional way and for women when they look at a man they want him to be strong and able to sacrifice and provide a protection and i think that's what really spoke to a lot of young men when it came to that show what do you think hammerhand Mm. I I think I agree with that, but I, I would also say that uh, I I can't speak for every man, but me personally, if you could just get a, a female to show interest in you beyond what you could give, then I, I don't see any man out there not bellying up to the fucking bar if they're getting what they want out of it. They don't want the mo- the moon and the stars and the sun. They just want to be liked and loved. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be beyond the pale, but uh, that dynamic showed up and it, it, it was very nice. It was touching. It was sweet and I enjoyed it. So that's why I recommended it. Yeah, no. And that thing, and I made a tweet when the show, when I got done binging the show, I texted Ruby. I was like, yo bro, I was up from midnight to like seven in the morning. (laughs) Marathon that. That's how you know it's a good show. I I made the tweet and I said, anime is dangerous because it shows men a fantasy of how women could treat them. Damn, yeah. but it is now, a fantasy. Yeah. Well, and you kind of hit the nail on the head again. I haven't seen it, but keeping it simple, right? It shouldn't be so hard. There's not some other third guy. There's not some love triangle BS. There's not some will they, won't they, some BS conflict, and they go on and off again. Uh, like a soap opera that goes on for days and just spins its wheels, wasting its time with stupid drama. It's like, mm-hmm. no, they have a plot. And their struggles, but they get there. And that's like kind of, you know, it shouldn't really be that complicated. I feel like the woman dynamic, if you look at their kind of shows, it's so much stupidly, unnecessarily complicated stuff when it really should be pretty simple if two people like each other. But I don't know. Maybe that's just me. No, no gotta, I think you you're gotta, right. You got to watch that show and then we'll have a full disc. We'll have a whole stream about it, Ruby. Yeah, yeah man. Go, go watch, go it, watch it. I'm down. I'll check it out. Yeah. Hammer can join us because he watched it too. But when it comes to Hammer's Pop Culture Rocks channel, here's the thing. I am subscribed to it on my personal oh, YouTube. I'm not subscribed to anything Red Pill or Manosphere on my personal YouTube. But mm-hmm. I see two videos. I see a Geeks and Gamers or Nerd Rotics or like quartering video about some video game controversy. And then I see a Pop Culture Rocks video about like a, a show or something. I'm always choosing pop culture rocks and it's not because my personal relationship with Hammerhand, right? It's because Hammerhand's viewpoint is a million times more aligned with mine, right? I could never know him, but if I just knew his viewpoint and he made Mm -hmm. that content, I want to hear what this man thinks about this pop culture. I'm not saying the other people are bad. I'm just saying like, look, would you rather hear a, a, a communist's opinion on edge runners or undead chronics opinion on edge runners it's an obvious mm-hmm. choice yeah yes it is and there's not enough of us out there even the guys that get pointed to where folks would say oh they're kind of red pillish or oh they're not like the fucking the weirdo liberals even they and i like them all and i watch them all even they are a little on the soft side you know you mm-hmm. rarely get an aggressive opinion out of these folks. I mean, you'll hear uh, Gary over at Nerdrotic go off about uh, Lord of the Rings. I mean, he he goes the fuck off in Doctor Who. You know, you'll hear Jeremy at the quartering go off about magic, you know, and how he got really got done dirty in the magic community. And he did get done dirty. What's funny is, you know, um, he, Ribby. Um, yeah. Did you see the new Lord of the Rings show? <clears throat> Oh God, no! Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Dude, you, you, you again, never, if I'm going to see any, any interest, of this, right? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. You never had any interest, right? No. Yeah. So okay, you saw the all the movies beforehand, though, right? 
Oh, hell yeah, dude. At least two or three times. I love those. Amazing. So, those masculine movies, that's our memory of Lord of the Rings. I won't sully my memory with feminist garbage. Dude, that would be like having a really good meal and then being like, (laughs) I'm going to go lick the bathroom floor. Like, (laughs) why? Dude, it's like a five star steak, and you're go- like, I'm gonna go eat some garbage now. No, like, don't bro, do look, it. The fuzzies in the fur bunnies on the floor. It's just like steak, homie. It's just in your mind. Oh, yeah, now, it's new. Now, Check it out. Now, Ruby, do no, you want to hear like, a story from today that happened to me? Okay. Oh, they would do, but the last thing I was gonna say, Chronic, yeah, the only thing I will do is check out hammer's channel because i want to hear his opinion on it and it's literally like you watch this garbage so i don't have to i'm kind of curious just how bad it is but i don't want to actually watch it myself then yeah. i'll check out that i was gonna so say, I was gonna like, say like let the content yeah. creators who make money off of it suffer i'm not watching it yeah it's like, you're <laughs> no, like i'm sorry for the audience like yeah. my view pays for neurotics pain like i'm not exactly. watching it yeah Hell yeah, no. yeah 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 so um, what happened today was it was like two hours into the stream and I had a friend call me. He's like, dude, I got a flat tire. I'm like, oh, call boy. anybody else? He's like, bro, I'm two miles from your house. I'm like, please call someone else? He's like, please, man, I need your help. So I played Adam's stream about this whole drama for like, what was it, Chad, like 35 minutes? I just played his stream for 35 <laughs> minutes. I went to pick, I went to take care of his car. I'm like, why the hell did he call me flat tire? I show up. This guy is blackout drunk. Like, he's drunk as fuck. Oh, and boy. When I show up, he's in the wow. backseat of his car, double fisting. I'm like, what the fuck is... I thought of you. I was like, this fuck? is some ribby shit. But even ribby... The tire was his liver, and it popped. Yeah. <laughs> even ribby wouldn't drive drunk. So, um... Nah. Yeah. Thankfully, I got payment. I got three... Okay. He's like, dude, look at the trunk. I opened the trunk. It was like Dead this guy hooker, was moving right? into college, except instead of okay. trash bags full of clothes, it was alcohol. Jeez. <laughs> I was like, what? He's like, dude, I spent like 600 bucks on booze. I'm like, why? Well, and why he, are you driving drunk? He's it out, man. At least me. I'd get like enough for a weekend and then buy more the next week. No. So this guy gave me uh, three different. He's like, pick three things as payment for helping me out. So I got three different, um, my favorite micro brew packs. But uh, when I was leaving, I was like, give me your keys, man. Why? I'm like, I just need to check if it's, you know, going to tires going to work. I took him and I'm like, I'm calling your brother. He's picking you up. You're not fucking driving anywhere. But uh, I was like, what's going on? Was brother's coming. I was like, what's going on, man? Like, why are you drunk? As, why, why are you? I was like, I didn't say drunk. I was like, why are you fucked up driving? Why? Yeah. Yeah. Guess Not what cool, just man. happened that week? What? He got dumped? His fiance dumped him. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying I advocate that behavior, but. I understand you was having a no, crap. It's definitely time, understandable. I mean, they drowning were yourself in booze won't help the you not get dumped by your fiance. They, they I mean, were it is what it is. Killing somebody won't help you either. So, yeah, you know. dude, that's what I'm saying. Where it's like having a good, good drinking and stuff is all fine, but with Uber now too, he easily could have bought all that booze, waited till he got home, parked for the night, yep, and then and then done it. You know, you don't want to. You don't want to do. They that. They were dating since sophomore year of high school. Yeah. Wow, like that's a long years. time, bro. Six yeah. years, yeah. She found, she found another penis. So why yeah, that's why a, would <laughs> do? Why what do you have? Hammer, hammer. What makes you think it was just one? Oh. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it, it almost has to be one at a time. But some of these bitches. <laughs> oh, so so oh. why would he put himself in such a dangerous position? Because of a woman. Dude, that's a lot of. Well, no, no, uh, no, no. You, let's, let's think deeper. Right for himself. Okay. Why do he put himself in such a dangerous position? Because. I don't think he wants to live. Yeah. Right. And so I told his brother, your man's suicidal. You got to pick yeah, him up. Keep an eye on this guy. Yeah, yeah. Keep an eye on him. You got to, you got to recognize these signs guys. Cause like, these guys, well, I'm just being stupid. Yeah. You're not that stupid, bro. And he wasn't so stupid that he literally just went on his way. He got halfway there, decided to call you probably called a bunch of people, his friends, whatever. Uh, so yeah, man, he, uh, hopefully, you know, the brother will look after him cause it's I not a good like situation. To, I'd like to recognize chronic for actually doing what he says and looking out for your brother, man, and helping that motherfucker. Cause if you'd turned him down, he could have probably done something really dumb. So, oh uh, yeah. Good on you, bro. Man, look, you can call AAA. You can like walk home. You can call your brother. But there's two dangers here. 
There's the driving drunk, right? That's obviously a danger. Yeah. Second one is this guy's the mental state. It's a possibility he could, you know, give a blowjob to a shotgun. Uh, yeah. yeah. And nope. And there's no look. There is nobody in a man's life. <laughs> typically, like teachers won't do it. Your boss won't do it. Most no. friends won't do it. People who are aware of the damage a woman can cause, they can do it. So if you know a guy in your life who's going through some shit, well, he was always happy. He was always smiling. Look at his social media. It's one of those things you want to make sure he's not going to do it and you want to watch him. Help him. Help him. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why you've got 900 motherfuckers in the box right now and 1,100 Fonzies, baby. Dude, that's hilarious that you, like, hold on. I'm going to pause this dream for your set, play this clip, help out your boy. I literally stole like 35 minutes of this guy's content. I just played it and left. Oh, dude, hell yeah, worth it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then before I load the line, thanks, Adam Krigler, for the free content. <laughs> Why not, dude? But uh, yeah, chicken on your boys and actually, actually talk to them because if you're like, Ruby, are you good? Yeah, I'm fine, man. I'm good. Like, you know, your real friends will know, like, nah, man, you're not. I'm going to push a little deeper. We'll talk about it, you yeah. know. But uh, yeah, man, yeah, I got to always check in on the homies, make sure they're doing good. Shout out to James with the $10 super chat. Thank you, James. But uh, I talked about pop culture rocks and hammer is going to be putting up a video later. Uh, Ribby, what time are you going to be resuming your YouTube career? Uh, Probably pretty soon. I'm on a little vacation, little booze cation. I'll be checking back in early December. I'll be uh, back at it again. You know, you know how it is. So I can, uh, I can go for monetization December 20th, I think. So if I get accepted, let's say, do you want to do a New Year stream? I don't know if that's a good. I, don't, I I need to write down what holidays are good to stream on, or like what days are good. Like the day after Thanksgiving, great mm-hmm. to stream on. Apparently, yeah. the day the Saturday after Thanksgiving is great to stream on. I didn't know that. Fantastic, yeah. But maybe like yeah. the first week of January sometime, we need to do a Jack Murphy one year cuck celebration stream. <laughs> if I'm on, I want to write a yeah. I'm gonna write some songs or something. It'll be fun. But, dude, yeah, fingers crossed for you, dude. That would be a great Christmas present. You get finally some sweet, delicious shekels that you haven't tasted in years now. So Maybe I'll try earned. to do a backflip like that one time someone sent me 100 bucks to do a backflip, and then you guys heard me eat shit on the mic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just hear a crunch. Bones, oh, oh, oh my neck. I can't feel my toes. Oh, I, can't I, make it to the, I can't make it to the microphone. I'm going to call 911, but I got to unplug the computer. Uh, it's been under chronic, guys. Don't get paralyzed. <laughs> you- <laughs> I, yo, it's I been, just un- it's been undead vegetable, guys. Take it easy. <laughs> undead vegetable. <laughs> oh, that's oh, funny. That's funny Ribby's shit. like, I, I tried to. I did a flip off the wall. I'm pretty sure my rib cage is uh, puncturing into my lung. It's been yeah. Ribby the party for out, guys. I just shit myself. I t- did. I tell like. you about the uh, the fraternity brother who did a flip and knocked himself out, Ribby. <laughs> I think you. I think you did. Okay. Dude, I know a again. lot of these guys. Uh, Almost died, like so many of them almost died, getting absolutely wasted. Okay. It was this guy's. Shit. It was this guy's twenty first birthday, right? And we were going to the club. <laughs> we were at the club. Well, the bar, I should say. <laughs> this guy. Okay, so in my fraternity, you'd sign like thirty kind of cool guys. They like to drink or whatever. You'd sign about. Okay, let me, let me let me think about the numbers. You sign about ten cool guys. They like to drink, but they're not retards, right? Yeah, it's kind of cool. You sign about five to eight nerds to up your class GPA so you can, like, nice. you know, rub it in the other fraternity's face. Yeah. And then you rub like three or four legacies, like their fathers or brothers or uncles were in the fraternity because you kind of have to. And then yeah. you sign about three to four retards. Now, yeah, why just would you for sign... the classic entertainment. Exactly. It's like, why would you sign retards? So you have someone to laugh at during a party, right? This yeah, guy yeah, yeah. was one of the retards. So we go to the bar. This guy's 21st. He's. This guy is so <laughs> dude. This guy is so drunk. He tripped and ate shit getting out of the Uber. <laughs> <laughs> it's the beginning of the night. I, He's think already he, I don't think he landed on his nose during the flip, but he landed on his <laughs> nose getting out of the Uber. I think that's when he broke his nose. But anyhow, so we're in the club. This guy's like on a bar bench. He's like swaying. Like you ever see someone swaying on a bar bench? You know they're fucked up. Oh yeah. Oh, the guy you walk in, his head's just in his crotch. He just knocked out. You're like, he's yeah. done. 
Yeah. Or when and you, like there's like a bunch of uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of basketball players for the college like dancing yeah. in the in the on the dance floor and they're like doing dance offs. One of them goes, Who's gonna <laughs> challenge me? Who's gonna challenge me? Oh no. Guess who stands up? The boy. This the boy. Twenty first retire. <laughs> yep. 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 Yeah. He walks up. That's the worst part. He starts his dance routine and it's amazing. Like he goes for like a whole minute and it was just like, oh, oh, the basketball players are like, damn. And then he ends it by like crossing his hands, doing like the chin up, and then he does a backflip. This guy lands straight on his neck and gets knocked down. Oh, <laughs> dude, he does like a full scorpion. The you know whole thing was when videoed. You, yeah. The whole yeah, thing was videoed. And yeah. so for the next like week, on all the group chats from like the freshman, like the whole freshman group chat, sophomore, I'm talking about thousands of people in these group chats, all the frat group chats, all the bar group chats are all just spamming this video and like laughing at him. This guy, we take this guy, this guy back to the frat house. He falls asleep for 36 hours. We're just like, after like 20 hours, we're like, yo, should we like, is he dead? Like, should we take him to the hospital? This dude wakes up. It happened on a Saturday. This guy wakes up like on a Tuesday morning. He's just like, how'd the history test go? <laughs> you wake up literally like a day and a half later. Like, I'm a little sore. I don't remember the last two days. Bro, it's hilarious. It's almost better that he didn't just immediately eat shit. It's like he actually had. No, it was, if he made off. the flip, Everybody it would have been legendary. Yeah, no, he, he didn't was doing stick great. the landing. Yeah. So, yeah, that was the story. It was hilarious. I lost my shit. <laughs> I was watching them do it. And then when it happened, it was just like, ooh, they ran up like concerned. But me, because I was I was signed because I was I guess I was kind of a nerd in a legacy sign, right? Mm-hmm. But I was like with the other I was like with the other like a couple other nerd signs and like a normal sign. And we just lost our shit. And one of them literally was like, This is why we signed these motherfuckers to our front. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, exactly. The boy just lifts him up like he's fine. Walk it off, champ. Just drag him home. No, Chronic like, throws him over his shoulder. It was like the Spider Man throw- scene, bro, where they carry him out the train. It was all these frat bros carrying him out the bar. Yeah. We, had to go up two, we had to go up a set of stairs too. And while they were doing it, some drunk frat guy was praying for his soul. Ah, oh, so, so funny. I all sure hope colors. he's not dead. Yeah. Dude, Ribby and Chronic go on like a freaking three hour stream of just the dumbest, fun, funniest drunk stories of either us or boys or just people we know. It's c- hilarious, dude. That's what I'm saying. If we were in a in person kind of studio kind of thing, this shit would pop off for sure. Uh, dude, I remember one time my buddy, uh, he went to jump a turnstile, but he oh. was drunk. So he oh. just like, it caught his leg and he ate shit, like slid. And then literally he looked up and there was like one of the, uh, subway terminal like not a cop but basically like the subway terminal oh, guy yeah. and he just and he just shakes his head at him and writes him like a 200 hundred dollar ticket for jumping like a two dollar subway swipe bro if i saw and, someone eat shit doing that i'd let them walk i'm like you get it <laughs> i'm like yeah, you're I dedicated to this. but yeah. dude there was a guy in new york city the past six months who did that and died you hear about that <laughs> some guy straight up did that. Some some random guy did i tried to jump it but broke his neck and died oh, on the spot oh shit can you imagine? <laughs> like it's I was just, it's awful bucks, to laugh at, dude. It's awful to laugh at, but I'm saying it's such a trivial thing. Like, yeah, it's a rip off. It's like what two or three bucks. I remember what it is, depending on where you're going now. But you literally, like, I don't want to pay three bucks. Fuck this. <laughs> just done. Check. Bro, out. it's just natural selection, man. That's so stupid, dude. It's almost like how a deer, how they they'll constantly jump off a three way because they don't have the depth perception to know there's like a cliff on the other side. Yep. It was like that, dude. But, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. Wow. Man. Yeah. I remember one time, you know, I was coming back from the bar. They're like, mind the gap, please. And I stepped into it. <laughs> I was just like, oh, I didn't pull, my, <laughs> pull myself out. Thankfully, the train wasn't moving. Then I'd be uh, Ribby the <laughs> what, a three-legged party frog. But uh, yeah, dude, it's uh, it's a fun time for sure. Yeah, no, I would have, uh, uh, look, we would have, we would have so much fun. And uh, imagine the prank shows we do. Yeah, it would be like, uh, I still, I still to this day, I want to send Hammerhand and Manic to San Francisco to do like, you know, the ride along shows like they ride like journalists ride along with the cops. Maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to send Hammer and Manic to ride along with the San Francisco Poop Patrol. 
<laughs> oh, Lord. I ain't doing the poop patrol. Forget it. You know what I'd rather do? I would rather, if, if my option's that or this one, I'd rather do this one. And it's like you go into a club. Hey, ladies, want some tequila shots? And they're all filled with Tabasco. And you just like, and you're like, Whoa, woo, that'll wake you up. Some of them will, I feel like someone will be drunk enough they take it and then not know what's happening. I've swallowed worse than that. Ooh, that was a little, uh, little spicy there. Mm-mm-mm. But yeah, this has been a this has been a great show. We talked about how a thought because like Tim Tim Pool as a as a character, people love listening into the, like the shit going on with him. So like, Dude, I can't get his voice. Dude, he's he's kind of like not as bad as Ben Shapiro, but I get come up, I get kind of that vibe where he's just like <laughs> he's like a little neurotic chihuahua. Does it, like, anybody else ever get the impression with Pool that when he starts a point and heads down a particular road, I've never seen any motherfucker ever, any pundit ever, do as, as much waffling and backtracking as he does. He'll make a point, he'll make all of the fucking points for the point to nail yeah. it, drive it home, and then he'll crawfish on it. Yeah, which is weird, considering that's, like, his thing. That was, like, basic. I took a class in that. What is it? Speech or communications, whatever it is. You tell him what you're going to tell him, tell it. Tell him what you told him, done. You know, he's or you just, can just he's say it. so fucking but. noncommittal. He does not want to be nailed down to anything. Yeah, I, I think oh, it's that's a, it. He's doing, think... dude, he's doing the politician thing. He's flip-flopping right. because he doesn't want to, you know, lose those shekels. Or maybe he pisses no, off I, somebody I by saying this. I agree with both of you guys. I think it's a conscious decision. Oh, yeah, it is. Because when he's yeah. talking about points, about like, I don't know, this person's wrong because blah, 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 blah. They attack me because bl- he'll always <laughs> land it. Dude, what do you think's under that beanie? It's kind of like Double D on Ed and Eddie where he always wears the sock in his head. It's you a think he's tumor. Hiding, he's it's hiding a tumor. like a bald spot, a third eye, like Resident Evil. There's like some big glowing orb. What's going on under there? I actually got a he's beanie probably Let me see if I can find it. You know, He did that, he did that once, right? His Didn't vagina's under there. there. That's a secret. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. Yeah, All I right, gentlemen. The, I got the meme. Uh, my shit's up. I got a jet. Before so. you leave, Hammer Hand, I want you to look at this meme. Oh, Uh-oh. no. I want you to oh, see meme. what's under Tim Pool's beanie. Let's do it. Let's do it. Have you seen that? No, you know what would be <laughs> funny? It's Hammer another Hammer mini Hammer. Tim Pool. Hammer like, Hammer. like, just the head is under that beanie. <laughs> and then he has a beanie on, and he lifts that one up. It's like the Russian dolls. Oh, like, it's infinity just, beanie. Yeah, it's just more and more of them. Hammer Hand, have you seen uh, Harry Potter? I have. You know, in the first, uh, you know what happens in the first movie? Yeah. Oh, 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 with uh, Voldemort in the second head. Is that what you're saying? Something like that. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, the, that, the it can't be piece. real. It can't be real, no. I mean, that's my suspicion. Um, I got some leaked information. From, <laughs> oh, with, oh, with Quay. I got some leaked yeah. information from... Uh, Lydia from Timcast. She says, I'm not a hoe, and this is what Tim Poole looks like with his beanie is off. So uh, we'll just wait for him. You imagine, to dude, react. some chick, some chick actually consents to getting smashed by Tim Poole, and she's like, she reaches for his hat, and he's like, no, the beanie stays on. <laughs> Can you imagine some chick? Oh, the hey, beanie man. stays. Hey, man. Oh. Look at the meme. <laughs> Ribby, you see that? Oh, that is what no. is under Tim Poole's beanie. Hey, you guys! <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> who did who did that? Was that uh? That's pretty funny. Oh, that's terrible. So, uh, Hammerhand, oh. thank you for joining the show. It has been a great time talking to you. I'm happy that you joined the show banger. when we had so many viewers because you need more exposure. Although oh, you, sure. you usually you. get 800 at least when you do a uh, planned stream. I but, mean, it's uh, right around there, yeah. Before, you know, well, after you the... leave, sh- uh, if you have your video up, spread the link in the chat because I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to hear Pop Culture Rocks content. Uh, oh, hell yeah. Right. Dude, it's the only way I'll watch the trash. Yeah, it's not even watching it, quick. but I'll listen to Hammer go off on it. Suffer, and that way, I get to see how bad it is without having to subject <laughs> myself. Suffer, Hammerhand. Suffer exactly. for our yeah. entertainment. Oh, no, I don't, no, Dude, I don't. there were a couple times. I think, I, mean, I think it was particularly your She-Hulk, which is one of the worst ever. And you're like, honestly... If I didn't have the channel, there's no fucking way I'd finish this. I'm doing it for you guys. Like this is terrible. It's totally the truth. It's I would so not bad, have dude. ever watched that show a- after the first episode. If I didn't have the channel and it wasn't like a, a ratings kind of channel, I would have never finished it because it's I, yeah. just fucking tripe. I got like halfway through the trailer and then I was like, nah. I got like the 30 trailer. seconds in. I'm just like, nope. 
And I even do like, like the seat again, I know the plot would be crap, even if it looked good, but also the added cherry on top of the F U sandwich that it is, is that the CGI looks like it's from fucking 2007. It's like, dog go, shit. go back, watch Lord of the Rings, watch uh, Avatar, like all those movies that are way older. The visual yeah. effects are like leagues better than this shit. So yeah, they're not yeah. even trying. Like it's they dumb. they don't give a fuck at all no, anymore. They they don't care about anything other than yeah. pushing the agenda, and uh, you know, like the critical drinker says, the message. Yeah, man. that's it, man. All they want to do, and that's cool. They can go ahead and burn, and they can uh, throw all of that fucking money in a big old pit and set it on fire because that's what's happening. It is literally Joker from The Dark Knight. They're burning, their stocks plummeting, earnings oh, yeah. are down. It's not about oh, yeah. the money. It's about sending yeah. a message, and the message yeah. is be a cuck. Well, the, bitch, the, the people cuck. that have the fucking money that support that product are sending them back a message, and it's fuck you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, gentlemen, I uh, much appreciate being on here, man. Thanks for having me, as always. I'll talk mm -hmm. to you later, Hammer Hand. Good talking, Peace. Hammer. Peace, gang. This has been the first stream. This has been, like, what, the fourth stream in a row where I'm, like, towards half of the – it's, like, the second half of the stream. I'm, like, Ribby joined. You're like, I'll be home in an hour. And then it's two hours later. He's, like, am I here? It's too late. But this time we went on long enough to get you on. I made it, dude, because all these motherfuckers out here – the day after Thanksgiving or two days after Thanksgiving, they're like, time to get my Christmas tree. So I was in northern New York, like more north from where I live. And I'm like, oh, hell no. I'm going to get a long travel, a long trip going back. And then I'm like hour and a half later. I'm like, he's still going. I made it. So, you know, good catching up, dude. Oh, it's great. And we can go on for a bit longer. I mean, really, I'll say it just depends on you. Like if you need to get off soon, just let me know. Man. It's been a while. So we can chat if you want to chat. Yeah, dude, it was good. Yeah, I'll hang out for a little bit, but uh, I always love catching a good stream. And uh, some <laughs> I've, here's the funny thing, too, about that other thing when I was at the gym. I've known Rishi for a while. He's the chillest dude. He's always just like, yeah, hey, what's up, guys? Like, always chill. I've never seen him mad. So seeing <laughs> He was literally like, yo, fuck this bitch. And I'm just like, damn. He's like, my boy's about to slap around this nasally librarian. I love my tits. They're beautiful. I shared them with the world. He, he, did, like, he did admit to me that he was shwasted when he called in. But I'm like, look, I got a bunch of comments saying Rishi was cringe or whatever. I'm like, look. No, dude, I found it kind of funny. Well, like, For me, it's just like I, I had like a 40 minute conversation with her beforehand. Bring on the crit, like bring on the, the roasts or whatever. Like, I don't care. She asked for it. And then it came and she was like, uh, I'm butthurt. It was a little Once too spicy. she told me that whore maxer could see her tits, but I couldn't, I was completely okay with whatever Rishi said. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, that's good. Poor Manic. It's like, dude, Manic, I'm mean, going to look. They're 36 year old. What was a single mother to titties. So, I mean. They're not great. Yeah. No, Manic, Manic didn't see them. I was, what, here's what I'm saying. He I was had asking see, her. Well, that's the thing. No, I, I know you see Jack Murphy and yes. all his hairy disgustingness. Yes. And my boy can't even see some titties. I know. I, mean, I know. It, that's just not fair. You know, it's like he's 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 already been through so much. You can't even give a, can't even throw him a bone. And that's You're why like, I was come like on. pushing for the tits. Like, please send him to Manic. Because like, I feel like I have to give him something. And she wouldn't, you know, it's like, man, it's like thinking of all the things that made Manic watch or listen to or see, I, I kind of feel bad for the guy, but I don't because it's Manic, but still, I kind yeah, of feel Manic. bad for Dude, we got to do an April Fool's or the, hey, Manic, this girl likes you. Here's a chess pick. Oh boy. Those look pretty good. Zooms out. Oh, it's a fat chick. Damn it, Ribby. <laughs> to be honest, Ribby, like even the fat chicks, like it's weird because you'd think because like chubby chicks, chicks who are a bit on the thicker side it they goes can have to the tna tits. they can have but great if tits. you're so big it goes all to the belly and it's not to the tna oh, no, it's not even that. I know it's, exactly what you're saying it's not even that but like most fat chicks who are i would say fat the tits are separated they're floppy and they're saggy and there's like a like there's like 10 inches of sternum space between them it's like i don't want Dude, there's that. like north and south korea from one the left titty to the right it's I just know, a it's division. horrible and it's sad dude they look sad like it, they look depressed <laughs> It's rough, man. Yeah, no, I've, I've definitely been with some thick chicks who have great tits, but like, it's the kind of thing where if they were skinny, they'd have like double D's. But since they're not yeah. skinny, they got like E or F cups. That's all right. That's all right. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying, dude. Like, a little extra. Because uh, I mean, 
say you're both objectively in great shape, the same BMI, whatever, uh, a guy compared to a girl, you know, athletes, whatever they are, the woman's going to have more fat because, you know, on the hips, on the waist, the T, the A, they just carry more there for babies I've never or whatever. Been, I've never been with a chick that had the same BMI as me, man. Well, no, I'm just saying objectively. Say I'm ripped, a girl's ripped, we're both good shape. She's still going to have oh. some more some more fat, all things being equal. But uh, at the same time, girls can get away with a little bit more because, again, if it, oh, goes no, to, sure. well, if it goes to the hips, the legs, the butt, the tatas, hell but yeah, you can. we're talking about like, you know, like get away with a little bit more like five, ten pounds of fat. Think about how many fat chicks you see with skinny guys or average guys. Oh, yeah, that's what I – oh, that's bad. But I'm saying for a dude, though, it just all goes to the gut mainly. Like a dude doesn't have uh, – you know, a girl, you could have it go to the T and the A and the hips, and a little bit extra looks good, a little bit. But, uh, yeah, for a dude, if you're – you just – if a fat dude is – Did you just, watch the no- first uh, – did you watch the first, like, what, two or three levels of God of War? Yeah. Oh, dude, Thor is – I saw Thor Did you that, see dude. the he- scene where Thor told that little bitch boy, look into my eyes and tell me? Oh, are you talking about the Kratos' son or another guy? No, no, no. Thor, like there was a this this bitch boy was like trolling Kratos' son, right? Oh, okay, yeah. Right, and then like because he could see the future, and then yeah. he 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 got confronted by Thor, Thor, who was the definition of strong, fat, like you know. Oh yeah, dude, he is honestly. People are like, oh, look at Thor. I'm like, dude, if you look at like the Viking build, and if you look at straw men competitions, like to me compared to me or you, because. You know, they would consider that. But the guys that are actually breaking records, lifting immense amounts of strength, have that build. They're not, they're you're, not cut. They're not, you're cut. like a linebacker, dude. A linebacker in football, not, you want to be even, like, not a brick, even, dude. Like those guys are at a different level than that. But what I'm saying is, like, because the dude that was trolling, um, Kratos' son, he could see the future. Yeah. And so, uh, Thor came up, he like stand like a foot and a half above him. He's like, what are you going to do to me? Because the guy that's seen the future says, what are you going to do to me? And Thor like, looked around and was like, look into my eyes, read my mind, and tell me. Right? Like, and, then, and then the guy was just like, you're a sick man. And then ran away. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, dude. You don't even Amazing. know. He's like, yeah, you, you're getting Ama- wrecked. Dude. I was just like, that is exactly how the strong yeah. fat guys mog the betas. Dude, that, yeah, dude, honestly, I can't wait to play that game. That, it looks awesome. But uh, yeah, dude, Thor, Thor's a fucking boss, dude. That's uh, that's that's where it's at, dude. The I'm Vikings, surprised man, they didn't make everybody. Uh, isn't he, he? Dude, my buddy told me like he's pretty much an alcoholic in that too. So it's like loyal to the mythology. You relate to him, <laughs> yeah, like, dude. Hey, he, he's cool. like a bit. He's like a big hungry. He just like slays, smashes with the hammer and and his dong. He has like a pretty hot wife, and then he like eats, and he's yep. literally just like always drunk. <laughs> like, dude, Thor's fucking legendary, man. No, for sure. I mean, for me, it's like once I'm done with this stream, I'm gonna feel like Thor. Cause guess what? Guess what leftovers I got sent home. I, okay, so um, turkey, no, potatoes, no, no, no. the one, best one stuff. Thing, stuffing. One thing. One thing. Be- uh, what do you got? Just potatoes. Oh, carbo loading. Not potatoes. even any turkey. Well, dude, I won't say no to some potatoes. Hell yeah, dude. Well, the turkey was gone because I ate all of it at the, at the gathering. But I got invited to a. I'll say coworker. I don't really work with her often, but a coworker's Thanksgiving. She was mm-hmm. an assistant. No, she was a grad. No, was she a grad student? No, she was a research assistant, but she was Chinese. Well, Taiwanese, Chinese, whatever. 19, invited me to her family's Thanksgiving. I show up to this thing, dude. I'm the only white person there. There's like 30 <laughs> people there. Yeah. You know what happened, bro? What? They literally treated me like a king. <laughs> Like, yeah, like, I was gonna like, say, I'm like, do you have a wife now? Like, what happened? Dude, straight up, they didn't even let me serve myself. They're like, what do you want? We'll get it for you. I never what? left the table. As soon as I was done eating, and I like leaned back on my arms, my head, like this chick's mom would like get up from her chair and like sprint to me. It was like the fucking NFL combine. You were, like, you, you were, what do you, you were want? You want another drink? Are you fine? A beer? Huh? Do you want turkey? It's like it was. I was like, God damn. Massage your balls while you chew. Just like give you a back massage and like pour your wine for you. Do like that thing with the Greek gods. Like you have, you lean your head back and you got a thing of grapes. A classic. No. So I, I ate all this fucking Thanksgiving food and I planned for it. I literally, so Wednesday, day before Thanksgiving, I had coffee and that's it. 
<laughs> so I show Grana up to just show, Grana just shows up on like a fast and eats like a turkey and a half. Like Straight literally the whole, yeah, goddamn. Well, they had 30 Yo, people, so they mess. cooked I two really turkeys like and two hams, like a, bro. What did we say? They had 30 people, so they cooked two turkeys and two hams. Oh, damn. That's awesome, dude. So I show up. I eat to my fill because I'm like, whatever. I, I did cardio and lifted that day, so like two and a half hours. And then go for it, crush it, yeah. Then her her uncle was like, "Hey man, because they've been in, like their family's been in America since like the '50s, so they're basically they're they're Asian, they're American, they, they, yeah, they yeah. Speak they speak very similar, so I understand. There's no like accent or anything, but, yeah. Hey man, I got a feeling they like football. You want to watch football? I'm like, hell yeah. So we put on football, and I'm like, where should I sit? It's like a couch. It's like a recliner. It's like take the recliner. You had a lot of turkey. I like lay back in this recliner <laughs> <laughs> and I see, bro, my vision's like a tunnel. It's like slowly closing. I'm like, must stay awake. And I fall asleep and I wake up with two cats and three dogs on top of me. I'm like, what the hell? Even happened? the pets love you. I, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, these they two know. cats are like purring. And this like, there's like two dog, like two uh, wiener dogs. And then one lab. I don't even know how the lab got up. Like, I'm like, this chair should collapse. I'm, I got 20 pounds of food in me right now. Cr- chronic being like uh, Doctor Doolittle over here. All the animals are like, I know, bro. All like, hail like, oh, the holy green the... man. I stand. I, I get. You know, we just get all the animals off. I stand up. I'm like, well, I guess I should go home right now. I just... yeah, well, I'm still awake. And this yeah. uh, this chick's dad's like, you know, our, our nephew has a birthday party next weekend. You should come. I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll come. <laughs> Chronic's basically part of the family. Now. Literally, I love bro. It. This whole family just loves me. I'm like, is it? Is it because of my white skin? Is it because I complimented like eight people as soon as I got into the house? I don't know, but I'll take it. But they gave Damn, me the mashed dude. potatoes. And so I've always mashed potatoes. So I had to go buy some. I bought some. Uh, I was going to buy some turkey, but I'm like, I don't want to cook a whole turkey and watch it. I'm not, I'm not that good of a cook. It's a lot I bought of work, some, yeah. uh, I bought a whole thing of ham because it was cheap and it's easy to cook. So I got a ham cooking for the past hour and a half on a low temperature to make it oh, super hell yeah, soft. Oh, dude. So so well, dude, stream. I'm probably gonna go. Yeah. No, so once I'm on the stream, gonna say, I'm gonna heat these potatoes in the oven. I'm gonna take out this ham. I'm gonna cut it, and then I'm gonna pour gravy on that potatoes and eat some ham. And I'm gonna pass the fuck out. It's a great stream. Oh, that sounds good, dude. I'm getting hungry too, and I'm probably gonna go get my dog some some uh, food. I haven't fed her yet, but you haven't fed your roll- dog yet. I'm gonna roll out here. Well, well I fed her like lunch. Your dog's probably I fed going her before nuts. I left. I fed her like lunch, so I'm gonna feed her a little, like a little bit more before bed. Mm, you know, she's okay. small; she could take it. I, I give her a breakfast, lunch earlier, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a little light snack. I'm gonna feed the dog. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll out. But dude, it was fun stopping by. It was great talking to you and Hammer. And uh, yeah, man, next time you have Ashley, you she, she probably won't come back. She was terrible. But probably next not. time you got a hater on like her or not hater, whatever she was. Uh, let me know. I was at the gym, but if I, I would have loved to laugh. Well, she her. joined last minute, but if I could plan it ahead of time, I'll just I'll just talk to you. But uh, before you leave, one funny story. I had two, I had two mutts growing up. Um, mm-hmm. They're very close to me. They're my probably like probably my favorite dogs of all of the ones I had. And they got kind of fat because you know I had a big family. They could not feed them scraps. So my dad was just like, let's put them on a diet. So one meal a day, kind of omad kind of thing. And mm-hmm. they were they were not happy with it. But I'd take them on walks. And at the time, we were living in Florida. And so I'd take them to the beach. Bro. I'd let them on the leaf. I, I, I let them on the leash at the beach. Mm-hmm. One minute talking to a chick. I look over. One of the dogs is eating like a, a fucking, like a, like a fucking uh, barnacle. And the other one's eating a dead fish that showed up. I'm like, I, it was Aww. like every single time I had to like chase them and get them on the leash and like whatever. But the funniest thing was. I took him to the beach. I checked all around. There was nothing dead for them to eat. I let them go. They're playing in the water. They're whatever. It's walk time. I'm talking to this chick, and it's been like three minutes. I'm like, I gotta find my dogs. I look over and I see them kind of running in the distance. I'm like, oh god, what's it? Like, I have to <laughs> they found something good. I just sprint after these damn dogs. Both shepherd mixes. One's a hound, so the hound shepherd mix has a great nose. I run up, bro. Guess what these dogs are eating on? Like an octopus, a fucking know. shark. Oh my god! Like a whole fucking Damn. shark, and one dog's like chewing on its fin, and the one has a bite on its tail. And I'm like trying to pull them off. It's just such a shit show. And I look up, and, and there's like five teenagers filming me on a TikTok video. 
object Jeez, or something. Jeez, right? dude, that's all a dude alpha chad dogs be I, like, I gotta get my protein somehow. I, I, I'm I didn't know what they're filming. I said TikTok because I found out later. So I pulled them off. I made them like they didn't really. Sw- I don't think they swallowed anything, so I don't have to make them puke. But I took them away. I'm like bad dogs. I took them home, and the next day I was like, okay, let me just look up TikTok my local neighborhood of the beach. The name of the beach. I see like a TikTok, and it's just like. This guy's it's like the town is like it's like that robot voice is like oh my god this guy's dogs are crazy and it's just me <laughs> trying to pull these dogs off a shark and I'm like oh my god why that's hilarious that's probably like dogs are right. they were hungry on the they wanted a roast and like I'm getting some shark meat hell yeah I know yeah but uh dude thanks for joining the show I'll hit you up for the next streams we're doing we'll, we'll talk I'll just text you man we'll talk tomorrow and uh, right, comments cool. coming soon guys. Oh, hell yeah. We're, yeah, we got a whole script worked out that'll be coming uh, for the end of the year. All right, man. Take it easy. Good, good chatting with you. Peace. Peace, man. Later, guys. Then there was one. One warband, one warlord. I do guests, but I've been going on for five hours, guys. So let me go to sleep. Let me eat my ham and go to sleep. Thank you for all the views. Thank you for all the super chats. I truly appreciate it. It's going to help us grow the channel and grow the war band. Barnett just doxed himself. I don't really think so. I mean, that TikTok was deleted, so I think we're good. No, we're good, guys. That The person deleted their TikTok because they got bullied because they said something like, I don't want to date fat guys. I don't know. It was so stupid. So don't worry. I'm thinking ahead, guys. But thank you for the views. Thank you for the likes. This has been an amazing stream. I didn't expect the numbers, but I appreciate everybody who came to watch me ramble about SimpCast IRL. It's been Underchronic, guys. Take it easy.